This is nerve wracking. I don't like going live. I mean, I do. Hey, it's A from Owner City Nerds. You guys, this is Josh. He's awesome. He's the best from the NC17 podcast. If you're not subscribed over there, go subscribe over there. Uh, with the crazy J. Are you're crazy J, right? I'm crazy. I've, J. I've been meaning to ask you that. I was gonna say we can fix this. And he's got he's always nice enough to have me on and always supports. And he has a great channel and does cool stuff and has way more cooler shit than I've was ex- ever seen, I think. Honestly, I think you might have the biggest collection I've ever seen. Uh, this ain't all of it. But, well, that's the part two where I'm like, God damn. <laughs> like, are we serious right now? Like, it's a lot. It's a lot. But Josh's big thing is horror. And he was nice enough to invite me to um, Motor City Nightmares Horror Convention. Is that the full title? Yeah. Because I don't want to screw that up. Well, Motor City Nightmares. Okay. Is that what they call it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Motor City Nightmares. It's going to be super fun. That'll be in July. But no, Josh is just awesome. He does the YouTube life too. And we have fun talking about stuff. We all, if you've, if you've seen any of our videos, God, we just go. I feel like I've been holding his family captive this whole day. Um, but yeah, we're just going to, we're just going to talk about stuff. And I'm going to, I'm going to ask you the basic, it's been so long since I've had somebody on. So mm. thank you for coming on. Hey, like I, used, people used to come on and then I'm like, what happened? But like in person and shit. Uh, but like, do you remember, I'll ask you the basic ones I ask everybody. Do you remember the first movie you saw in a theater? Like not watched all the way through, but like remember going to see. Muppets Take Manhattan. That's a good one. Yes. I think you told me that before. That's a good one. That yes. is, that's a good one. But the first one you remember seeing all the way through is Sleepaway Camp. Sleepaway Camp. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now, so you have, an, you have a special place for that then. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Where does it fall on your, is it a comfort movie for you or is it really like a top five? Well, see, so what's funny is, is everyone has a top 10, top 20, whatever. I have a top 10, mm-hmm. but I also have a Hall of Fame. Ooh. Now. I like that. My Hall of Fame. Never leave the Hall of Fame. Once you get into the Hall of Fame, nothing. Can Josh, you. that just blew my mind because that's a perfect way to put it. Because I'm oh, like, yeah. I always say that I'm like certain things interchange, and I'm like favorite, but I'm like Hall of Fame. That's different. No, that's cool. a good one. Okay, so what's your Hall of Fame? I could give you what's in my Hall of Fame in horror, okay, or comedy, okay, or you know whichever genre. I okay. Sleepaway Camp. Got it. Halloween. Got it. Original. Original. Got it. Nightmare on Elm Street 3. That's, a, that's, yeah. Night of the Demons. Okay. Demons 1 and 2. Okay. And. God, you got your list ready. Oh, yeah. Return of the Living Dead. Okay. Not Night? Night of the Living Dead. Oh, it's great, but I get, yeah. Well, see. His, it's your Hall of Fame, man. I mean. Oh no, oh, no, you're good. Well, see, Night of the Living Dead to me is like, all right, so I have a Hall of Fame. Yeah. I have a top 10. Yeah. But I also have Legendary. Where do you put in, like... Okay, now we're making tears, okay? Yes. Okay, but where do you put Predator? Or Predator, Jaws? All right, Jaws is in the Hall of Fame. For real? For you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Like, personally, it's like... Okay, I'll ask you in a minute. But, like, where do you put those Predator and Jaws? Predator... Creature or monster? Because I don't consider him the same as the creature of the Black Lagoon. But, see, I'm I'm controversial when you come creature. Because, see, everyone's like, what do you call a creature? Well, the predator's more of a humanoid. I get, but he's still a creature. Yeah. Like, because I thought Xenomorph when you said that. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, here's the thing. So, to me, even though it breaks the cliche of what is a creature feature and what is not, to me, predator is not a creature. Really? To me, I guess he's, he's like a tribe, like a, a a race, like a species. I guess, but yeah. still, like, I get what you mean, though. Not a creature, like a. It's not. It's not like a xenomorph. Yeah, I get. What, okay. Okay, that's fair. Well, but still, where do you put it? Like, oh, it's thriller so, or like it's not a thriller, thriller, but like a. I want to say it's one of those slash. What I mean, but yeah. it's thriller and horror. You think it's a horror movie, really? I think it's a. Horror I think, movie. but the, the funny thing is, if you didn't have the spaceship in the beginning, it'd be the same as Jaws, where we don't know what it is and we don't see True. it. But I consider Jaws more horror than Predator. Well, but I don't know why, because I'm like it's the same shit. Is right. it because Arnold's there? <laughs> is it because of that? But is it because of the action? Maybe I'm feeling that way. I don't know. Well, so you gotta look at it like or this. suspense. When do we when do we start throwing suspense in? They just throw shit at us at one point. It's like we don't. Come on. Shut up. Well, see, to me, psycho suspense. Okay, that's that's a good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's a. Well, I think honestly, that's rare. Now that I'm thinking about, it. like, I know Hitchcock is one of the greats, but to actually have something that's suspenseful. Oh yeah. The whole like as a as a genre, I don't think anybody else can do that right now. Well, see, Hitchcock is the only person who's ever been success, successful in doing suspense, thriller, and horror all in one catalog. Where do you put Psycho? 
as in like my like do you respect it or like do you love it or is it just one because of, of course I, when i say i love film i feel like i like citizen kane i know and there's the appreciation for it yeah but and i'll put it on certain lists you know but where would you for for you like where do you put it in your where do you just like it or uh it's made a couple lists here and there yeah but to me it falls a little bit short of being on the horror oh yeah no i think you're totally right with the suspense thing for yeah. sure i think the birds is scarier birds is the scary. birds is scary oh, yeah. the birds wait is that me oh yeah. hey lawrence hi do you like horror films let me know <laughs> ask us if some oh i guess i can't get rid of that um no, that's honestly, but I'm trying to think like, I don't even think there is a director now that does suspense, like straight suspense like that. No. Because, yeah. No, but the birds are scary. Uh, when they're on the playground and then the kids are walking, that is so scary. And you're, uh, and it's just some birds. But it's like, oh, here they come. But they did do mess up shit on that set. Yeah. They were like tying <laughs> birds to ladies. That's what I'm talking about with like the frogs and shit. Oh, yeah. Back in the day, they were like, they tied, look it up. Look it up. They tied birds to her and just let them attack. Oh, yeah. So who got to take somebody got to take by a lion? Jody Foster yep. got to take by a lion. I'm like, but mm-hmm. Jesus, there was just no rules. But I'm like, could you really imagine that being your job for the day? Imagine being like a, a really trying to make an actor, and they're like, we're gonna throw snakes on you. We're gonna throw frog. I'd be like, frog. I don't know if I'd want to do that. Not. In the, I don't know if I'd want to do that for the whole. And you know how movies work. Oh yeah. Over and over and over again. Like oh, that's yeah. what. Like we were talking about The Walking Dead earlier, and I'm like, how long was Andrew Lincoln just spinning around in a hallway? Well, you know what I mean? I'm like, Andrew oh, yeah. Lincoln was probably just bumping into walls in a hospital gown for 18 hours. And it's like, people, if you're not into <laughs> film and stuff, it's like, I'll look at things being, like, I'll be watching you, I'll be like, damn, that must have sucked to shoot. I feel like oh, you yeah. just were, like, crawling in the mud or something all day. I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's awful. But no, um, no, yeah, uh, suspense, though. Tell me last time, like, that's what I mean. Like, even think, talking about the birds, I'm like, I can feel that feeling of, like, get out of the goddamn school and get home. Oh, like yeah. it's making me panic. And it's like, even when they're in the house <laughs> and they're boarding it up, like, but I'm like, I, I really can't think of it. Now I'm, I'm having a new appreciation for Hitchcock right now. Cause I'm like, I don't think anybody's ever done just straight suspense like that. Even now I'm like, what is like that? Nothing. I can't even think of anything. I'm like, here we go. Just going to be a controversial one too. Quentin Tarantino. He's made horror. Oh yeah, action and suspense. What's this, what do we call suspense for him? So, I I would honestly I might throw Reservoir Dogs in there. That is his suspense. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's also his action. Oh, for sure, yeah. Because yeah. I I think people forget like the entire movie's in one room. Yep. That's not what was the movie that came out with the coffin, buried or something. Oh yeah, buried. Was it the grazing ever? No, but I was like the fact that you could entertain me with a camera and a box for the entire movie. Oh yeah, that's not easy to do. That's a hard thing to do. And Reservoir Dogs is literally down in a warehouse. Oh, like, yeah. we could go make that, is yep. the thing. Like, <laughs> so who did somebody bring up the other day? I think it might have been, somebody pronounced Harvey Keitel wrong. Now, normally I wouldn't be upset, but I'm like, you're talking about film. <laughs> and, you're <laughs> yeah. said, and you said Harvey Keitel. And you, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, sorry. If you, and if you're 18, I might give you a, a pass at first. Because oh, yeah. I'm sure there's people I say wrong. If you are between 25 and 45 and you are saying, Harvey Keitel and you're reviewing film. I'm sorry. <laughs> like you need to rethink <laughs> you need to rethink what you're doing. I love Harvey Keitel, by the way. But no, okay, yeah, I'll I'll take that. And then he did Dusk Till Dawn. Dusk Till Dawn. He did uh Death Proof. Yeah. Oh yeah. And one of his best suspense movies, and I call it suspense because they they worked up to it, but everyone's like it's drama. But if you really look at it, the last 20 minutes of this movie, once upon a time in Hollywood. Oh no! I was about to say what I was going to say. Where we put that one at? Because that's yeah. a little. Uh, did you did you like that one? I I I need to rewatch it. I liked it. I think Brad Pitt was the best part. Like Brad Pitt was oh, way yeah. better than Leo. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm I might say something controversial here. I, Leo is great, obviously. <laughs> I don't think he's everything that like. I think that some people, and not that he's not amazing, but I'm like I've watched things where I'm like, no, this person's elevating it. I people oh, get yeah. mad at this one. Joaquin is what elevates Gladiator. Oh, yeah. It's and it's Joaquin doing the dumb shit like spinning the sword in the Senate, not paying attention, sticking his tongue. It's, it's Joaquin that elevates that. And Russell Crowe is great. Oh yeah. But it's Joaquin that's like I, I think I think Russell Crowe is like, oh shit. I better step my game <laughs> up now. Like, you know, that's how and and it, he's great, but he also has action and fighting and all this stuff, which is hard to do. But 
Joaquin is just like walking around Senate rooms and sitting in a throne. Like, oh yeah. And I'm like, nope, nope. He's gonna be. He's he's the best part of Gladiator. He is. He is the best part. Of, he acting wise, he is. I'm shocked that he didn't get acknowledged more for that. But and people get mad when I say that. But I think Brad Pitt is not acknowledged enough. Oh, he's not. I know because he's like the heartthrob of the '90s and stuff. But I'm like, he's great. Uh, well, he's see, great. You could take people like Brad Pitt and pretty much make whatever you want to make. Yes. But Brad Pitt. All right. Early in his career, he didn't care what he was in. He just wanted to get out there. Right. Later on, he started caring about the movies he was in, so that's why he started doing the Ocean's Elevens and stuff. Like I that. like Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, you know, they they were good movies. I liked Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those must have been fun to film. Yeah. Oh yeah, but now he's like. I always forget he's Thelma and Louise, right? Yep. Okay. He was also in uh, Deadpool. 2. True Romance. True Romance. That's where they got the character for Saul in Pineapple Express from. Mm -hmm. I always loved that. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Did you know that in True Romance, 60% of the vocabulary words, whatever you want to call it, was all ad libbed? What? Mm -hmm. Stop. Nope. When I think, didn't they really shoot it on a roller coaster too? Mm -hmm. I'd be pissed. Wait, that's what I need to. Um, speaking of Brad Pitt and interview with the vampire and everything, where's, the, where's Christian Slater? Why is Christian Slater doing things? He actually is. Where's he at? He's doing more producing and directing. Okay, well, Christian Slater, we need the Christian Slater assance. <laughs> That's what we need. We need the Christian Slater assance, the Wesley Snipes assance. That's why I just keep bringing people in, like the Sinbad assance. I'm like, I need all these people back. No, Christian Slater's great, but... Sinbad. His best movie was House Guest. Sinbad is so goddamn funny. Mm -hmm. Go back and watch some Sinbad. Like, oh, yeah. Sinbad is genuinely a guy. I mean, he is funny. And what's... Okay, the Sinbad movie everybody says doesn't exist exists, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? There's Which a movie one? that he did that I swear I've seen. And everybody says it's not real now, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. I'll... He was in House Guest, First Kid. He was in a ton of stuff. I think he like chose to walk away though. Yeah. Well, yeah. What happened was people were like ripping him off. I heard like straight yeah. up stealing his bit and stuff. I'm like, I don't know. I think I Nicole said this yesterday during the live for Kazam because I said something about the poster for Kazam. It looks off, but it's that weird time of like I think they were really editing his face. Yeah. But she goes, no, I think they want him to look more like Sinbad. But and I'm like, that could have been the case where it's like the facial recognition thing. And like I said, it's very obviously it's Shaq. But when you look, you're like, it's not cartoony. <laughs> but I'm like, it's not. I know what Shaq looks like. I'm mm -hmm. like, and there's something slightly off. And she's like, I think they want him to look like. In the comments, she's like, I think they want him to look like Sinbad. I'm like, oh, yeah, because that would have been a big pop in time for him, too. Well, originally, they wanted Sinbad. Really? Yeah. Then why was Kazam being made? Because we can't get away from Kazam. Okay, Josh, <laughs> you just blew my fucking mind. Listen. No. I thought Kazam was like, we, we have Shaq. We have to make a movie with Shaq. So go from there. And I thought they just went like, remember Aladdin a couple of years ago? Do that. And I thought they were just playing off the fact that they had Shaq. And now you're telling me this was a real film that was trying to be made with Sinbad? Yeah, they originally wanted Sinbad. He read the script. And <laughs> I love like, that you know this stuff. <laughs> he he read the script and he's like, he don't he he can't see his name tied to something like Sinbad that. Sinbad said, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> what the shit is happening? How come I don't have a motivation to be a rapper until the middle of the movie? And then DeBrat shows up. I forgot about that. Yeah. But there's a whole lot going on. <laughs> but I'm like, I really thought it was just a gimmicky. Because speaking of Space Jam earlier, like, obviously, that was we want to make money. If you guys yeah. go back and watch it, it is product placement. It is this, but we still love it because of Looney Tunes. Oh, yeah. But that was blatantly a giant commercial. Oh, we yeah. can You can still love it and admit that. I thought that's what this was, and now you're blowing my mind. Well, see, so once Sinbad said he didn't want to do nothing with it, they were like, well, who are we going to get to be in this? And one of the producers, <laughs> and I wanted to say Call this earlier, <laughs> one of the producers was like, I'm playing Shaq Fu, why don't we just get Shaq? Do you think there was a magic in Orlando magic tie in there somewhere? Oh, there definitely was. Maybe? Because yeah. it's so funny when you watch it, too, because he's blatantly wearing, like, everybody had a Charlotte Hornets windbreaker. He's blatantly wearing things like that, but they took the logos off. And I, I was yeah. like, I guarantee you there's something in his contract that's like he can't be repping other teams or something. Because yeah. this was still at a time that oh, yeah. they made a joke like the happy deal when French fries fell. And I was like, oh, McDonald's wouldn't let that fly today. Oh, yeah. Today, McDonald's would not let that. You said happy deal? Maybe that's way too close to us. And I'm oh, like, yeah. <laughs> man, that's 
oh god now you're really blowing now i'm gonna have to go down the kazam rabbit hole later and be like what the fuck man but horror is honestly more interesting with things like that because it's horror is normally where every ask any director or watch any interview 99.9 percent .9 of the time including me a random man who's oh my god oh my god no kazam with shaquille o'neal <laughs> <laughs> if you have disney plus you don't need to watch it. <laughs> you can you can literally just skip. It's it's Shaq and he's a genie, <laughs> and it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter. And it's just insane. But Sinbad's the shit. Sinbad is awesome, and he's funny, and he's great. And I don't know why he's not in things anymore. And I'm like, you're awesome. You're great. Oh no, you're good. I so, I just can't see comments. I'm blind. I'm blind, and I'm not good at lives. Josh is better at lives. Never saw Shazam no. or whatever. S somebody was stealing his bit. I think that's why he walked away. I think that's why he. I remember yeah. that being a big thing. Where he's like, "Fuck this, man!" But Sinbad is one of the funniest comics ever, and people are like sleeping on the Sinbad game. I need Sinbad to come back. But uh, no, yeah. Where is he at? We need to find. Everybody go find Sin. We need to find Sinbad immediately. <laughs> But he actually just did an interview. He uh he walked away because the last three movies that he was on, they robbed him of pretty much a lot of his money. We need justice for Sinbad. No, I'm I'm gen I don't like that because Sinbad's all, I, like I said. I, he, if people don't know, like Sinbad is genuinely extremely talented. And even though I always say this, I'm like because my uncle sued Jingle all the way, <laughs> but it was the movie. It wasn't like like somebody said that on on something like well Arnold. This I was like well he didn't sue Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sinbad. I was like he sued the production company and won. But I'm like he's great in that. Oh yeah, he's he's funny as shit in that. If if Sinbad wasn't there, I don't think it would be as much of a classic as it is because Arnold's great. Predator, I stand by as his best acting. Oh yeah, I think oh, that yeah. Predator is genuinely great acting by him. I want to say Predator was his best acting. His best action was Terminator 2. Oh, yeah. Oh, Terminator 2. That's, I will give James Cameron this. To come into franchises and do the best, like, sequels ever. I didn't realize it with Alien. And we have Alien Romulus coming out. Did you watch that trailer? Oh, yeah. Holy shit. I was not expecting that. I was like, damn. I'd have a reaction up, too. I was like, I, I'm the huge Predator fan. My sister's a huge Xenomorph fan. I love them. But... It's I my, and my alien review needs to. That's what I need to do too. My alien review should be up at some point, but um, and we can talk about that if you want. That what? Damn. But to, Alien has Ridley Scott starring, and then we have James Cameron come in, and make one of the best sequels of all time. Oh yeah. And then it's David Fincher, right? Mm -hmm. This is like a. I don't think people realize like, I don't think <laughs> any other franchise franchise has that. Many, like David Fincher. If you have David Fincher, James Cameron, and Ridley Scott in a area together it's like that's titans of industry so it's like for them to all do one thing that's crazy do you like alien or aliens better controversial aliens is better on film okay alien is better on paper what year did aliens come out i think aliens came out in either 87 or 88 they were that far apart yeah because alien was 79 right yeah okay here's oh. here's what i want to say about alien what happened to taglines you guys remember we had taglines and things? Oh, yeah. And, but now they, they people still only do. No, we knew them. And in space, nobody can hear you scream is one of the best of all time. Oh, yeah. And not just that, my, one of my favorite things ever is when the absence of sound or music is louder than that. And whenever it's in anything, video games, uh, TV, movies, whatever. I love that when it's done right. Oh, yeah. This is a random one, but Final Fantasy X does it really well when the big mons, when Sin comes in and you're like, Holy shit. And then people are all dying, but there's no sound after. And it's like, oh God, but damn alien. It's so, <laughs> it's so good. And those effects still hold up. And I feel like because Star Wars is out at that time, you're good at that. Right? These days they make the tagline, the title. That's right. true. And it's bullshit. And I hate it. And we need to start cramming taglines down everybody's little gullets again. That's what I oh, need yeah. in my life. Cause <laughs> I'm like, I, but just these little things that, you know, in space, nobody hears you scream. And that's the best part. And also the best part, and I think people forget, is, and coming from somebody who worked in a factory, you work for something like, a, the, you know, it's like, we just want our goddamn bonus and to go home. These are yes. not, these are not <laughs> fighters. Like, And I'm telling you, it's exactly what it is. What's the black dude's name? He's the best. Uh, uh, the whole time when he's like, I just want to get the fuck out of here. He's like, yeah. that's literally, he's a, he is a blue collar icon. Oh, yeah. He's like, I just want to get the fuck out. Even when they go to fight it, he's like, let's get the shit over <laughs> so I was like no that's literally how your f-150s are built <laughs> that is i'm telling you that's exactly what would happen we'd be like well who's going to fight it because we i want to get the 
fuck out of this plant. That's what it oh, would yeah. be. And it'd be like, it, it wouldn't even be that we wanted to save each other. It would be that it's like, I will not die in this plant. <laughs> I will not die in this factory. It's not going to happen. Let's just get it over with. <laughs> like our job that we do every day. But Sigourney Weaver's great in it, but it's the claustrophobia in it. Oh, yeah. The claustrophobia oh, yeah. in it is so scary and well done. And even in the end, in the pod, you I forgot that that happened. Yeah. Also, I probably know four people, nothing against Top Gun, with cats named Goose. Yeah. Why isn't anybody naming their cat Jonesy? Jonesy <laughs> is a pivotal part of this thing, and it's a cat. Oh, yeah. And it's an, and, he's, and Sigourney and all the promotions is holding it. And I was like, nobody's naming the cat Jonesy. Exactly. And I don't appreciate that. But, um, now, Cameron, yeah. Cameron, James Cameron, he's smart in his casting also. <laughs> see, James Cameron, <coughs> the shit I give him, writes, or maybe not write, <coughs> but does female characters better than probably anybody. <laughs> I'll so, give him mad credit there. Vasquez from Aliens. In Titanic. <laughs> She's also the stepmother in Terminator 2 that kills the stepfather. Stop. Mm. Oh, my God. Are they buds or something? They're cousins. Oh, cute. I so, like that. Cute. Now, the thing about, like, when... I like Vasquez. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> well, well, I don't know why we were making her every possible... If I was her, I'd run with it. I'd be like, can I be like a different, can I just have an accent and everything? Can we just, can we just do a different thing? And I would just run with it at this point and be like, that's awesome. Oh yeah. So with, let's go back to Sinbad for a minute. How does the mom die in, doesn't they kill the mom in Terminator 2? Uh, you don't. Can we, see... Terminator 2 is so fucking good. Oh yeah. Oh, best, one of the best scores of all time. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry, but when you can put bad to the bone and. You could be mine from Guns N' Roses on the same soundtrack. I'm sold. Oh my god! Wait, they were like, oh my god, Arnold was the original Iron Man. Like, remember when Robert Downey had a a grip hold on ACDC? Yeah, yeah, I loved that. And then we and they were tours. I don't know if people are old enough from. There was like a tour. I remember my friend went. It was like the DT. It was at DTE, and it was like I don't know if it was an ACDC cover band or if it was ACDC, but it was Iron Man themed. Everything oh, yeah. was Iron Man, but it was just ACDC. And it was like, it was a huge thing, but they did have a ton of guns and roses. They have so much wearing a guns and roses shirt. Yep. Edward Furlong is, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, As shit. As a matter of fact, the, or the redheaded kid that's with the. Uh, um, he's from Sleeker Shorts. Yeah, he's also a musician. Oh, what's he in? Uh, His band was popular in the 90s, but he's no longer. But did, do you think Guns N' Roses had a contract with them or something? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, because yeah. well, does Welcome to the Jungle play? Uh, it, it is at the end. It does briefly because when they're uh, or is it in the background on the it, radio. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, in the yeah. background. So here's what happened: Guns N' Roses at the time was getting ready to do their split, so that was the last big contract they signed. And James, <laughs> T2? Oh yeah, and James Cameron said, "Okay, well, since you guys are getting ready to split, all y'all will get royalty checks that equal out to the same amount." Okay. So when they were doing that. Axel Slash and all those was like, okay, let's do this. So when they did You Could Be Mine, mm. that was the supposed to be the theme title to Terminator 2. Well, thank God it wasn't. But, but it's still great. I'm oh, like, yeah. no, that you hear that music, <laughs> that music kick in, and it's like, man, it, and I don't care if I'm not watching it. If I hear the 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 sad part of the score, we're getting the thumbs up, oh, and yeah. it's going, it, oh my god, it's so, Sarah Connor, though, man. Like, there's another, there's another one referenced by Dr. Dre. Yeah. Like, like, how? like, oh no, Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Yeah. Ice Cube. And and Natural Born Killers. Like a name. Like like your name is Sarah Connor. And I'm like, oh shit. Like no, Sarah Connor is awesome too. That's what I mean. Even I was talking about this. I did a Titanic review back when those jackasses exploded or, or got impacted on. Um, quit going down to the Titanic, you freaks. Um, for real. I'm like, would you do that? No. No, neither. No. Fuck that. I, no, I'm not supposed to be down there. Yeah. I'm not going down there. I, yeah, no. And I love Titanic. I do. I'm a I'm a goober who loves Titanic. But even Rose has a strength in her that is she ain't no she ain't no she's about to off herself instead of being married off like she's like I ain't doing this shit I'm done and then it's like I'm gonna live my life even if that's the whole point the end you see she lived the life she wanted and I'm like she might not be Sarah Connor she might not be Ripley she's a badass in her own right I love when she lights up a cig and and uh Molly oh. Brown oh goddamn misery yes. Kathy Bates and Kathy Bates is looking at her like I like you and I'm like I and I, so I'm like I love what he does with female characters but. Man, Sarah Connor's the best one, though. Sarah Connor's the best. Breaking her out of a... I gotta go break my mom out of the psych ward real quick. It's now, so good. Here's the thing. Speaking, going back on taglines. Now, I, I like the taglines. We should do a game of that. 
Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I say for Terminator 2, I get Judgment Day and all that other stuff. I get that. That out Oh, now that you're saying that, real quick, that was the first imagery that really scared me as a kid, where I really thought oh, the yeah. end of the world was coming. I really was like, that's how it ends, in fire and flame, and all of us are dead, blowing away at the park. Some that believe, really fucked me up as a kid. Some believe that fire will be the way. I'm just saying, I thought 1997 was it. <laughs> yeah. I really did. I thought 97 was it as a kid, as a little kid. I was like, oh shit. Or like something bad would happen. But I really did. I was like, that's because there really is what would happen. Yeah. But I really was like, this could happen at any moment. And then uh, you got to remember, I'm like five or six and when I'm watching this. And then, <laughs> and then 9 11 happens when uh, I'm like nine. And I'm like, I was prepping for this to go down. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, I'm not Sarah Connor yet. This can't happen. Even in the third one, though, I always really like this because they, they got crazy when they pull her casket out. Oh, yeah. It's full of guns. Oh, yeah. Sarah Connor's the shit. She's so cool. <laughs> like, she's so awesome. She's the best. So here's a tidbit. When I met Edward Furlong. You met Edward Furlong? Yep, a couple oh, of years God. ago at Motor City Comic Con. When I met him, I was talking to him. And I was like, so, and this was after the one he came out where they killed him at the beginning. Yeah! Yeah, so that was the original ending of Terminator 2. Because Terminator 3, until... Linda we all Hamilton. would have lost our shit. Oh, yeah. Until Lyndon Hamilton made signed a contract to be in another movie. Uh-huh. That's how they were going to set up part three is after the Terminator killed John Connor at the end of part two, now Sarah Connor has lost her mind and is going after every Terminator that comes. Okay. Now that we're talking about family lineages, <laughs> we would have went nuts. Could you imagine if Edward Furlong died at the end of T2 or some shit? I mean... No, we would have lost our shit. I, I look at it... It was like hard this. enough with the thumbs up. We would have lost our shit. I look at it like this. With the way it ended, it was good. John Connor would be fucked up also, I just realized. He would have major daddy issues. Yeah. The only father you ever knew is a cyborg. Nah. But on the same hand, at some point, and I'm going to get a little bit real here, at some point, isn't every single family member... A robot. <laughs> kind of, no, well, yeah. I mean... Going through the motions. A robots, we're so you know, in like these movies and everything, futuristic yeah. movies, we're supposed to listen to the robots. Yeah. Our parents, we're supposed to listen to them. Oh, good point. I still what the, the the black dude holding the the trigger over the thing over the trigger. That's still that's a tense moment. That really gets me every time. I was oh. I always felt really bad for him, but I'm like, oh man, yeah, I was like that, but no, I yeah. No, I liked it. Well, John Connor, god damn, man, you really <laughs> were going through it. I think he's robbing ATMs. Yep. I remember thinking robbing ATMs would be a lot easier. I mean, I never robbed an ATM, but I remember thinking like any of us could do it. If yeah. John Connor, any, but then he's, but doesn't he say like my mom showed me how to do this? Yep. Oh, that's it. So his mom's in the site. That, okay. I should know teacher, but I, man, I should rewatch that. And then the foster mom is there. Yep. Got it. Got it. Oh, what was, uh, and we'll get into this because I want to keep up. T2 watery cop just was in an episode of The Walking Dead when I was rewatching it. And I was like, what is T2 doing here? Oh, yeah, Robert Patrick. Yeah, I was like, what are you doing here, T2? Yeah. But uh, I was like, good for you. Most, I, I mean, his his run is more iconic than... He he literally ran so that Tom Cruise could be made <laughs> into a meme because that was the first one. Robbing ATMs with the kid from... Salute your shorts! Yeah, yeah. butt... Or was it... No, Donkey Lips was the big guy. And then, <laughs> was it butt kiss? I think so. Or Sputnik? I think it was Sputnik. Was it Sputnik? I yeah, so. yeah. Salute your shorts. What a bunch of weird shit we had. But uh, <laughs> and Dude Ranch. That one wasn't as good though. And Clarissa explains it all. Was the original T two? <laughs> no, I don't know who came out first. But <laughs> what a weird power. Yeah. What was the real world available? That was weird. But, Butnik? Was yeah. that it? Okay. God, I don't know. Camp. Uh, why, huh? <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Uh, oh, we should do. We should watch. Um, Are you afraid of the dark? Oh, yeah. We should do something on that. Yeah, like yeah. Kids, kids horror and like how horror – do kids have horror well, now? Because we watched it at 7 p.m. on Saturdays. Oh, yeah. Well, here we go. Bad speaking, scared me. Speaking of like kids horror, books, scary stories to tell in the dark. That's a kid's book. They made a movie out of it. Now, did the movie do the book justice? I didn't – I don't know if I watched it all the way through. So he, I remember a cool that they had that cool scarecrow, oh, right? Yeah. Harold. Oh, yeah. Was it Sputnik? But no, okay. So kids horror, go ahead. You know, kids so. horror. I'm like, kids don't have horror. Now we did. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's some horrifying imagery in uh, in Are You Afraid of the Dark. Oh, yeah. Uh, Fair Street. Fair Street? It's on Netflix. They got three movies. I'll check it out. What is it? Okay. So Fair Street is something like R.L. Stein. 
Okay. I liked the new Goosebumps. I'll just throw that out there. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was fun. And I like that they put him him in it. I like that. Oh, yeah. Now, the thing is, is with Fair Street, from the books to screen, they knew that they're dealing with a new generation. Okay. They knew that they were not going to get away with that. I'm telling you. We, no, we paid the iron price for our ch child entertainment. You want something happy to happen? A horse is going to drown. You want this to happen? <laughs> some <laughs> fucked up is going to happen. And it was fucked up. It was it was rough. It was they, some of them were rough that we had. Uh Secret of Nim doesn't get acknowledged enough. Do you remember that movie? Yep. Don Bluth was killing the game. Don Bluth was straight killing the game. Like even Littlefoot's mom dying is rough. Oh, yeah. And it's not even it, her speech is sad, but like she straight squares up with that T-Rex. And that's an animation. Oh, but yeah. I'm like, no, we had there were some things that wolf still scares me in the never ending story. Labyrinth is crazy. I mean, it's not as scary, I don't think, but we still had scary things. <laughs> but then again, I'm like, I feel like our generation, and and I mean, I, I'm wearing the same shit in my opinion. Like T2, we were watching. I watched T2 when I was six. I That's not scary, but I watched, but that was because I'm I a little bit watch. older, but you know. No, but <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. uh, like we, but we, I watched it with my sister. I watched, like, that's what I was telling, I was telling your wife that I was like, no, I remember my sister was 10 years older than me, and she was babysitting. She rented – mom must have been going out of town or something because it was overnight. And, and obviously, she was fucking with us because she got <laughs> killer clowns around her space oh, yeah. and arachnophobia. And all I remember is a spider going into a helmet and killing a kid in the game. Yep. <laughs> and that's all I remember from that. And I'm like, that scared me. And then there's killer clowns from outer space. Well, so arachnophobia to me is a very underrated movie. I have not watched it in years. Because God rest his soul, it had uh, Julian Sands in it. I'm blanking. Man. No, yeah, no, yeah, 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 got it. You know, but my thing is, is like, imagine the most poisonous spider that's in the Amazons or whatever mm -hmm. comes to America mm -hmm. and starts infecting all the regular spiders. Oh, is that what happens? Yeah. So here's the thing. Oh, something kind of like, it like take yeah 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 something because I was like wait is it a bunch of them or how do they all get it? and I'm like what's going on with arachnophobia <laughs> like yeah I'm gonna have to check that out no and so that's what then what year did that come out I think that came out in eighty nine or ninety yeah but I definitely think my sister was just fucking with us because I remember that really that really messed me up was that and then I think we've talked about this before and it's free on YouTube the faculty is so good oh, yeah. the faculty is is why was Usher there and that uh, and honestly I don't really especially now. I feel like we get so many redone covers of songs from before that we're just dropping in. And I, I will say this, people might get sick of it with guardians of the galaxy. I like that they've moved forward in time with their playlists, but they're not doing that cover shit and they're just using them. But like for a minute and I'm not hating on the Batman or anything, but like black widow did Nirvana. Everybody's doing that. And I'm like, that's cool. And all I like a redone cover as much as the next person. But that, the faculty, is one of the coolest ones with another brick in the wall. Oh, yeah. When it pans down on the football game, oh, yeah. it's great. And it's like, it's so good. I love it. And then I think this. Elijah Wood <laughs> yeah. was doing the faculty and probably got the, and then, like, that came out like, 98 or something. So he was probably filming that and then went to New Zealand and did Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, what were we doing at 17 or 18? Were you taking it? But then I'm like, did, do you think he ever, that's crazy to think. Like, oh, yeah. you were just hanging out doing the faculty, snorting drugs out of pens with Josh Hartnett, yeah. with 30 Days a Night, make your comeback in Oppenheimer. I love it. That was the first renaissance I wanted, and we made it happen, so we can make Sinbad happen. Oh, yeah. It made it with an ordinary house spider. There you go, yeah. Okay, okay. And one goes in, is there one in a shoe at one point? Yes. I don't know, but I'm, I'm telling All, you, it scarred me. Like, my most memorable scene from arachnophobia is when they're eating the popcorn and he grabs one and you see the spider does he... I don't all I know is that there's one in the helmet and everybody's like get up and play the game and it's like no and it's like that's horrifying to think it's it's kind of like the thing that happened in the NFL when that guy fell out and it's like what the shit is happening and it's like oh, get yeah. the fuck up and it's like no arachnophobia <laughs> oh my god no okay so yeah arachnophobia I'm gonna have to rewatch that and then what when did what Eight crazy legs, crazy freaks, eight crazy oh, freaks. Uh, eight legged freaks. Eight legged freaks. When did that? What was that? When did that come out? I think that came out in two thousand. Oh my god, T two's in the faculty. Yep. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, no, he's the first thing you see. He's flipping things. He's a pissed off coach. I think everybody had a coach like that at their school. It's like you're blatantly on a substance. I did. And you're yeah, I did too. Yeah, our <laughs> our football coach was blatantly eating pills and drinking <laughs> during teaching history in classes and then coaching football. Like. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, let, let's look at it like this, though. So with the faculty, 
It was so good. Such a great movie. And Calvin Klein paid for it. Oh, yeah. Same decade. I won't say same year, but same decade you had Disturbing Behavior. Which one? I've never seen that. So that you're, had, you're one of the few people that brings up movies where I'm like, oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, that had uh, the guy who played Cyclops in the X-Men movies. Uh, uh, James Marsden. Yeah. Because he, that's how I knew... I covered a movie. I didn't do a full review. It's on TikTok. A company was nice enough to send it to me early. And that's when I was like, what the shit is happening? Because I was like, this isn't the same as the other ones I've been sent. Not that the other ones are bad, but they were very independent, low budget. And then I was like, okay, well, if Michael... And then I was like, what the fuck is James Marsden doing here? And then I Al Pacino showed up in a bathtub. And I was like, okay, I need to rewind. Something happened here that I missed. It was that Knox goes away. It was pretty... It was, it's all, I mean, if you're bored, it's all. It's good. It's all right. It's like a, an assassin gets dementia. Oh, okay. So it's, it's an interesting concept. Michael Keaton directed it. We support the Keats. But uh, yeah, James Marsden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was looking for the name the other day. It had him. It also had uh, Katie Holmes. What is it about? So, Were they snorting drugs on the pens? No. Nah, they fucked up. So it was, uh, well, I don't know. You might you might think <laughs> different. So it was about this. Uh, Speaking of that, Gene Gray's in the faculty. Keep going. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's about this uh, teacher or professor or whatever is brainwashing these kids to make them like oh, no. preps. Okay. Okay. And so they're taking all the trouble teens and turning them into like mindless drones. And so James Marsden and Katie Holmes are trying to. Why does this kind of sound like Final it? Fantasy Eight or is it Nine? Which is the one with the? Never mind. Yeah, um, I think that was the nine. one with Squall. Is that it? Yeah, but I didn't uh, play that one all the way through. Sorry. This was a good one, and believe it or not. There's a James, not a James Cameron, there's a Terminator uh, reference connection to it too, because the guy who played John Connor in three yeah. is also in this one. That really let people down, didn't it? Well, see. I, I, but then again, like, I was a young when I went, I was a kid. And then you go and going, like, oh, I'm going to see the thing I saw before, and you don't. It, I, I get the disappointment, but I think back on, there was a period of time in the 2000s into the 2010s where things were not reviewed correctly. I go back and I look at shit and I'm like, no, this was not right. Like, this is like, and then I think maybe I'm wrong. And I'm like, this is great. Why were we hating? Why did anybody hate on this? Like, this is yeah. Pacific Rim is one of them. I'm like, I remember they got horrid reviews. Oh, yeah. And I was like, no, <laughs> no. And I'm like, but what do people expect? And then I watch it again when I'm older. I'm like, is Charlie Hunnam a little ridiculous? Yeah, it's a robot fighting monsters movie. Adrisa's elbow is apocalypse. We are canceling the apocalypse. Is sick. And Tom Morello does the music. And I will. Right. I don't know how you feel about like composers, like Robin Jawadi, who does Game of Thrones, Westworld. He did that. Is one of my favorites right now. I really love him. And then uh, a white guy did the music in Black Panther. <laughs> I just need everybody to know that. That is like. Yes, it, that was like a huge deal. They have an all black production and everything. And then I'm like, but of all the things in it, <laughs> what do you think people were like? What the shit are you doing, Ryan Coogler? What do you think uh, people's faces were when they were like, oh no, I got a guy to do the music <laughs> in Black Panther? This big, this big monument of him, and this German white dude with scraggly hair and an oversized sweater walks in. <laughs> you know, everybody was side eyeing Ryan Coogler. Did you know that he was his dorm mate? No. Yeah, that's how we got. That's how they met each other. He was coming over for college. He was from Germany. And he got put in Ryan Coogler's dorm, the director of Black Panther. And he was like, I didn't know anything. I just thought this was how everybody did music here. So I didn't even know there's like a hip hop influence going on. He was like, I just was friends with Ryan and became <laughs> friends with his friends. And I'm like, that's so cool. And that's why it's so versatile because he does oh, yeah. the Mandalorian, mm -hmm. Boba Fett. And I'm like, also, let's imagine not only would that be, do you, hey, white guy from Germany, do you want to come and do <laughs> Black Panther's music? He does the music of when Killmonger walks in and looks at Angela Bassett's face and says, hi, auntie. Oh, I mean, yeah. that would be an intimidating thing to do yeah. for anybody. But then he does Mandalorian and Boba Fett. And it's like, oh, would you like to take over for John Williams, who just retired? Oh, by the way, some of the most iconic, if you don't know all, Star Wars, you at least know the Imperial March. Yeah. You know the music from Star Wars, right? At least minimum. Oh, yeah. Hey, bud, want to come take over him? Make it kind of like it, but not too similar, and kill the game. That's so, that's talent. Like, that's awesome. And it's like, oh, yeah. we wouldn't have it unless he randomly got dormed with Ryan Coogler and thought everybody does hip hop music. And it's great. And it, but you can even hear it more in The Mandalorian of like, it's not total hip hop, but that influence is there. And it may, it's, who would have thought that would have happened in Star Wars? It's, it's awesome. And I will say this I know people have issues with John Williams, but he's the perfect example to show like that music puts you in a world. 
Oh, yeah. I don't think Star Wars would be the same without that music. I don't. It could be the exact same thing with good music, but not that. It's oh, like yeah. Jurassic Park. He does the original Harry Potter theme. Like, yeah. come on, man. But I actually met him. Did you? He was doing. Uh, Stop it. Over at the Detroit Opera House, he was doing. That's like a legend, man. Oh, yeah. He was doing the music and he parked in the garage I was working in. Stop. Was he nice? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Yeah. And then who's his son? I just found it out. Toto, he's like Africa singer, and yeah. I didn't know that. I'm like, that's <laughs> awesome. That's so cool. Oh my god! Imagine dropping that your dad's John Williams though at like a music thing. Be like, no, I'm the singer of Toto. People are like, uh huh. It's like my dad's, <laughs> my dad did the Harry Potter theme. No biggie. What? Yeah. What? Okay, I do what I want. I'm like, geez, man, that that's so cool. My, who are some of your favorite composers? What do you think? Well, let me ask you this: what, what? Because we were talking about this. What horror films? Do you like Michael Myers' theme is iconic, but I've told you this. I'm not going to count tubular bells because it's perfect, but I do think it's Nightmare on Elm Street. That score and that it just works. It's so good. I'm going to say now composers, again, controversial. Composers are good, but I don't know their names like that. I know it. I'm a weirdo, but (laughs) it (laughs) it depends on what they are. Like Hans Zimmer, I know, has a certain vibe. Right. So there's certain times I can be like, oh, that's him. But and then it's like James Horner, I can normally like kind of pick out, but I don't know. It's the big ones. It's not yeah. like the only reason I know Ron Jawadi is because it's like came out the gate swinging with Game of Thrones and shit, you know? Oh, yeah. But uh, my favorite like theme. score, yeah, my the- favorite yeah, score yeah, yeah. is The Exorcist. Yeah, man, because it's the best. Yeah. And it, and 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 you're walking past some cre- some priests, and then you walk past some nuns with their wind shit blowing, mm-hmm. and it's fall, and there's leaves on the ground, and your mom's panicking, having an anxiety attack, and she's walking fast home from work, and I you feel it. No, Tubular Bells is so good, and even even the other, it's so good, man. It's perfect. It's so perfect. But I will say, oh, and then we can we'll tie it into this. Besides, who what? I, I I'm like, you can't say horror composer. Yeah. But I'm like, some of them just are, I, I, I'm trying to really think, like, I'm not counting, even though that's iconic, but Michael Myers is, is too, but I'm talking about, like, I guess, no, I guess Halloween is up there when you think about it throughout it, well, see, the build up. Halloween. Not just the piano, I mean, like, the build up of it. I guess Halloween's oh, yeah. up there too. But see, the thing is, those like, like, I love Halloween, obviously. Yep. But uh, the thing is, is with Big Halloween, Mike. oh, yeah. <laughs> The, the problem with Halloween is, is like the music, once you hear it, yeah, it's iconic. Yeah. But there's been so guess, many different yeah. variations of it throughout the entire series that it all of it just kind of loses its... Luster? Yes. Yeah, I see that. But think about like when he's walking up and it's just that dun, dun, oh, yeah. dun. And then it's Dr. Loomis waving a gun in your face. <laughs> Uh, okay, the psycho- Okay, the psychologist field really needs to be looked at in Illinois, though. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's your doctor and the police around your acting like. Could really think about that too, Loomis. Oh yeah. Like, um, God, why am I blanking on his name? I should not be doing that. Donald Pleasance. Donald Pleasance. I almost said Sutherland, not Donald oh, Sutherland. Donald Pleasance. This is what I mean. If these, like, if him and there's a couple other that if they, uh, the mom and. And uh, Friday 13th, like oh, uh, some of these yeah. names, even back then, they were huge, like, but they were like thespians, like, oh, yeah. like, and for them to go, like, oh, I'm gonna do this cheesy horror shit was like gave it legitimacy. Say, that's, I mean, that's what uh, Quentin Tarantino said about Reservoir Dogs. He was like, when Harvey Keitel signed on, I was like, oh shit, we're real now, like, and, I'm panicking. Harvey Keitel, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Harvey Kittle, I almost died. I was like, what? I was like, Harvey, what? I was like, no. And then I was just like, please be 18. And then I looked down at my phone because I was listening to it, like cleaning or something. I'm like, it was like a TikTok or something. So I was just like, oh no, I hope this was a robot talking. And I was like, no, this is a person. I really felt bad. But okay, what's, um like you were saying with Guns N' Roses, not score. What horror film has a has your favorite like needle drop moment tie-ins? Demons. What does it got? It's not like tie-ins for other movies and stuff. No, but- I meant like tie-in like uh. Music. Like like an actual yeah like a song that drops. Oh, you hear the song and you go, oh shit, this is in whatever. I love it because I was like that when people started hearing uh, uh Red Right Hand. Oh yeah. No, when everybody well, when everyone's like Peaky Blinders, Peaky Blinders. Do you know what Theater Bazaar is? Mm. It's a huge Halloween party in Detroit. You like oh, have yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. awesome. Like you have to be dressed up. It's so cool. I highly recommend it. But each 
I will say this. Some people are like, oh, there's weird shit. And I'm like, no, they sp- it's spread out in a way where it's like you don't have to go do nothing you don't want to. Because there's like one like a bondage room, but then there's like just a ballroom, but then there's like a old school Nosferatu theater room, and you you could just go drink and dance, or you could go through the entire Masonic temple, and they have like bellhops dressed up and shit. The whole place is done. I've never seen anything like it. But me and my buddy Dan walked in together, and he was in like a, a um, what's the mask for Mexican wrestlers? Luchador. Yeah, he's in one of those with a suit on, like a <laughs> like a black tie suit, and like that's all he wanted to wear. And I was wearing just I was remember was last minute. It was like a half skull, so we were like kind of looked like we were going to like a fancy party a little bit. So we go walking in together to the Masonic, and they give you a big fancy ticket and shit. It's awesome. And Red Right Hand starts playing, and we both look at each other and go scream curfew and everybody's like what are you talking about and we were like scream it's in scream and they're like and then they've got popular peaky blinders again and i'm like no it's always going to be scream the curfews and and someone's having a house party so every time i hear red right hand i'm like scream oh, so yeah. do you have one like a favorite like that that you always go oh, that yeah. movie every time i hear rebel yell by billy idol it's on um, demons right when uh, all hell breaks loose okay i'm gonna have to i'm gonna watch this that. You can watch it tonight. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna say if I didn't if I had more time tonight, I'd be down to it tomorrow weekend if you want. That'd be sick. Yeah. Um, Lost Boys, I keep looking at, and I'm like, that needs. I love the Lost Boys. Kiefer Sutherland plays the best creep at that. Why are they so upset? They don't play the Doors in that, do they? No. They're just obsessed with Jim Morrison. Yeah. Now, why do they worship window. Jim Morrison? Because fun fact, we almost got kicked out of a restaurant uh, in Disney World because me and my sister were arguing with our mom that necromancy killed Jim Morrison, and we were in our twenties. This was like five years ago, and my mom said, "Please stop yelling about necromancy." And then a boss or like a manager or a, came up to our table and said, "We're going to need you guys to stop yelling about <laughs> Jim Morrison being murdered and to be quiet." And I'm like, "We were like, we told you, mom, necromancy kills Jim Morrison," and I'm like, "We probably sounded psychotic, but yeah, why are they obsessed with Jim Morrison?" So. When I, <laughs> like what? What is going on there with the Jim Morrison shit? Or is he just a poster of him? No, what it is is originally when they were writing the movie. Okay. The original director and everybody and all the mm-hmm. writers and everything was like, we need a score that's going to make us. It's I like their music. Pop. Oh yeah. yeah. So Kiefer Sutherland, great creep, talked to the producers and stuff and said, everyone loves the Doors. Let's just get Morrison. Okay. Because. Sutherland. He did it. Yeah, Jim Morrison worked on that movie. No. Oh, I was gonna say, or like, was a part of like they used that. No. I was gonna say, Jesus Christ. But uh, like his foundation and everything like that. That's, yeah. Yeah, they didn't agree to none of that. Oh. So come on, if I die, if I die, you can put this out. Let people do fun <laughs> shit. Every I want people to have an input because I I know certain people be like, no, I want money, and then somebody be like, Abby would love that shit. Put it in there. <laughs> like, come on. Well, here's the thing. Speaking of like music and being in movies and stuff like that. So Michael Jackson's family, mm-hmm. they are doing a whole new Michael Jackson movie that's coming out next year, which I'm mm. on offense of. Ah, uh, that's a mm. okay. But mm. his whole, like all his family, his brothers that are still alive, you know, all of them said no. What? Now here's the thing: Who's doing the movie though? I don't know. I was gonna say that I'd have to look into like, are you gonna fuck it up? Because here's my thing with like Bohemian Rhapsody when it came out. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you were all going home on time to your wives, Queen. I'm sure you were. I'm sure. And they're all like, Freddie, Freddie, calm down. Shut up. Shut uh, up. I totally get it. I totally understand. Like, but come on, man. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sh- okay. Yeah. I, no, I'm sure you guys had input and you were like, please don't put me doing blow <laughs> every five seconds in here and uh, <laughs> banging people behind my family's back and shit. And uh, I'm like, I wouldn't care if I, if I was Queen. First off, can I tell you, I'll tell you something. My mom went to go see Queen and not the Hoople. It was before Queen was big. Damn. Freddie Mercury got sick. And Mott the Hoople was like, fuck this, we're not playing. And Kansas came out. And my mom was so pissed about that to this day. And she was like, no, Ab, it's because you don't go to see Queen and Mott the Hoople and have Kansas come out. There was a riot. They had to shut it down. Damn. And then somebody stomped out my uncle's Colombian red hair. And they got in a fight about it. On, my Nobody, like, you know when you get old enough for your parents to start talking about, like, doing drugs and shit yeah so they had never said anything like that around me ever and then it was christmas day and i was like yeah didn't you guys just see him and then my uncle just turned around and yelled at not my mom but their sister my aunt was like yeah and pat was stomping out my colombian red hair and she was like i didn't know what to do and, and she, he was like you yeah, don't stomp it out and then my mom's like don't yell about this on christmas and i'm like i was like this was 30 years ago but you are all reverting to teenagers 
But no, yeah. I, well, I feel like music is such a, it's a huge part of film, but especially in horror. Oh yeah, because it it's it builds that suspense. That's why I keep thinking about Michael walking down the street, and I'm like that slow build up, that slow piano. That is a great score. Oh, yeah. And then I was thinking, uh, and then I keep looking at the Lost Boys. I'm like, oh, that's got good music too. But when it comes to like, it's scaring me. I think it is Nightmare on Elm Street. But well, see, so here's the thing: the people for Nightmare on Elm Street, the way that they did their music, mm-hmm. is they did their music to where someone sat on a keyboard at one point and it sounded good because that's it's crazy good. And they uh, the way they did their music was is they went completely neutral with they didn't want too popular they didn't want not popular okay they didn't want too dramatic they didn't want not too dramatic okay so the director was like this is what we're going to do every single scene that you're going to read you're going to add a different music oh then once it's done we'll choose whichever one's the best and one. they fought just i mean i don't know if you knew this without freddy krueger there would be no lord of the rings <laughs> because Peter Jackson was the first one that was like, fuck you, Harvey Weinstein. And Harvey Weinstein was like, I'm going to make sure this does not succeed. New Line Cinema was about to fail. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, we'll take that Freddy Krueger shit. They call it the house that Freddy built. Yep. That's what they call New Line Cinema. And it's like, I think about that all the time. I'm like, if Freddy wouldn't have saved that, New Line wouldn't have swept in and saved exactly. Lord of the Rings. Because they were like, why would we make one or two or making three? And he was like, oh, shit, let's go. <laughs> and it's like, that's awesome. But you have it right there, too. I think that what's better i think i think we know which one's better but this is a bo- i love i always said this i was like if i w- had i would be a stripper if i had better beats i was like i'm on only fans and stuff like that's there but it's like i don't I, I feel like i can dance pretty good but i was like but if i had a song i think it would be house of a thousand corpses and you wouldn't really see, that's a creepy scary lyrics and stuff but that beat when it comes on oh, yeah. it's great like house of a thousand corpses is great with Pet Cemetery, the Ramones. Oh yeah! Come on, I, that's so good. Now here's the thing. Funny story. All right, let me make a little tidbit real quick. I'm a movie freak, movie buff. I know more, way more than I'm supposed to know. I know. I, got, I understand. <laughs> it's okay. So the way they got Pet Cemetery, Steve, exactly like this. I love the Ramones. <laughs> we're not doing this song without Pet. Cemetery. Wait, what? He said. Uh, he said we're not doing this movie without Pet Cemetery song. Oh. I love that because is it is that is that the one in the beginning that says hey ho let's go in the beginning of the book right? No. Which yeah. one says that the stand? Yeah. Is it the stand? Yeah. I was yeah. gonna say oh shit. I was like one of them is the Ramones in the beginning of it. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And it just says hey ho let's go. And I'm like that's imagine writing something and being a huge fan of somebody uh, and then having them make a song <laughs> for your movie. That would be the coolest thing. Like if I made a uh, if I made a movie and all of a sudden like I don't know Eminem was like. No, I'd love to do a song on your shit. I'd be like, what? Well, this is well, like a dream come true, but... I mean, people like Stephen King have... Stephen King's a, in a thing of his own. <laughs> you know, like oh, yeah. Stephen King calls anybody, you're like, I'm there. Oh, yeah. Well, see, the funny thing is, is like a lot of people... Like you said Scream earlier. Mm-hmm. So Scream one soundtrack was good. Yeah. What else is on it? Honestly, now that, wait, I'm now I'm like... I, we got Red Right Hand. It's got... uh. War? No, school's out for summer. Yeah. That's a bop. Yep. Scream's However, so good. I love it. When I think of the Scream franchise, mm-hmm. the song I remember the most is from Scream 3. And it is? What If. Like really? Three. Yes. Oh, shit. Okay. That, that song, even though in the movie it plays for like 30 seconds, that song is so to the point of what if you, it fits the whole franchise. Okay. Yeah. What if you knew who was doing it? But you didn't know. I'm trying to think of other ones that I really liked. How did you get into loving horror so much, by the way? I'm so, going to grab a charger, but continue. I want to know that. Oh, yeah, no, you're good. Oh, and I'm going to grab that, too. <laughs> Holy shit. Josh is just uh, the nicest person. But, no, how did you get into loving horror as much as you do? What was the first horror thing you watched? Because I know, like I told you, the Rings earlier, that got me into going, what is this? When I first, and I should not have been watching this, I don't recommend it. My sister, I was homesick from school one day. I was probably 12, maybe, maybe 12. I'm being nice saying that. And she <laughs> threw Pulp Fiction on the couch and she said, Watch this. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, Okay, this is crazy. And Pulp Fiction was the first thing that made me go, But how did you put this together? How does a movie get made? How does it get put together into this? And that's what intrigued me. What's the horror one for you that made you go, This is my shit? Believe it or not, a lot of people, you know, they're always going to choose the classics and everything like that. But the, Fuck the classics, Josh. The very first horror movie. Can I use this one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, sorry. The very first horror movie, like, 
that has gotten me to horror movies is Sleepaway Camp. Okay. No, yeah, that's a big one for you, so I, I get it. Yeah. And when I met Felicia Rose last year, and that's the girl who plays the main killer. When I met her last year, she uh such a down to earth person. That's awesome. I love that. You know, and I was wearing my NC seventeen shirt. And she goes, What's this? I was like, oh, you know, she goes, Let me guess, it's your podcast. I was like, guilty as charged. Oh she goes, Next time I'm here, and she's coming back. She said, Next time I'm here, I'll come on your show. Is she gonna be in July? Uh I don't know if it's gonna be or like Motor City something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next but, time she's been oh, that's awesome. I know. that's that's it's especially for you. Oh yeah. That would be like the verb shit for me. Like I, oh, I was yeah. saying that to my mom. I was like, I don't know what I would do like if I met Bruce Dern. I <laughs> like you know True. like Bruce Dern or like anybody. I'd be like, oh shit, man, the Clopex. <laughs> no way. But um, so Sleepaway Camp was your big one. Yeah. That was your that was your big big one. Okay. And, and let's talk about that reveal at the end. You saw Sleepaway Camp, obviously. Well, let me ask you this. I feel like you're a fan of like female murderers. I feel like you like when ladies are like, I'm going to fuck you, this person up. <laughs> well, well, see. I feel like not that, like, maybe, like, not consciously, but I feel like you you lean towards that maybe because of sleepaway camp. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I know that I, I didn't realize until I got older. I was like, maybe having a dead dad and an uncle step in is why I'm like, no, Piccolo's my dude. <laughs> Ever since <laughs> I was this big. And then I'm like, wait, I'm kind of like that in everything. Where I'm like, that the pseudo dad character seems to be the one where I'm like, no, I know he was only in it for five minutes, but. He's my favorite. And I'm like, oh, yeah, there's probably a psychological thing going on there. But I'm like, oh, did, I wonder if Sleepaway Camp. Because I, you brought up a couple things where I'm like, wait, a lady's doing that. And I was yeah. like, wait, a lady's doing that, too. And then I'm like, and yeah. like oh, okay. Like uh, American Horror Story. What's your favorite season? Roanoke. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everyone's like, everyone who knows me in my personal life is asking me, 1984, right? I'm like, no, why would it be 1984? Just because I was an 80s baby. I mean, you know. <laughs> So when I say Roanoke, they're like, why? I was like, because it was a story within a story, and you had some of the best acting in oh, all the series. I'll have to rewatch it. I, I stopped after I don't I can't remember where I stopped, but I liked I liked the 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 witch one. Coven. Yeah, I liked Coven a lot. And that but I mean Kathy Bates is there, Angela Bassett was there. I'm like and and I thought that was a really cool concept of like we do have this Salem and this European witch way, and then we have this Louisiana Creole voodoo way and then i'm like oh that's a cool thing to 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 oh, bring yeah. together and then and then to have them then combine under like no fuck that guy like that's and okay. have them both have real shit in them uh, i really liked that a lot speaking of coven so the guy they're after in coven mm -hmm. is also the guy who played the main vampire in 30 days of night is it really yes banker from succession yes Guy in the crow, the crow, man. I can't. I can't. With it. I really can't. I'm telling you, I could not believe that when that happened because we literally said that. That was the first thing you said. No. The first thing you said was like, why does he look like he's on Skid Row? And I was like, they better not put him in jail. The one with Lady Gaga was good. Wait, which one? There was two seasons with Lady Gaga. There was Hotel. Oh, and then there was Roanoke. that's where I fell off. It was after, what, or did I watch? Did Roanoke come after Hotel? Yeah. I think that might, I mean, I think I might have watched halfway through Roanoke. Now, I'll the, watch it. Hotel was good because they took stories from like I liked the hotel a little actual bit. things, except for the whole vampire stuff. Okay, you know, but like you had an episode where you had all the real life serial killers in oh, one room. Okay, you know that was good. And my thing is, is you could take a show like that, and every single season, which they have done, has been a completely different story. Is this gonna cut me off? No. Oh, okay, keep going. No, no. Oh, I, you could go live for. No, I just didn't know. Months. I didn't. Oh, I didn't know yeah. it was gonna cut us off. But I was like, ah, uh, but no. Uh, ro wait. Real stuff. Serial killers. That's what we were saying. Hotel. That's why we like it. Sorry, I didn't oh, mean no, you're, to you're cut good. you off like that. That was rude. No, that was rude. But no, I I agree with you. I remember liking Hotel, but I'm like, why don't I remember Roanoke as well? Well, Roanoke was the first season that had Kevin yeah. Junior in it, and they were actors. Where are we at now? Oh, uh, what's going on? What happened to American Horror Story? Um, Kim Kardashian's there. Something's yeah, happening. what happened with American Horror Story is just like what they do with a lot of different horror what, movies yeah. is they went political. Uh, we don't want that shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm we like, no, okay, here's my thing. Like, <laughs> I do, but I don't. Like, I'm the first person to go, like, themes and things are, are cool. But I'm like, we are so politicized in our real world right now. I'm not saying that you can't do that. I'm just saying... 
like, like I heard the civil war is good and I, and I, I heard it's all right. And I, and I should go, I honestly, I should probably prioritize that because I cover movies and it's new and it's popular. But I'm like, do I really want to go see some politicized shit right now? Like, do I, I don't know if I feel like that. Like, I really don't where I'm like, and everything has politics and a game of Thrones has politics. I, I get that. What I'm saying is like, I don't know if I want to cramp to my throat right now, but it did do that weird cult shit, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. See, cults was a good one. Here's the issue with Hollywood today. As much as we love no Hollywood, Sinbad, no tag, no taglines. <laughs> as much as we love Hollywood, we also hate Hollywood. Oh yeah, because see, they'll give us six months of good stuff, mm-hmm. one month of great stuff, yeah, and then five months of shit. You know, and the thing is, is that's true. Because that's I don't think you'll realize that like we're the first ones to be like, no, we're fucking pissed. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. we want good shit and we want this and we want that. And it's like we're the first ones mad about it. like you think you think you're mad? I was like, we're over here analyzing the same two minute scene over and over. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, come on. Prime prime example. And we've talked about this before. The Crow remake. We saw just a trailer, and obviously I'm gonna go see the movie for the simple fact I'm a movie freak. But I'm not gonna go see it for the reasons others are going to go see it. Yeah. Here's my thing. And we haven't talked about this yet. So this will be, this will be good. Me and Josh talked extensively on his channel about the crow and you guys can check it out. And literally everything I thought maybe we're old people. I really did. I thought I try not to be that way. I really am like, am I being an old head? Are we old now, Josh? I was like, are we going like, you can't touch our character. And I was like, no, we're not. We're not because we literally said that. The we, horror story, I believe, is season 12. The gay death was excellent. What is happening on the American horror story? We're killing gays? Was yeah. Oh, I feel like those words together might get me in trouble. But you guys heard it was, it'll be taken out of context if that's the thing. But YouTube doesn't know that. And I'm like, Jesus, Sam. But um, what was I just saying? Uh, I'm, I'm worried. I'm we're, like, ah, shit. We're, we're old and. Oh, yeah. I was like, are we old? I said, am I being an asshole? Am I being an asshole? And then I was like, no, no, we're not. I'm not being an asshole because we said this and I was, we were talking about it earlier. You can change time periods. You can interview the vampires proof of this, the series, you can change time periods. You can change race. You can change tattoos. You can cut off Eric Draven's hair. You can make him look more like the comic. I don't care, but those themes have to be there. If uh, we all went to go, I'm not talking about some crazy iteration, but if we all went, we're going to go see Superman. We expect him to be true blue and have certain ways he is. And if we go in and all of a sudden he's just murking people and it's like, fuck the system. We'd be like, this is not Superman. Oh, yeah. And that was our issue. We were like, the crow can get crazy. We can change the look. We can do whatever we like. Bill Skarsgård. What we cannot do is fundamentally change who Eric Draven is. Exactly. And Eric Draven is not a badass, no. not a killer, not a vigilante, not a criminal. He's a normal rocker dude who you could approach on your at the corner store. Oh yeah. That just loved his girlfriend. That's it. And now we're making him some stylized John Wick goon. And I'm like, and the shotgun. We are acting like he is. Lucille with his with with Negan and oh, I yeah. didn't. I'm glad you saw that too because I was like, why are we so into the shotgun? I didn't mean to be offensive. Oh no no no, uh, that's not what I thought at all. That's I didn't think you were being offensive at all. No, we just gotta watch what we. No say no, what I'm saying know. is if I say words together, YouTube doesn't register what we're saying all together. It just knows that I said that, and then it goes, oh, you yeah. are <laughs> like oh like I was just talking about the movie Monster one time, and I had like the words white and trash. In like a paragraph together, I wasn't even calling her that or anything, and it's like it would kind of apply a little bit there. But <laughs> and that's a crazy thing that she, her calling out that they would do that to her and then make a movie—that's wild. Oh, yeah. But uh, no, um, and they they flagged my whole profile. That was the first time my Facebook got shut down, so it just doesn't know. I didn't think you were being offensive. Believe me, I say stuff all the time where I'm like, that could have sounded really weird. <laughs> like that could that could have been off. But um. Well, I had some friends on an episode a couple of, about a month ago, and they were saying some stuff, and they were never on YouTube or nothing like that. Yeah, and I was like, "Yeah, you guys are gonna get me uh, canceled." Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I I'm like, I was trying to. Tell them, it's not like we're doing anything bad. They were just like rolling a J, and yeah. and it wasn't the end of the world. And YouTube's pretty cool about that as long as you're not promoting stuff. And as we weren't like they weren't smoking on camera or anything, yeah. but they just didn't think. They just like pulled up their tray and so. And I was just like. Later on watching, I'm like, God damn it, Clay. I was like, you couldn't have said something to me. I was like, Jesus. I was like, God, man. So it's just like, you never know how they're going to get. That's why. That's perfect, actually. This comment is perfect. Because we blew a head off on YouTube at point blank range. And I was like, that's when I knew. Shock and awe. They're oh. not going for substance. And that's what started to bother me. That's when I got mad. That's when I, was, that's oh. when I got double mad. It was jail 
and I don't remember, I don't remember making a half hour video. That video is like 25 minutes long. I don't remember <laughs> saying 90% of that shit because I just went, oh, look, we're here. And then it was everything me and Josh just said they can't do to the character. And I was like, he's in jail. Pissed. We're done here. And then I remember the shotgun thing and being like, Jesus Christ, you just show that on YouTube like that and I can't say OnlyFans in my, I can't write the word. I have to use a zero yeah. and, and I can't put the link anywhere. I can't sit here and go, hey, go there, go there, go there. I'll go get in trouble for that. And you guys just blew a goddamn head off on YouTube at point blank range twice. And I'm like, this is insane. And suffocated somebody to death. But I was like, no, that's when I knew it. That's when I was really mad. Because I was like, this is not going for, because it is. I don't care what anybody says. There's a legacy here. There's something that's attached to you outside of James Obar's work, outside of the comic. This is attached to somebody's legacy. And more than just Brandon Lee died making this. And he fought for it. And he fought for this character. And it is the bigger iteration we know. And there's a way to handle it. And then when I saw the head get blown off, and then the other thing, and I was just like, you want us to walk away from, you want me and you, us that cover this shit, to walk away going, did you see that head get blown off? Did you see that head get blown off? And then you want the internet to go, oh my God, I don't want my kids to see this because a head got blown off on uh, YouTube. That's what they wanted. So I was like, that tells me you want us going, look over here, look over here, don't look over here. And that's when I was like, fuck you. Oh, yeah. Fuck you, Crow. I'm not old. I'm not old yet. <laughs> I'm not being a dick yet. This is bullshit. I was like, this is not fair. And you're using Bill Skarsgård as a human shield. Yeah. They're hoping we'll go, we like Bill Skarsgård, and we do. But I'm like, no, fuck you guys. This is not, why would you, that, this is dumb. So here's the thing. So with the Crow remake, I'm going to say this, and I mean this with the utmost disrespect. <laughs> we cannot be expected to sit through trash fire. And it doesn't look good. No. Visually. Like, here's my thing. You blow the dude's head off on the on YouTube. And why are we all choreographed? But keep going. Yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. But when you go to the movies and they play the trailer in the movies, you don't see it. Stop. Yeah, right. That's what I was saying. Some Because they were like, well, and I go, no. Because I, I always, those are my favorite comments ever, is when I get things that are like, well, if you don't want to see it, then don't be a little baby and go buy a ticket for it. I'm like, that's not what I'm saying here. I'm like, there's a way that things work. <laughs> you know, there's a way, there's a fundamental way that things work. And it's during trade. That's why this, this has been approved for all audiences, but the movie might not have been. It's because of people. You don't know who's all watching it. You don't know who came into that theater. You don't know if it's at a drive-in and a kid's going to turn around and look at the other screen and see it. Like, that's why things are cut that way. And that's when I was like, holy shit, holy shit. And then I was like, and not in a good way. I was like, it can be brutal. Oh yeah. The original's brutal too. Yeah. That was, this is not that though. This is going uh, quick. Look over here so nobody gets, nobody realizes this is trash. Because the second I saw how it CGI'd it was, oh, yeah. and everybody complains about that. But I'm like, why wasn't all the money thrown at this? I'm like, you were doing the crow. And that's what I mean. It is a, it, I will say this. All of us alternative gothics, old people are crawling out of our tombs to go, fuck you, our shit is the best. Because you're taking the crow, interview with the vampire, <laughs> shut up, this is all our shit, come on, man. Like, the, And I love it, I'm here for it, I'm glad. I love new generations getting getting introduced to stuff and seeing it or whatever. But I'm like, what we're not going to do is take Eric Draven and make him oh, yeah. John Wick. He's not John Wick. And then I think they're doing more supernatural shit and nobody cares. I think the crow is a classic that shouldn't be messed with. Your opinion is correct. No, 100%. And that's, I just am like, not only is it a classic, there's a lot on it. Yeah. Like, I'm just saying, would you guys go, I'm going to go remake Jaws and hope for the best. Like, you better have something really big up your sleeve for that. Or like, oh yeah. Well, I don't, I don't get it. Let's look at the remakes they've made. Oh God. Okay. Nightmare on Elm Street remake. I kind of liked it. Here's the thing. I like that they involved the drugs because that is how it would go. I'd be the first one going like, who can we call for drugs to stay up? I liked that <laughs> aspect. Well, when you when you do the contrast of the original to the remake, okay, yeah, Robert England hand chose the guy to play Freddy Krueger in the remake. Oh wait, oh oh okay, I was I was gonna say wait, that is Freddy Krueger. Yeah, now, okay. Here's the thing. They he chose him off the fact that how he did in Watchmen. Who's he in Watchmen? He was Warshak. Shut the fuck up! That is so good. And do you know what? That's what I mean. That's a perfect example. I don't know if youngins know this. People hated Watchmen. Oh, yeah. I fucking loved it. I was, <laughs> we were 16, seven, or like 15, 16. We hadn't read it fully yet. We didn't understand things yet. We were kids smoking pot in a garage. And to us, 
holy shit like i'm telling that was our sh- man that was the shit that was our shit and then i'm like and then we read the comic and now we're all here but and, and now we're all like we're depressed and sad and the did you watch the series god damn yeah i loved it so much i, really I got it did. somewhere around here it's so good it's oh, yeah. so goddamn good i i love i love regina king in that it's so good maybe i just like trench coats <laughs> well they do add an extra layer of character oh yeah you know. But that would happen. Oh, yeah. People would take Rorschach's shit and, and turn it into that. That oh, would yeah. happen. It, it, that would happen. But I, I didn't realize that was him in oh, yeah. the new one. Yeah. I remember I didn't mind that one. I remember I liked it. And I'm like, okay, we're elaborating more on the... Because I don't know if we're all realizing this, but a bunch of parents like lynched a child molester, which is... I mean, I don't mind. But we never established like how that went down. And it's oh, kind of... Yeah. I mean, if we all got our pitchforks and stomped to the school and dragged somebody out of the boiler room... Yeah. I feel like we'd all hear about that. I think that's interesting about that, like that that wrinkle they could go into of like, where are these parents at? Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like, wh- how did we establish to, to get the mob together? Like, I'm like, how did we all go keep your goddamn mouth shut? But remember, we didn't have phones oh, yeah. and cameras, <laughs> and it was a good time. Johnny Depp's first movie. Always acknowledge that. Oh yeah. We th- my we throw a birthday party for him every year. Oh yeah. My friend did it for the last 25 years. No <laughs> joke. There's cutouts. There's cakes. You only drink wine. Uh-huh. It's June eight, June ninth. No, he's June ninth. <laughs> Keep going, goddamn. There, there's a video somewhere out there that will never see the light of day of me doing the Jack Sparrow run. Oh, there's believe me, there are plenty <laughs> things of me that should not see the light of day and probably are. I think there's. Oh god, it's not good. Oh, uh, there's. Uh, uh, so here's the thing. Freddy Krueger is based off of a couple different people from. Wes Craven's... No, I will talk about that in a minute because I just posted about 300. But keep going. Uh, from, uh, like, people that Wes Craven saw in real life. Okay. Like, there was a guy who lived on the street that were... I think his daughter had a big input, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because she had a dream. Yeah! Yeah! You know, so. Yeah, and oh, or she said, like, Dad, why does every girl have to fall down or something? And then, he was, yes. and then like, she gave that input or something. I'm like, there we go, girl dad. Good job. Oh, yeah. Wes Craven, girl dad. But yeah, he, uh, like the, there was a guy that lived on a street that literally wore the same hat and sweater. Imagine being that guy. Oh yeah. Imagine being that guy and then going to, going to the movies and being like, I live, I think I live by him. <laughs> you like, <laughs> like, if, imagine if you went to the movies, you're like, oh, I think yeah. I know this person and I think it's me. <laughs> and, I, and I think my neighbor thinks I'm nuts. Like, no, that's cool. Here we go. Here's a full circle moment in screen when Henry Winkler. That's my favorite. Oh, yeah. When he comes out of the office and he goes, what the hell? And then Freddy. He, yeah, he calls him. He calls him Freddy. Yeah. Now, here's the thing, though. That was Wes Craven. Oh, is it? Because yeah. he's in the sweater. He's in yeah. the Freddy sweater. And I always love that. Henry Winkler's great. Oh, yeah. Henry Winkler's so good. I met him at a, at a Autorama a he's, couple years ago. He's great. He oh, really yeah. is. Did you watch Barry or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Or like Arrested Development? He's oh, yeah. so goddamn funny. He's so good. Yeah. No. We loved Watchmen, too. Every reviewer... Everything ever was like, this is so bad. This is so stupid and dumb and awful. And everybody should hate it. And we were like, no, we fucking love it. Oh, and yeah. but like I said, we were I was I didn't read the comic yet or nothing. We were just like, we are rebellious teens, and this is like meh. And I feel like I when I'm not in a happy mood, I give off comedian vibes and it's a problem. But that <laughs> that's another one. Jeffrey D. Morgan is great as the comedian. Actually, he is great as a comedian. Because of that role in Watchmen and the role he did in Supernatural, that's how he got cast up for Neat. Really? Yeah. I can see that because he's great as the comedian. He's oh, a, yeah. And I think Bill, I, I always, this one, I'll say this though, that I pronounce it wrong. Is it, it's crewed up, not crud up. Billy crud up. Or cr- it's crewed up though. Crude up. He's in Big Fish. He's in uh, Almost Famous. But Dr. Manhattan is a whole other thing. Like, that's a hard role to take on. Uh, can I tell you guys something? If you haven't seen the Watchmen series, spoilers. When did you realize that he was Dr. Manhattan? Because I'll tell you when I did. And my friend was like, fuck you, Abby. That is it, isn't it? And I was like, I know it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. I want to say probably the second scene he was in. I, I was going to say, it's the scene when he's sitting with the kids at the table. And they said, is there a God or a heaven? And he's like, well, fuck no. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> nobody reacts to children's like that when they say, is there like death or anything, even if you don't believe, not to a six-year-old, oh, yeah. you know? And he was just like, no, there ain't <laughs> shit. And I was like, okay, Dr. Manhattan. And oh, I yeah. loved him and I loved it. It was great. But I, you want to know what I really loved? Huh. Was uh, Lori. Oh yeah. I'm and, and best music in a TV series I've heard in a long time. But and and I I listen to that all the time. But um no, that was great. There when it you know, no, but people didn't like that. But 300 300 is great. 
And just so everybody knows, that was when everybody says I was born in the wrong time period. <laughs> That's what I was talking about earlier. I was like, no, I was. I'm not talking about the 70s and the 60s. I was born to be the one Theramir sent back. And that's genius to do because it's like, oh, it's this crazy, wild thing. But it's like, no, it's someone telling the story back, hyping up the army the whole time. And I'm like, that would be my job. It would be like, go back and tell them the story. And I'd be like, listen, shit was crazy. (laughs) Let me tell you all about what Leonidas was doing. (laughs) But 300 is way better than I think people give that credit for. And I just watched it with my mom just watched it for the first time. And I'm like, it is so it's genuinely good. And I feel like everybody would know. Remember they came out and everybody, that's how I met my friend Poncho. To this day, me and Poncho are tight. He was sitting in front of me in math class and I, or, or what, or him or his friend did. And I remember it said, tonight we dine in hell. And I just tapped him on the shoulder. I was like, your shirt's really cool. And, you, <laughs> and they had the shield. It was sick. But that was like the, 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 the workout and everything was the big part. And it was like, oh yeah, it's just stylized shit. And, and Leonidas has a Scottish accent. And he was like, yeah, he kind of does. But do you want to know what? It's good. And oh, yeah. like I said, sh- 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 being in a store you're telling back is genius and, and really cool. But oh, yeah. well, you know what made that? Well, at least in my opinion, you know what made that movie really good? The cinematography. Oh, it's can, let's talk about that, because after that, there's a movie that came out and the, the crop top critic, Alex, is the only one I saw. And I was like, thank you for bringing up this movie. because It's the best. I don't know if anybody's ever seen this and I'm pissed off. They didn't finish with finish it. Zack Snyder directed an animated movie called The Guardians, The Owls of Gahul. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. 300 with animated owls. It's it's the same yeah. shit. They got weapons on their feet. They are bashing each other. They're killing each other. It's crazy, and it is so oh, yeah. good. I love The Owls of Gahul, and I'm like, why doesn't anybody know about this shit? I was like, why does Zack Snyder do this? But it's just like 300. And I'm like, and other people have tried to imitate that, and they oh. cannot do it the same way. Michael Bay might be a weirdo, but you can't say that he does not do action well. He True. does action very well. Zack Snyder is the master of that. That, that slowdown shit got lame with other people, and everyone right. tried to do it. And it was like, no, 300 was like a <laughs> thing. It was like, God damn, man, and immortals. We put their name to the test. That is a, come on. It was so, it's so good. It, it really is. And we got Cersei. Oh, yeah. We got her. We got her in there. We got my mom didn't realize it was her. I was like, "Yeah, that's that's her." And it's it it's. Here we go. You're gonna love this. If you have you seen a Terminator TV show? Oh yeah, is she Sarah Connor? Yeah. And then Daenerys was her in what? Uh. Another TV Genesis, show. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I heard that. I heard that one of those was good and it wasn't given the. Genesis. Is that it? Okay, yeah. because people were like, it didn't get the acknowledgement it, it should have, and it was decent. I love. Okay, no, Watchmen was good though, and I rewatched that recently. Well, see, but that had that weird vibe to it too. But not the slow. It had the slowdown shit, but not the same way. But it had that. He just. It's a, it's the shadows. Oh yeah. It's the way he uses shadows, and it's it's interesting to look at. And I feel like people over other people try to copy three hundred, so people's brains got like sick of that look. Oh, but yeah. really, it's like no Zack Snyder like perfected that. But no, the Guardians, the Owls of Gahul. Of Gahul. If you want to watch three hundred with animated owls. For children with talons on their feet and helmets on their heads, check it out because <laughs> it sounds insane, but it's great. But I'm like, oh my god, it's so good. Speaking of Zack Snyder, oh yeah, he did a movie on Netflix called Army of the Dead. Mm-hmm. Great movie, two and a half hours of nothing but balls to wall action, mm-hmm. stuff like that. However, some of the actors that were chosen for that movie is that the one that put Tig Taro in it? That put Tig that CGI'd somebody in. To somebody was creeping. Crystal Lee was creeping, right? That's why he's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one, yeah. That's when he got caught for yeah. Yeah. Do you want to, but I will appreciate the fact that you stuck somebody in on, on that thing. Like the fact that he because he stepped in and said that. He was like, fine, CGI some CGI her in because I'm not dealing with it. And I'm like, oh, so you're a decent human being. But yeah. yeah. But yeah, so that movie, some of the acting, or some of the actors should have been casted as the roles they were. Mm. They should have been other characters. Ooh. That's a take. But I will say this. If you got two and a half hours of free time and you got Netflix, Army of the Dead. Definitely yeah, watch I it. liked it. Yeah. No, what? Now, I'm. I, you're going to be mad at me. I mixed these up. Which one? There's Dawn of the Dead. Mm-hmm. Which one is the mall? That's Dawn of the Dead. Right? And and the dad from Modern Family's there. Yep. Is that one Zack Snyder, right? Yep. And then there's Day of the Dead. Yep. Now, is that the one where they walk out of the water? Dawn there you the go. Dead. Yeah. 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 Uh, Land of the Dead is where they walk out of the water. Land of the Dead is where they walk out of the water. Which one has cage fights in it? Land, Land, Land of the, of the dead. dead. Okay. Yeah. But Dawn of the Dead is is good. Yeah. Which 
Here's a little tidbit. We will be meeting Mikai Pfeiffer at the end of July at Motor City Nightmares. And it's going to be awesome. Yes. Along with other yeah. celebrities. Josh is going to be meeting tons of people, I feel like. He's got this <laughs> down. But I'm like, I, I will be there. It will be so, yeah. No, Mikai Pfeiffer's in a lot. Yeah. And an Eminem song. Yeah. You know what, though? Imagine having Eminem put your name in a song. Oh, yeah. That'd be awesome. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people, speaking of Eminem and Mikai Pfeiffer, Speaking of Eminem and Mackay, <laughs> I don't see a lot of reviews on Eight Mile. Eight Mile. Let me just say this: it's one of the only movies that gets the feeling of the cold done correctly. Yes. Do you know what I mean? You watch Eight Mile, and you're like, I know that feeling. I know how cold they are right now. I know <laughs> the temperature in this, and that it because they filmed it in Detroit, but then they did the rest in Canada. Yeah. And you can tell because I'm like, no, nope, I can smell this movie. I can smell <laughs> that dirty ice. Oh, yeah. I can smell the car's exhaust, and it gets that vibe down perfectly. I like, four, I think we all love Four Brothers. Oh, yeah. And I think one of my favorite memes I've ever seen is like, this is the type of weather Victor Sweet gets his ass beat on the river for. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, this is facts. And I and I love Four Brothers, and the, it, it it is that Detroit thing. The Crow, I feel like with that stylized gothic vibe, even though it's models, the Batman was depicted after it, and I knew that the second we got to the Iceberg Lounge. I was like, I've been here. No. And this is a real thing that somebody, I, I'm pretty sure people have been getting the shit kicked out of them behind me. And I have no idea. And they got Kevin Saunderson, original techno godfather from Detroit to do that music. And I was like, no. And they said that specifically. He was like, I want this to be a Detroit feel every time we go to the Iceberg Lounge. But 8 Mile nailed it. I was like, oh, they, yeah. and I mean, it's, I mean, it's called 8 Mile, but they, that the feeling of it, the look of the city, all of it, like they, they, they nailed it. And I don't know a lot of things. We don't have a lot. Yeah. We don't. And I, that's why I get so mad about the RoboCop statue. I will continue to fight for the RoboCop statue <laughs> until it shows up. And also, I realized this, because do you remember when the controversy with that happened? Because that's what they said. They went, it's too intimidating yeah. to put in front of the police station. And I said, no, motherfucker. It's because it reminds you of corruption. Oh, yeah. I realized that. Because I was like, oh, maybe they're right. Maybe I feel like maybe it'll look like a joke. Maybe it's like may, they feel like, you know, I can kind of get that. But I'm like, no. It's because you guys don't want to be reminded that what RoboCop's about. That's what it is. But that's shot in Houston. Yeah. So I'm. What I'm saying is like we don't have much. <laughs> we have when it, not what we do, but not when it comes to media. Yeah. But we have like RoboCop, Eight Mile, The Crow, Four Brothers. <laughs> we don't have like fan like, you know, we don't. And but but when you get that, you know that feeling. Like I cannot take uh like Batman vs Superman's shot here. It's yeah. shot here. Then Jay Towers shows up and it throws me way off. That threw me way, that brought me back to reality. That's my fault because I live here. <laughs> but like even shooting it in Detroit, it doesn't look like, I know it is because I know that building, but there's a vibe. There's a feeling uh, to it. And and 8 Mile nails it. But you're absolutely right. I don't know why more people don't cover 8 Mile. Now, here's the funny thing. So again. And it was the 20 year anniversary last year. Yep. Or two years ago. Oh, yeah. Here's the funny thing though. When they were filming Batman vs Superman, I know we were just talking about Eight Mile, but I guess. Oh no, this. we're all in Detroit. It's okay. Yeah. When they were filming Batman vs Superman, I was working downtown Detroit when they were filming that. So all the actors, yes. all the directors, producers, and everybody all parked in my garage. They shut my garage down for an entire month. Oh, oh, I believe that. So, yeah, they, they they shot in it. You had? Well, no, they, or they, they were they parking there to go there. shoot. Yeah. So I met Ben Affleck. Oh my god! I mean, is anybody a dick? No. Was Henry Cavill nice? He was nice. How tall is he? Tall. Okay. Here, well, here's my thing. Robert Baratheon is my favorite character in Game of Thrones. And I we all want Robert's Rebellion. They're not going to give it to us yet. But every like big fan wants, that's our casting we want, is Henry Cavill. He's got the coloring of him. He's big. But Robert Baratheon is 6'7". With his, ha- with his helmet, he's over 7 feet tall. He's a beast. And I'm like... I love Henry Cavill. That's all. I know that's a big guy. Like he's oh, yeah. still big, but I'm like, is there anybody that? Because actors are normally shorter, but yeah. I think Henry Cavill's six three or six two, maybe closer to six four. But yeah. he's like a big guy, and I'm like, no, it's great. I love that casting. But in my dreams, because this is my favorite character ever, oh, yeah. is there anybody that tall that's like six six, uh, six seven, like that that can actually act? No, I don't think there is. No, because somebody was like the mountain. I was like, no. I was like, that guy just needed to hack people's heads off. Like, come on. But uh, uh, the funny thing is, you're talking about height on actors and stuff. Me and my wife are going to California, so we're in hot. We're literally in LAX, and we're getting ready to board the plane to come back home. Mm. 
Tom Cruise was walking down. And I'm like, there, there's Tom Cruise. That dude's only six foot one. They no, put, I think he's like five five. I thought. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, five, no, he's like, no, it's like yeah, five. Yeah, he's sorry. like a tiny. So is Leonardo DiCaprio, and I heard that Tom Hardy's super tiny too. Yeah. Which good for you guys, but it, it's normally what happens is you want to cast people that are all around the same height. Oh, That's yeah. why I knew in Kazam, I was like, not only did I know there ain't no way in hell the NBA said you can let Shaq do any type of physical anything to get hurt. There's no way. Yeah. So I was like, you're not showing his face. You're doing it. But then I'm like, I think he's just legit too big to be in shots. I was like, I think this is a dummy with clothes on from behind. <laughs> Cause I'm like, he's too big. So I'm like, that might be a logistical yeah. thing too, but well, yeah, no, no uh, answers are small. So you want to keep everybody on the same height. You well, can't, I can't look 10 feet taller than somebody. If we're, you know, like, like one of my best friends is four eleven. I'm five, eight. Like, oh, yeah you wouldn't put us in a scene together if you were like they're they look alike because you'd be oh, like yeah. you're a foot taller <laughs> well it's funny because yeah i meant to say that he's like five one five yeah two, he's a like tiny that. guy yeah uh so i feel like i could beat up tom cruise no I'm, i don't i'm just <laughs> saying like i'm i don't mean i want to but i'm like i feel like i could if i had to oh yeah they put stilts in his shoes stop it and then they film from like the camera down Right, yeah. Once you start learning those, like Stranger Things did it really great, but it's because those kids were getting older. If you guys want a good example and you don't know, look for like camera tricks. Look at Stranger Things like seasons two and three, and you'll see the way they keep the kids all looking the same height. Oh yeah. Without yeah. Well, if we're gonna go, do you want to talk about Stranger Things for a minute? Oh, we can if you would like to. But I wanted to ask you, um, when it comes to oh, I guess this this ties in a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Do you, who are your favorite? Do you have like favorite actors? I guess it depends on the, like Ed. I'm I'm not kidding when I say this. Ed Harris, to me, is the most attractive man on the planet. Ed Harris yes. is a good actor. I love Ed Harris. He can do no wrong in my eyes. If you don't know who Ed Harris is, the man in Black and Westworld, uh, the assistant coach in Remember the Titans, the guy in The Abyss who tried to beat up James Cameron after behind the scenes. Uh, I just love Ed Harris. But yeah. like when it comes to if somebody's in it, I'm going to support it. It's probably like Tom Hardy because I'm a goober for Tom Hardy. Um, but that's what's, just like my lady talking. What's your favorite Tom Hardy movie? <laughs> Bronson? No, would it be Bronson? I don't know if it would be Bronson officially. My uncle loved. My uncle who raised me loved. Uh, what's the one with the twins? Legend. Legend. I have the poster. Yeah, and do you want to watch this again? Like no recognition. Warrior. Oh yeah. Warrior was good. That was yeah. Good. And then and who and Joel Edgerton. The that. Do you really think he thought back before like I'm gonna be back to play Uncle Owen in Star Wars? Hell no. Nah. He was like, I got fifty bucks for this shit <laughs> and called it a day. And then. I was like, good for you, Uncle Owen. You good for Joel Edgerton. You got your spin off with Obi Wan. Now, now you're acting with Ewan McGregor. Good for you. I was oh, so yeah. happy for him. But I, <laughs> then I was thinking, okay, when it comes to horror, like, yeah, that's where Johnny Depp didn't wasn't even trying out. He yeah. just just showed up, and somebody saw him. Was his friend was trying out for Nightmare on Elm Street, and then they were like, you get over here, and now you're Johnny Depp. And it's like a lot of I feel like when it comes to horror, Keeper Sutherland, I think he's the best creep of all time. Oh, yeah. Nobody plays. That's what I wanted to ask you. This is a movie that not many people have seen. Other people say it's horrible. I don't think it's horrible. Other people said it's like insensitive. I'm like, no, I think honestly it handled it very well with the situations. Um, Freeway. Have you ever seen the movie Freeway? I will. I've seen it. I, Freeway's in my Hall of Fame. Stop it. I have never met anybody who's ever seen. My uncle rented that for us. I was like nine. And then I'm like. And he was like, why can't they watch it? Blow that guy's fucking head off. He shouldn't be touching you like that. I'm like, fair, exactly. fair point, fair point. I think what happened with that, all people say that's horrible. I'm like, the freeway's not bad. It's the red, it's, it's, it's Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah. Except she runs into a pervert and then she ends up not being the one to fuck with. But then he ends up being a renowned rich person and she's like a poor white trash person, but it's Reese Witherspoon yep. and she's real young. And that's one of my favorite fight scenes in it. And, uh. I'm like, was that a burb situation? Because that's what happened with the burbs was big came out. Yeah. It was Tom Hanks, everything. Because everything about the burbs says it should be huge. Carrie Fisher, Tom Hanks at 80s, Corey Feldman. Like yeah. outside, like I know people have seen it, but it should have been huge. But oh, they yeah. said they were actively like, we cannot allow Tom Hanks's vibe to mesh with murder next door <laughs> and this now. Now, oh, yeah. now that he's a superstar because of big. And I'm like, do you think that's kind of, I wonder if that's what happened with Reese Witherspoon in that. Cause she's like, not, a, she, that's the whole point is she's got a great heart and is a good person, mm -hmm. but she just comes from a really rough background. Oh, yeah. And 
when she, she called me, I'll, I'll, I'll rip off that shit bag motherfucker. And she's down to in court. They're like, did you do that? Did you? And she's like, yeah, I shot that motherfucker in the face and <laughs> court. It's so good. I love it. But, uh, that fight scene with the, the girl in jail, Oh yeah. and she's hitting her with the phone. And literally it's like I said, it's the red riding hood. It's girl gets into some trouble. They're going to put her into some shitty situation in foster care. So she's running to her grandma's house mm-hmm. and then she runs into the big bad wolf and it's Kiefer Sutherland. So Kiefer, I don't, I don't know if I could be like, I would, I think I might have to tell him to his face if I met him ever. Like, I'm not scared of you, but you, he creeps me the shit out. Like he uh, does, like he does creep me out. And then it's like, he's the ultimate bully, like lost boys in uh, stand by me. I, he's great. And I like him and stuff, but there's certain people in certain things like, or that you're like, yeah, when it's like, what role is he in? And you're like, oh yeah, no, he'll be great in uh, that. And I'm trying to think like when it comes to horror, there's a few, I mean, we're always going to support um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. We stand Jamie Lee Curtis, who somehow also mixed into the Christmas genre and is killing the game. But, and I love that her mom and her both did it. I don't, oh, yeah. that's awesome. That's cool. Like, come on. That's so cool. But yeah, with other people, it's a lot of people got their start in horror. A lot of people get their start in horror. But I, I'm, I'm just curious, like, who are you, who are your main ones? If you see them, you're like, I really want, I'm, I'll, I wasn't going to check this movie out, but I will because they're there. Kevin Bacon. I fucking love Kevin Bacon. Because. So, Kevin Bacon does not get the acknowledgement he deserves either. No. So here's the thing. Stare of Echoes? Stare of Echoes was great. He was in Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah. You know, was his first movie that or Animal House? Or, Animal House. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I when, love Kevin Bacon. Oh, yeah. When he filmed Friday the 13th, mm-hmm. he was young. Yeah. He was like. Little baby. Oh, yeah. He was like, you know, I don't want to be pigeonholed. I did a comedy. Now I'm going to do a horror. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. <laughs> he wound up getting himself pigeonholed yeah. once he did Footloose. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you this. I've never seen Footloose. But uh, I but I mean, like, yeah, I've never seen Footloose. I uh, feel like there's two types of people in the world. Those of, that watch Dirty Dancing and those who watch Footloose. And then there are people that were either grew up. I'm not saying you couldn't see them both. But there's only one VHS you had in your house. And it was either the NeverEnding Story or Labyrinth. Very rarely did they cross paths. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, well, you'd I'm, be a rich person to have both. <laughs> I'm the weird anatomy, or whatever that word is. I'm the, yeah. I'm the weird one out of it because I had both the NeverEnding Story and Labyrinth. Yeah. But I also rares. had Footloose and Dirty Dancing. Yeah. No, you're one of the rares. Well, I feel like you, you lean towards one or the other. I lean. All right. So Dirty Dancing is great. <laughs> Here's my thing. I love Footloose. I've never seen it. I've never watched it. Footloose is... That's no dancing in the town, right? Yeah. Okay. That's that's a great movie. Mm-hmm. It's not Hall of Fame. Okay. I can't... I don't know... I, I'm so glad you know Freeway. You know, but Dirty Dancing holds a special place in my heart because that was me and my mom's, like... Aww. That was my mom's favorite movie. That's sweet. So every, every year on the day of her passing, I watch it and I drink a Mountain Dew. Because that's what my mom would do. I love that. I do. I <laughs> love know. that. No, no. Now I'm going to have to remember that now, too. Now I'm going to have to remember. Okay. No, I love it's. That, I love that. That's great. If I was going to. What's my mom's jam? She's a Western person. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, I don't know. Well, you talk or questions. Marvel. Like, I'm telling you, people think I'm kidding. And I'm like, no, my, my, my mom knows Marvel better than me. A hundred. She called all. I was so nervous doing Wandavision because it was when I first started YouTube that I was so scared of saying things and doing anything that I I totally. I'm talking down to Dick Van Dyke. She called it in the first five minutes of. She's like, so listen. She's raised on this, like the Dick Van Dyke show and stuff. She just says it, and I'm like, and I'm like, okay. And I totally didn't even realize it until like a year and a half later. Somebody's like, did you not notice that your mom called the entire premise completely of Wandavision in the first five minutes of your first episode review? And I'm like, no. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, that probably would have been a great clip to have at the time. But I'm like, okay, <laughs> no, she, but she cracks me up. But no, yeah. When it, wow. I love that. Her favorite story. I mean, I love that, can, man. Can I? The fact that you said a Mountain Dew, too. What oh, a yeah. boss. I love that. <laughs> Rest in peace, mom. I'm actually going to give your mom a shout out here. Oh, my God. Now, I watched. Don't give her too much credit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've watched, believe it or not, I have watched every one of your episodes. Oh, my God, Josh. What? Every single one. One of my favorite ones God, of I'm all sorry. time is where you and your mom watched a trailer reaction for John Wick 2. Oh, my God. Yeah. No. Here's the thing. Like, my mom, 
is so serious. She anything that you've seen her saying like that. I, it's not that you know what it's like on the internet. Like I am like this. I, even, like I am like this. Obviously, <laughs> I feel like I've been keeping his him and his family captive for hours today, uh, and fine, uh, just doing this. But uh, and I'm like, what? We can talk about that. And Josh is like, let's record. And I'm like, oh, we're talking about Harry Potter. But um, <laughs> no, she's she's somebody that could not meet like the governor from The Walking Dead. She couldn't meet that actor because she'd be like, she can't. She wouldn't like do anything, but she'd be like, I don't want them to do anything. She's very serious when it comes to her <laughs> entertainment and like takes it real seriously. I thought she was gonna have an I thought she was gonna have an aneurysm after John Wick, the last one. And she 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 truly loves John Wick so much. So it's like God, what did she say something horrible in it? God. No, just her reaction to the like once it started, you were this is how much I know I've watched your videos. Oh, my God. You said, all right, Mom, I'm about to show you this trailer. And once it showed the dog running in the rain, your mom's reaction went. <sighs> well, here, I'll let you in on a secret. My mom, to this day, is still very torn up about Winston. That's our dog. <laughs> our our first, my first dog my, it was our pit. And he passed away in, like, like last year. Mom is, I'm talking, like, not to be. I'm not trying to be mean because I I miss Winston too and I cry over Winston too and it's very sad. It sucks losing a pet. It sucks ass. Oh, yeah. It sucks ass losing a pet. Man, it really does. It's the worst because it's just like they just love you. That's it. And I'm like, now I have Hobart and I love him, but like Winston, that was my brother. That was my boy. But that was her ride or die. I do everything with you, best friend. Hobart's great. He's 152 pounds. He can't go as many places as Wynn did. But Winston was her. She always says that. She goes, I, because my dad passed away. She didn't, couldn't want, she knew she had three kids. She was, we didn't have a dog. We got Winston because I showed up with him. I was like, hey, you got a dog now. And she was like, no, fuck that. And then, and then she was like, that's my boy. But we didn't have one until I was older, like in high school. And she was like, no, Winston reminded me of like the love I had for my first dog, Barney. He uh, brought that back for me. And so Winston and her are like this, but that dog and that. <laughs> and Winston, mine, identical. And so, when I told, because I remember I was like, my mom will watch things with violence or swearing or anything in it, as long as they're not senseless. Yeah. And when I was like, she'll love John Wick either way. She would like it if it was the wife or whatever. She would, she she would. But I was like, she's really gonna be about. So I was like, I just gotta convince her. Like, do you want to watch an assassin movie tonight? You know. And so I was just <laughs> like, hey, do you want to watch? And I then I was like, he's got a dog. And she was like, what kind of dog? And I was like, and I showed her. She was like, oh, he looks like my win. And he was still alive at the time. And so she was like, we can watch this. And after that, it was like a, a, a curtain came up. It was like it was like things oh, yeah. that changed her. When I asked her, that's a real question I asked her. It's on my channel somewhere where it's like, who would you rather meet, Keanu Reeves or Tom Brady? Nobody was on par with Tom Brady. <laughs> Nobody was on par with Tom Brady until John Wick. <laughs> and she liked Keanu Reeves. She's like, oh. she, she goes, don't do this to me, Ab. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I won't do it to you, Mom. But yeah, no, John Wick is her. That and then there, I, that I do. That, there are certain ones where I'm like, no, I I love seeing her. Not even without recording it, I love seeing her reaction to them. And that's one because I'm like, mom, I I just doubt there's many 67 year old women going, cannot wait to see that John Wick movie oh, later yeah. this year. And she was like, when God in the last one, I thought she was gonna have a meltdown. I was like, oh no. And then I was like, but figuratively, mommy might not be. And she was like, no, I need a moment. She didn't like seeing his name on a tombstone. That bothered her. That oh, yeah. that bothered her too much. Oh my <laughs> god, she is no. Thank you so much, Josh. No, I you you have great guests. I don't know how you do it. You're like you're like, and the amount of info I thought I had a lot of info. <laughs> you pull out shit that I'm like, god damn, man. Like you're I I I'm like I very rarely so I really enjoy whenever we talk. I really do. But no, I and I love that you're super into horror because the the horror fandom really is great. And oh, yeah. so then like getting to do this with you is awesome. But yeah, I'm just like, okay, how did you, what what, what were the ones where you were like, I really love this shit? Oh, yeah. When did you realize that, like, you were liking this shit way more than your friends with you? When I had a house party for my birthday, I was like 10 years old. They're like, what are we going to watch? We're going to watch Sesame Street? We're going to watch this? I was like, nah, 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 nah. But They were like, what are we going to watch? I was like, we're going to watch Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween, Sleepaway camp. So you were into horror, like for like that's all you wanted. Very oh, yeah. young. Okay, okay. Because right. my because I like I said I loved horror, but when I was just like, oh no, because my all my family watched a lot of stuff with us. Like my my dad was horror, and me and my sisters carried that on. My mom was westerns and all that, and then just but movies were always a huge part of our oh, yeah. growing up and our 
life. But and then, but once I was like, oh, I can do my own thing over here, <laughs> I went real far with it. My sister still know, like, why, like I said, my sister's ten years old. Me, she was watching Blow with me and shit. Like my sister was like, I'm sixteen. Fuck off. You think that I'm? <laughs> I don't give a fuck about what you want. I'm the youngest too. Do you think I got to choose anything to watch? Hell no. So and we didn't have all the channels up, but it was their way or the highway. Shit. So it's like I just I don't watch it, and it's like I'm not even being like oh the violence or anything. I'm like no. So I had to watch a lot of their stuff and watch a lot of whatever they liked and whatever this person liked. And so it's cool. But I remember the first time I really realized, like I, that's how I became friends with my friend Brad and his brother, Dan, the ones with the movie theater room upstairs. Oh, yeah. And I realized I was, that they were, I realized they were smart people and that they were cool people. When he <laughs> said, I've seen the movie sleepers. And I was like, who's the shit. And I was like, you've seen that. And I was like the crazy shit with the school and Kevin Bacon. And I was oh, like, yeah. and Robert De Niro's a priest. And they were like, he's like, yeah. And I was like, Oh good. And I was like, I like this guy. And then I was like, I like your Jimi Hendrix t-shirt. And then he said another, he, he brought up another one. And I was like, or he was, he really likes the movie. Welcome to the dollhouse. And you knew that movie too. And I was like, oh. I never knew that movie till the dyer showed it to me. And we used to yell at each other. Me, you three o'clock, I'm going to rape you. And then <laughs> thinking back on it, I'm like, Oh my God. Like I was dropping my friend off at his job at little Caesars on a main road. I'd be like three o'clock, I'm going to rape you. And then I'm like, Jesus Christ. And I'm like, that's awful. But I'm like that. And that was the first time I was like, Oh, other people don't know movies and stuff like this and then there, there's a couple times but that was like when i started getting older and realizing oh people i knew i had a bigger love for it and a bigger yeah. like understanding and wanting to know of it than people around me but, but i didn't realize like how much people didn't sit back and go like i want to watch all this shit or like recent like all the time oh yeah and i remember one this was a mistake though it was like high school and the godfather was just on tv and my friends was like letting us all come smoke in her basement or something so it was like me and we were probably like 17 18 and like eight other girls all around the same age right <laughs> i'm not hating on ladies i'm not saying they can't like mom movies and shit but just for a group of 18 year old girls it's just not the movie to throw on you know it's at the beginning everybody's smoking and hanging out anyway and i was like can we just leave on the godfather so we do we got all the way all the way to him shooting the cop until my friend rachel goes abby what's happening and i go <laughs> and i looked around and i'm like none of you are having fun I was having a lot of fun. Yeah. None of it. Now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I've been paying attention and really enjoying watching the Godfather, like hanging out, whatever. None of you enjoy this. And then I was like, and that's okay. No. But I was just like, it's okay. You guys can change it. I was like, it's fine. And that's when I was like, not everybody wants to do this shit. I am. But uh, no, yeah, that was a good one. And then it was always great when you meet other people that it's like, with anything, it's like that. You meet other oh, people yeah. that like sports or whatever. It's awesome. But rarely do I meet somebody who is, it's like, I want to hear a bunch of random facts that I don't know why I fucking know them. Huh. Here we go. There random we go. Let's, let, I'll hit you with them. But the girl from Just Welcome cool. to the Dollhouse, Heather Martin Zaro, yeah, has also been in a franchise we covered earlier, Screen Three. She played the sister to Randy. But oh shit! Here's something else. She was also in Hostel Part Two. I forgot about Hostel. She was the one that was hanging upside down that uh, got cut with the. Oh my sit. god! And she's got a really distinct look too. Yeah. Like I, and I don't mean that in a negative or anything way i'm just like she's like a distinct yeah yeah no you're absolutely right and now we can talk about stranger things if you want and oh, close man. it out and then uh, uh, but no i was gonna say to you what are horror tv things that you really were into or really think are top tier all of us are dead is in my hall of fame okay that's i'll uh, have to check that out that's on netflix it's a it's a oh with streaming services it has gotten to be more yeah. okay well, see, to me, it's like Netflix has gone more against, not against, but they've gone more of the Asian route. Cause, oh, they have, yeah. You know. Well, everything is right now. Not, I'm not being weird or anything, but I'm like, K-pop is huge right now. That's a oh, huge yeah. thing right now. Like, a lot of people are leaning towards that aesthetic or the vibe of those countries. It's, oh, yeah. It is what it is. Well, once, well, and they're a huge fucking market. Oh, yeah. Well, here's my thing. Not one, that it's bad. We're just, oh, yeah. just a fact. One of my favorite movies of all time. The moment I seen it entirely for the first time, it went straight to legendary. Okay. Train to Busan. You're, I'm going to have to check that out. That's a good one. It is on Netflix also. Remember the first time you watched Old Boy and, everybody, and you just thought you were the coolest person ever and were sad, but also it was awesome? Believe why did they redo that in English? That was dumb. Yeah. And then why would they have two Marvel people who are enemies be mother or be uh, father and daughter and uh, do, you, do you just know what I mean though? There's certain movies that you watch when you're a film buff coming up where you're like, I know everything now. 
And one of those is like Donnie Darko. Yeah. We will. It doesn't matter. We will fight everybody for Donnie Darko because we're like it's our thing. Uh we, we know the Boondock Saints isn't good, but it is to us, and we'll fight about it anyway. Oh, but yeah. there's like yeah, there's certain big ones where we're like we know film now, and oh <laughs> Memento. Memento. Oh, yeah. The second you watched Memento, you were like, "I'm Christopher Nolan now." <laughs> and, then, and then the Dark Knight came out, and everybody forgot about Memento. No, Memento. That's a big one. And then, uh, what was? <laughs> oh, here we go. The Big Lebowski. Yeah. <laughs> the Big Lebowski. And then you're like, "I can make a movie. I am Steven Spielberg." And you're like, "Okay." Oh my God, no, that is Memento. Uh, those are. Oh my God, those are them though. Donnie Darko, Boondock Saints. That we, like I said, we know they're not. Like some of them we know aren't good, but we're like, no, we love this film anyway. Uh, but that's not, but when you're like, no, I could be, I, I know everything. That's that's definitely, that's definitely out there. Um, oh, yeah. No, but what was the movie we were just talking about? Because that's up there too. Uh, The one I mentioned? We're right before that. Or, or Old Boy. No, Old Boy, that's yeah, yeah. once. And then you either watched Old Boy or Pan's Labyrinth and then thought you were a foreign film expert. <laughs> and, but, but I will say those both open up the door for me. This is a movie, maybe you'll know this one. It took me forever to find this. I don't know. I will say this for my crazy ex. He had great taste in movies too. I think that I was a filing cabinet made him like mad sometimes, but he had <laughs> real great taste in movies too. And I found out it's called The Protector with Tony Ja. Yep. And explaining explaining it to people back before sounded insane because I was like, no, it's a man with a baby elephant and everybody's given a baby elephant and somebody takes that baby elephant. It's John Wick. It's John Wick, but they don't kill it. It's a baby elephant. And he's fucking shit up. And then I realized who Tony Jaa was. And he's like a renowned martial artist, like stunt man. And he was like running up poles and kicking out street lights and shit. And it was crazy. Yeah. But explaining that to people in a bar when you're older and don't know what this film is that you watched with your ex 10 years ago before the end, you're like, I'm telling you, he has a baby elephant. <laughs> it's foreign. And he's kicking the shit out of people. I don't know what it is. And they're like, what the fuck is this lady talking about? And then I found out that was and that was a foreign movie but no yeah the, when you first watch old boy you're like i know the secrets to all foreign film now and you're uh, like no i don't or like you get into kurosawa after that and then you're like <laughs> and then you're like i'd rather just watch the good the bad and the ugly i don't care if they ripped it off <laughs> I don't fuck off. i'm sorry like we're from it is. but no I, I didn't mean to cut you off but i did oh my god that's funny as fuck well here's the thing so with old boy mm -hmm. not bad. only was like and, and we're talking about the foreign one, not the American one. Oh, yeah. No, I don't even think I finished it. Yeah. I did, but the only reason is because I'm an idiot, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or I have nothing to do. Yeah. But with Old Boy, not only, and it's one of the very rare occasions where cinematography, music, yep. acting, I mean, everything was like perfect. There's a reason why, if you've never watched foreign film before, you sit down, and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, and watch Old Boy. Yeah. No, oh, Old yeah. Boy is. It's good. I like that. Yeah, no. I feel like, you know when you see, like, these giant podcasts and you'll see a poster in the background, you know damn well, like, ain't none of you watching that. Like, yeah. ain't no, no, somebody cool on your staff said, put this in the background. Somebody's got, I think it might be Bobby Lee or something. I'm like, <laughs> maybe, you, I, I just, I just don't believe it. I'm like, somebody said, put that old boy shit up in the background because it's cool. And I'm like, I appreciate it, but All right. shut up. No, yeah, no. Oh, my God. Uh, I miss but, those days. So there's, all right. I'm oh, Sam. Oh, shit. Hi, Sam. Bro. You're, uh, they're they're uh, awesome. I see. Oh, they're dead. It's pretty good. Oh, okay. Yes. No. <laughs> Thank you. No, and thank you always for your comments. I always appreciate them. I, I Just that anybody that has the balls but Sam Broly as their name is, must be, you know, like you must be a cool motherfucker. That's all I'm going to say. Right. Um, I kind of thought, you, have you seen Broly? You know the big green monster he has? Ba? No. Okay. He wears this thing and I, I just, I realized that the other day. I go, I should have named Hobart Ba. He's got, it's a big monster that, uh, that he becomes friends with and then his dad makes it mad. But anyway, uh, Stranger Things. We could tie into that because can I show you guys what Josh gave me? Because he's giving me too much. And I'm like, oh my God. First off, his wife was nice enough to give me this awesome Man of Maxine. Can we check that out? Look at that awesome Man of Maxine Funko Pop from Harry Potter. I love it. It's my favorite. I love it so much. It's going to go right by my Voldemort. And then we got a Tyrion and a Daryl for mom. Oh, we'll hide that for mom. And then there's, and I'll show it later to you guys because I don't want mom, I don't know if she's watching. It's a Daryl thing and she loves Daryl. But you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, this is really, honestly, this is like my favorite item that I have in my, <laughs> ever. I don't think you understand how much you've done this. This is signed by Joe Dante, the director of Gremlins, but not only that, the fucking director of the goddamn Burns. And it's my favorite thing. And John just gave it to me today. And I'm like, and it's like, authenticated. And it's authenticated. And I'm like, Oh my god, it's my favorite thing. But also, 
And he really is my favorite character. I love this. This is oh, sick. Yeah. And I want to see. I want to get. I want to get another one on the other side by the same artist. Maybe that's oh, why yeah. I'm like, look at this Eddie Munson shit. It might be a glare. I might I might have to do that. <laughs> but it's him playing guitar, painted all sick as shit. And I'm like, okay, we're gonna talk about strange things. We gotta show it. But thank you again for this. Like, oh, I really am like. <laughs> I don't oh, know what to did. do. I'm like, you guys are too nice and too kind. And I'm like, oh my God, you made my, that, you made my life. <laughs> like, I don't think you understand how heavy that makes me. But let's talk Stranger Things. So, I, wh- what, all right, I know who your favorite character is. Okay. Wait, who is my favorite character? Eddie Munson. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, no, I was going to say like, well, he's in the one season. If we're going like, all right, so I'm Steve gonna... probably. At least Steve steps up, even though he gets his ass beat a couple I'm, times. I like Robin. I like Robin too. Robin's a badass. I'm afraid for her. I'm afraid for them all. Do you think they're gonna off somebody? Oh, I think they're gonna off at least. Do you think Eleven's gonna die? No, no. That's what that's what it was. If you've read The Talisman by Stephen King, there's I, I can't remember it exactly. There's it's the end of the world. They got to go across the country to get something. It's a group together, and but maybe it's to save the mom. It's to save somebody. Or stop somebody from being like, I don't know, there's whatever Stephen King. And that's why I'm like, I, it's somebody, uh, somebody online said they're really worried for Lucas. I don't know why though. And I'm like, no, I'm, I think they're going to be going to like get Eddie or, and I, and maybe who, who's the one that beat the shit out of Steve, this brother. Oh, Billy, uh, Billy, Billy, Billy. I love that they use stereotypical names too. The second they said Nancy, I was like, "Man, there we go." I love it, like Nancy, Billy, Max. <laughs> Everybody in the eighties and nineties was named Max. I don't know one person named Max in Shit's real life. I'm saved by the bell. The restaurant was called Max. Yeah, I, I, I don't know anybody <laughs> named Max. There's, I know some Billies, but not as many as the eighties and nineties made it seem. I actually know a guy named Max. I work with him. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what I mean. Like, but when I was younger, everybody was oh, Max. Everybody in every movie is Max, Billy, Ashley, and I'm oh, like, yeah. I don't, I don't know any. Max is, I think I know one Billy growing up. Like, William, that's a big name. But anyway, uh, I definitely, I think they're going to be going, I think it's going to be like the Talisman. They're going to have to get something, but instead of going cross country, we're going to be in the upside down, going across a far distance, and we're going to have to go get people that were taken. But I was like, you can't have everybody come back. That's cheap shit. (gasps) No, that's what I thought too. It might restart like the Dark Tower. I think we're going to get to the end, and they're going to be little kids again. That would be... That would be interesting. That's I totally. I was like, "There's something coming here," and then I was like, "Oh shit! Wait, what is it?" I was like, "There's a rose on the door, dark tower," and then I was like, "I think that they might come back." And the, I, I was like, "I would like that more than we hit the reset and we saved everybody because then there's no stakes." But I'm like, well, "Well, it's not. There's no stakes." But I'm like, "You can't keep eleven here and right." Yeah. Okay, so you tell me. You tell me. My opinion, just my opinion. So you were speaking of talisman. Mm-hmm. How they gotta go cross country to find somebody. Mm-hmm. Stranger Things started off with the only person that survived being in the upside down. Will. Now here's the thing: season two, it tried to attack, uh, attaching to Will again. Okay. And it did. Yeah. That was gross, by the way. That's what I think about the funny acting. I'm like, that oh, kid yeah. was strapped to a bed all day long, and like, even if it wasn't hurting him, it's like that was probably annoying as shit. Oh yeah. And then season three, they went a completely different way. Yeah, the the Russians were fighting at the carnival, the shoe carnival. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the only one, and this is including Eleven, the only one who can sense something the entire time through all the seasons uh-huh. has been Will. Oh, yeah, no. So here's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Uh, Will, great music, by the way. Oh, great yeah. score. You want to talk about great scores in music? Oh, yeah. There we go, yeah. I mean, when you can have running up that hill and master puppets in the same yeah. episode, man, it's my favorite. The, the same seasons. The way they used uh, "We Could Be Heroes" in the oh, first yeah. one is really well done too. It's 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 like beautifully done with the with the everything. It's really well done. But yeah, no, okay. Huh. Talisman will. So I, you, I just don't think they would do that to the mom. I think, and and here's what. What if they went just totally crazy and Eleven just rips off Will's head or something crazy? I think I mean, that would be interesting. Carrie, <laughs> which just goes full of Carrie White. That would. Oh, I feel sorry for whoever's around her. Yeah, well, <laughs> but I, I think, just feel like we're making Eleven too powerful. True, I think Will is going to succumb to the dark, the whatever you want to call it, 
in this next season. Really? But in that being said, will it be like a sacrificial thing? Is that yes? Oh, and see, Will will have Will and Eleven because Vecna is going to take over. Will. Do you think that Will has to take Vecna's place or something? I think Vecna this entire time, even though he's been taking souls and stuff like that and been trying to get strong, yeah, has been doing that just to get Will's body to where he can take over Will's body. No, because he is, because, yeah, well, first we started out and it was uh, the creature shit, but then we get to the sludge monster. Now the sludge monster is now a, a muscly guy. Like, technically, like, uh, it's all coming together but maybe if it maybe it'll be something like if we take vecna out we can get billy back because didn't billy turn to goo uh no he just got stabbed a couple times okay okay and we might get beth back i could see people going nuts if we got if they were like justice for barb barb, barb. justice for barb and people go nuts if barb got saved people go Ashley ate shit well i think and this is what i think oh no will you little shit I think oh and they made him gay they're totally off in them yeah well, ah, well, no, he, he's also gay in real life no i know yeah, yeah. but what they were saying they were gonna, gonna do with the character yeah yeah but I, I think he said they had like a discussion and he was like kind of already like alluding to the fact and they were like would you kind of want me and i'm like whatever and like no i what i okay but i'm like normally when that happens it's kind of like the black character uh, we're like it's, the gay character now is like the black character from 20 years ago we're like fucking hey you're getting, <laughs> getting off here we go i'm like god damn it well i just feel different winona rider well see here's what's gonna happen but she would get 11 as a daughter or some shit Not... no i just mean like oh, the yeah. pseudo family thing okay well, yeah. so here's what's gonna happen i think anyway so Will's going to succumb to Vecna's going to take over Will. Will has gotten the short end of the stick. All he wanted was to go home. Yeah, and then and he's like the poor one in the group. Come on. Oh yeah, and then it's going to come down to Will and Eleven having to fight. Mono mono. Now here's the thing though. And they got to play D and D to see who wins. <laughs> like so. No. In Will's Will or Vecna's? Actually, no. In Will's final fight against Vecna as he's trying to cast him out. Vecna makes a crucial mistake and somehow manages to get it to where this is making me sad. If Will lets Vecna have his body, yeah. he'll give people back. But if Will goes into him, it'll be oh my god. And in the transition, that's how we're gonna get at least two characters back. But I want to say three. That's how we're going to get Barb. If they bring Barb, fans will go nuts for Barb coming back. That's how we're going to get. And we already called the crow, so we can just oh, write yeah. this down. Yeah, yeah. That's how they're going to get Eddie Eddie, back. Eddie's got to come back. He just got cast in Fantastic Four. Shout out to him. Yep. Now, here's the most important one, in my opinion. And a lot of other people are not going to agree with this. Not Max. everyone's like. Well, Max is not dead. No, but oh, I thought. Never mind. I thought we were saying who was dying. You're yeah. saying who's coming back. But she, Eleven's going to be able to trick the mind of Vecna and get back. And this person plays a crucial part in some way, shape, or form. And it's not Billy. Dustin, Steve's going to have to sacrifice something. Oh, Steve's going to die. No, yeah. he can't die. He's the parent. Well, see, here's the thing. Here's who I think is going to die. I won't even mention the third one yet, but here's who I think is going to die. I'm, I'm really I'm really anticipating this. I'm like, who is this? Steve's going to die. No. But he's he's got to end up with Nancy. He's going to save Justin. Dustin. Oh, my fucking God. You're right, because do you want to know what? Do you want to know what? Huh. I'll tell you what. That's why they made him the pseudo dad now, because he'll never make it to adulthood to be one. Right. God, fuck it. Now, here's the thing, though. Here's God damn it. The, here's the thing, though. So in... Robin's going to hold his hand while he goes. Yep. Best but... friends. But in order to get three back, they yeah. they had to give three. Only death can pay for life. So Steve, shit, you're is right. Taking the I place. just got chills. You're totally right. So Steve is taking the place of Eddie coming back. Oh my god, I hate it. Right? I don't hate it because I love them both. You're telling that I'm telling you those are my favorite characters. Robin is taking the place. Oh, they I'm, won't kill Robin and yes, Steve. Yeah, but they're they're gonna die horrifically. But together, yeah, Robin's going to be the place of Barb coming back. You're right. Only death can pay for life. Because see, Steve, there's loved... fundamental rules to this shit, guys. So once you see the patterns, you're fucked. Then you're like, we gotta. Oh no. What is? Oh, this is... oh yeah, no. But see, here's the thing, and the reason I say that 
Steve and Robin are going to die. No, you're absolutely right about this. Because, see, Steve loves... Do you think they're going to stay back there, like, close the door? I think they're going to be the reasoning... Steve loves fucking Nancy, and fucking Will's brother's going to have to have something to live for, because Will's off, and now he's going to be with her. Is that what you're about to tell me? No. I'm no. sad either way. So, so, Steve loves Nancy. Yeah. Right? So he's going to give his life for Dustin. I like that they let Nancy get around. Not get around in a bad way, but like date around. That never happens with girls and stuff. I like that. Oh, yeah. Okay, because that's how life is normally. <laughs> but uh, keep going. But uh, Steve's going to die for Nancy, uh, uh, for uh, Eddie to come back. For Oh, my God, because Eddie can step into Dustin's guy now because they play d and d Fuck, you're right. Robin's going to see how much Steve cares for Nancy. <sighs> So in order for Nancy to get a happy ending, she's going to give herself. Do you think we're going to see that girl that she has a crush on, like deny her or something earlier? Oh, no, in the they're season? going to be a full fledged couple. I think that she's going to deny her earlier in the season or they broke up or something. Cause there's no way that you're going to allow Will to not have a happy ending or her. But like we said, like I said, the gay character <laughs> is the black character of 20 years ago. Robin's out. Oh my God. You might be right. Now the third death. This one, I, this one's going to hurt. You already disrespected the turtle today. <laughs> okay. This one's going to hurt. But you did give me the greatest item of all time. So <laughs> Mike's going to give his life for 11 and Will. And that's how we're going to get Will back. No. Yes. No. Because see, here's the thing. If you look at it. They've why been... should I? But why? Oh, fuck. But here's the thing. If you really look at the, C, the series from beginning to now. Why wouldn't it be Jonathan? Because the Byers family has to be together. Yeah, somebody's got to live. You're right. So here's the thing. They've been setting Mike up to be the sacrificial lamb. By Eleven's hand? By oh. everyone's hand. Okay, here's what's making me sad. is like imagining Eleven and Will going at it mm -hmm. while all of them watch. That's true. That's going to be the saddest part. That's going to be the hardest part where they're going to be like, friends don't lie. <laughs> Fuck. Man, that's all. Oh, no. Well, see, you're totally right about Steve and Eddie, though. Fuck. Now here's. The but let, can I tell you why I think the clock thing? Why? Because Vecna's obsessed with them. Yes. They're everywhere. The symbolism of the clock is everywhere. So I'm like, someone's gonna go through a door, and we're gonna see like the backs of these little heads riding on bikes. We're gonna be like back in business, and then like Eleven's gonna be running into the woods or something. But I'm like, no. <laughs> You're absolutely no, because I that that's a, only death can pay for life. Nor these that's a thing in everything in fantasy and anything. So it's just like ah. Oh, well, now that's just one way it can. What? End. Why can't Winona Ryder step in here? And my mom called. It's weird. That's why I love talking about different stuff with not just movie buffs. That's it's my favorite thing because they might pick somebody with different life experiences is going to pick up on something differently than how somebody else does yeah. or see something. And one of my favorite things is like people who are parents watching something because my mom said something about a uh, hopper at, like four episodes before he was gone because she was if they were in the car and she goes he's gonna die or something's gonna be something bad's gonna happen and i go why do you say that and she goes because you don't say goodbye to your kid like that uh, unless you think and i go he didn't say goodbye and she goes yeah but that's our parent way of saying goodbye to our kid without him knowing <laughs> and i was like okay i didn't pick up on that because i'm not a, a parent probably and she immediately did so right. i was like oh shit i was like that's but i'm like He's a giant man, but he wouldn't be. Yeah, but he. Uh, but they. Yeah, you're right. They already. Wait, is he? And I say this word all the time. I don't care what anybody says. Is he still with the Ruskies? <laughs> we no. need to bring Ruski back. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> where's he? He's home now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he jumped through the thing. Yeah, because yeah. at the end, they're all there watching the upside down start to come I, into yeah. our reality. Now here's yeah. here's what we're gonna have to close some kind of door, right? Oh yeah. Now, God here's, damn. Here's. Why wouldn't they kill Eleven? She's it might be like Firestarter. It might be, but here's what's gonna happen. I think <sighs> and killing kids. <laughs> I think and this would be a good way. This would be a way that I would go about it. Yeah. Now I'm just gonna give you my my whole thought process. I'm sad. I would do the Steve thing. Yeah, for sure. Even though I don't want that for sure. I would also do the Mike thing. Because Mike always wants to keep everyone alive. I think alive. Mike's gonna die by Eleven's hand, though. She's gonna for, to keep your powers. She's gonna have to do. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Is or that will be the last. Or that will be the last. Um, she needs to be like fuck back. Yeah. Something. It's got to be some type of motivation or something. Well, here's what I'm thinking. 
they finally get Vecna out of Will. Uh huh. And he takes over Mike. Oh, and it'll be like the the exorcist. Yeah, and then and there won't be a priest there to beat the shit out of him. No, but that yeah, that when it because it jumps into him for a second and then jumps back and okay, yeah. But the thing is, is the way I would go about it, I would do the Steve thing. Yeah. No, I think you're absolutely right about that because why does Dustin need two of those? Right. Now, I would take Renona Ryder's character. I was going to say, we got mom here, so... And she lost Will once. Oh, yeah. Twice. And she... We got a third time. Threes, sevens, look out for them. Those are also a big thing, so I'm like, shit. Oh, yeah. I would take her character. Okay. And I would have her be the one that gets it to where Will cast Vecna out. And in the process, she gets injured, but not dies. Shit. Now, Eleven. I'm stressing now. <laughs> now, Eleven, who has all these powers, yeah, is at the bedside of Max. I was gonna say Max is off, right? Doesn't she yeah. have something going on with her? Well, like she's brain dead. Is she? Oh yeah, because yeah. Lucas is like visiting her or something. Yeah. Why is she just like she's just like that? Because I thought they showed like that she still had Vecna around her or something. No, so uh, Vecna. I'm wondering if Billy's gonna start being able to talk to her somehow because of that. Well, that. Plays into what I'm about to oh, say. Oh, shit. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so, Eleven is at the bedside with Lucas sent by Max. Okay. I'm going to have to rewatch this. Yeah. And she goes and does the thing where she could get into their minds. Oh, yeah. And she's doing that, and it's nothing but black. Yeah, there's nothing to hold. So. She's brain dead. Yeah. But what Eleven can do is go back to the memories that she knows that they've had. And put them in there. And she puts Billy in there, and Billy tells her it's time for you to wake up and get off your yeah, ass. Yeah, okay. that's some shit that he would say. Yeah, 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 for sure. And in doing that, now this is just the way I would do it. In doing that, not only do we get Max back, but we get Billy back because now Mike has given his life for the ones he loves. Yeah. And so everyone who doesn't make it has to get someone back for someone who does make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it goes. That's how it works with everything. Just so everybody knows. But I think, like, do you guys remember in Game of Thrones when Daenerys has the dragons? Oh and yeah. Only and the, she tells her only death can make her life. It's a it's a real thing. It's a thing in everything. Like if you just watch, like normally we get to trade off here, but you're absolutely right. So fuck, it's gonna be Steve. A lot of people are thinking that Hopper and Joyce are gonna end up together. I mean. They should, but I think there might be too much trauma here. They should end up together, but I think in a twist. Hopper's so great. I think Hopper is going to be. Well, Hopper already made the sacrifice with his family and daughter. So, yeah. And I love the way they did that. I thought they did that beautifully. Oh, yeah. When they brought Will back and then cutting back and forth between that and the daughter with the breathing tube. I was like, that was beautifully done, Stranger Things. Like, just artistically, that was really well done. But I think that, uh, Hopper, you are stressing me out with these things you're saying. <laughs> by the way, I, you think Dustin is safe because he's no. got the pseudo dads, though. I don't, That's why, though. No, but he's got the people looking. Yeah. Well, I also think this is the main reason why I think Dustin is safe. Susie. Ah. Because see. Okay. Even though she didn't play a pivotal part, she played a part. Oh yeah. You know? Well, that and like we were saying, he's got Steve and he's got. Eddie right. looking out. So I'm like, why you wouldn't unless you were gonna have Steve and Eddie. If if Eddie was still there now, I would be more concerned for Dustin. Because I could see like them watching him fall and going ape shit and going yeah. and losing it. And then or or there being a conflict of like you couldn't protect him. I right. could have type deal. Yeah. I could have seen that, but I'm like, no, because Eddie's not there. You're well, right. the Duffer brothers have gone on record and said that every single person whether they've been killed or is alive on Stranger Things, will be in this last season. I'm telling you, man, it's gonna be the it's gonna be the final frame. We're gonna it's gonna be because I total resets or coming back. I don't hate it if it's done right, and I wouldn't hate, and I think they would do this right. Like I do, but I'm like I really do. I think we're gonna be like melancholy, and then all of a sudden that music's gonna kick in. And we're going to go, we're going to pan down, and they're going to be heading all over down Mirkwood 
to all go play D and D, and then we're gonna see Eleven like running into that pipe or whatever we see her at, or some shit oh, like yeah. that, or we're gonna see like the backs of their heads or, or something. It's gonna be them going like, "We play tonight. Who's being Dungeon Master? I think it's gonna be Will." Like that's what we're gonna hear, and we're all gonna go. <sighs> How about this? Oh shit! They, and then it's gonna be like insinuated, but if we are seeing everybody, that yeah, because they they they. I don't know if it's going to be flashbacks or whatever. right. That there's a few things we could do here: dreams, memories, and if we're more around people's heads, oh yeah, they could be just memories of Barb. But but here's the thing: I don't think that's it. Yeah, I think out of the woodwork, <sighs> Paul Reiser's character, the Doctor, who's yeah. still alive. Yeah, I was going to say, what do we think is going to happen to the Doctor? He's going to start taking up the research of what Matt Modine's character was doing. Oh yeah, because they kind of made him nice. Yeah, yeah. He's going to take up that, but only he's going to do it. In a manner of trying to help the children instead of create. I do. I will say this. They've done a good job because normally it can feel a little jarring or yeah. abrasive if you immediately go like, well, the, they're really not bad. And we went from like, you're what? What are you talking about? We were just the, for the first season. We hated this other guy. Like, what do you mean? You're all testing on kids. What are we talking about? And then it's like, oh, but they're not that bad. But I'm like, no, they, they they've done a very good job. And this is writing and everything else of showing like both sides and then going. No, it, it it is just there is part of us that's cold that goes it's just science, uh, but there is a part of us that's like we're we're trying our best here to be semi decent, uh, but not totally us going like the good bean doctor. It's like we're still going, uh, but they they've done a good job with it. I will say that. So I'm like, yeah, where is that gonna? Well, here's the thing: you also got to look. This all really came from trying to spy on the Russians. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, well, I wouldn't doubt it. We, there's a real weird. Why did the beef? <laughs> I feel like we, it's just a pissing contest forever now. Like, oh, yeah. Where we're just, I don't know. <laughs> well, with the upside down coming to our reality. Right. That's now, what I mean. Something's got to close. Yeah, because now you're going to have Demobats, Demodogs, Demogorgons. Or, or are they going to be zombified barbs coming at people? That's another possibility. That's a, see, now here's what's going to happen. Now this small group aren't the only ones that know something's happening. Oh, shit. It's going to get outside the town? So here's what's going to happen. I'm not going to go as far as, say, you're going to have a marble-sized battle. You really think that? But you will. I think what's going to happen is is now this entire town, all the entire town. Oh, Hawkins, oh I get what you mean. Like, it won't just be this group. It's going to be the entire city or the entire area. Okay. Yeah, okay. Are now going to have to fend and fight to try to survive. Because Vecna can make you see what you, whatever he wants you to see. And that's a creepy design. I, I'm... The older I get, like that is scary. Um, but there's uh, back in the day, shit was real, oh, practical, yeah. and scary. Oh, yeah. Vecna, there was a couple times watching that. I rarely now, as an adult, go, you know, I kind of want to turn the light higher up before I walk up to the <laughs> stairs, you know. And after I watched the last seasons, I was like, oh, I don't like that Vecna, or I'd be like, look behind the door again, or something like oh, that. Yeah. Was creepy. He's creepy. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the thing I think. Now they could go multiple ways because he is straight evil. That yeah. guy is straight evil. Okay. Like even though he worked at this place, and I like that they did that, where it was like we were against this, but now we're really against this. Yeah. But on the same hand, here's the thing. Oh, um, he was number one. Yep. Yeah. And here's the thing: everyone's like, you know, he's the strongest one. Blah blah blah. Eleven killed him. Well, what's what's we have? I mean, I know it's not correct math, but we have one, and now we have one and one. So it's like, yeah. Who's better? No. Nah, like one times two or something, like the upper level of one. Oh, yeah. Now, I think another way they could do it, like, it, you know, is like they could have Vecna just make all these Demogorgons look like these dead people. And now. Turn on each other? Yeah. Now, now the Now the. Now I have to go read the Talisman and remember what happens in that. Because I'm like, I don't remember what the entity is. I'm like, I don't remember. Or, or maybe it is like an, an upside down situation where it's like the terrain is hard. I don't know. But no, you're absolutely right. Because I'm just like, but how could this, I guess if everybody just had to start fighting, that could happen. But I was like, or do you think that, do you think that maybe there'll be, wait, what are we saying? Oh, shit. I see the Chucky pops in the background. And it reminds The me. Chucky TV, I haven't watched it all the way through, but I've watched the first episode. I heard it's very good. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Uh, the first two seasons were good. Season three. How many seasons are there? Oh, they're on a third. Oh, they're on the third? Yeah. Okay. Season three. Yeah. Is it? I mean, Chucky's pretty great. 
I, but I, I heard I people. It's gotten like good reviews. Like people have oh, been yeah. like, it's very well done. People really like it, and right. I'm here for that. Well, seasons one and two, they were good. Season three, once they came back from the mid season. It's on sci-fi. Right. Yeah. Okay. No USA. Okay. Same shit. Yeah, but I was like, mm, you know, the, the way they're doing with this second half of season three, I'm not really vibing. Yeah, but I mean, I, I can't really do too much with what. What I'm interested in is if they're actually going to do a Chucky versus Megan. Oh, shit. We need to stop giving him. This is what I'll say. And then we can. <laughs> okay. So we think Steve is going to die. Eddie will come back. Robin's going to die. I think it's um, after you said that, I'm like, no, it's going to be. They're going to say, like, the door's too big. We need two. And Robin's going to be like, I got you, Steve. Or Steve's going to be like, I got you, Robin. One, vice versa. One or, one or the other. But you're, that's, but you're absolutely right. And then. Mike, fuck, you're right. Because it's got to be a family. That's, well, does each family have two kids except for Dustin? That's why it wouldn't be Dustin. That's right. Also, yeah, everybody's got a sibling because it's like you got to start thinking. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but it's like, okay, are we really gonna decimate a family? We already did that to Barb's. <laughs> who are yeah. who, who? Who are we gonna do this with? It's like, well, the the only thing that I think is going to be an injustice to Stranger Things this next season is they're not bringing back Argyle. What? Yeah, he the guy. Dude, I did a video of it. I didn't know you could call the pizza places. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my friend was like, put on your camera, call these numbers. And I called them. One was uh, the scientist lab. One was the pizza place he worked at. And one was <laughs> like the school or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's on my channel. I, it's not good. It's like me in a row making phone calls. But no, <laughs> what do you mean? I love him. Yeah, well, the guy who. But I guess they're moving home. Yeah. Well, Fuck. also the guy who uh, played Argyle. Signed on to be on something else. I was just saying, did he get a big role? Yeah. Okay, well, we're cheering for you, Argyle. <laughs> we just really liked your character. I'm not going to lie. I get those surfer boy pizzas, surfer boy pizzas from Walmart all the time. Do you know what? We're going to do that, too, on the channel. We're going to review these funny foods that are coming out <laughs> tied in with Stranger Things. Because apparently it turns your face, your, your mouth, and your mouth all black. And oh, yeah. you can't leave your home. And uh, there's pizzas that are really good that I'm not. No, I went to go get them. They were sold out. I remember that. Oh, the one by my house right here always has them. Oh, my God. No. And then I remember the Game of Thrones Oreo thing. They were like, you can't buy more than two packages. I was like, try and stop me. Who's <laughs> going to stop me from buying all the Oreos? Like, fucking idiots. They brought, brought up, up Megan in the recent episode of Chucky. <gasps> yeah. They're, they're canon. So. Oh, shit. Okay. That's I'm, uh, okay. Yeah. But uh, Chucky is way scarier than Megan. True. Well, you can It just, I don't know. Maybe not. Well, here's my thing. Chucky. All right, so here, here, <laughs> Chucky, Chucky's like it's more portable. Yes, he can well, fit more places. He's also a being. I think Chucky just likes. I I don't know. I feel like Chucky just does what the fuck he wants. Like outside oh, of the yeah. murderous part, like Chucky's <laughs> got some good qualities. So he's just like, no, nah, fuck the establishment. I'm gonna do whatever I want. My favorite line out of any... And I feel like movie. Megan would try to become the establishment, though. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like Megan would be technology where Chucky <laughs> would be like, I'm analog, motherfucker. Let's go. Like, that That would be that. That would be a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. My favorite line out of any Chucky movie... Bitch. <laughs> ...is where he, <laughs> Tiffany says, do you have a rubber? And oh, yeah. Like, I'm all made of yeah. rubber. <laughs> no, when he calls somebody a bitch, was that, which one is that in? The first all one? Them. All of them? <laughs> Chucky called people a bitch is funny. Could you imagine if a toy game called you a bitch? Like, you're, that's so that's just funny. It's a funny concept. Have you seen uh, the Winnie the Pooh horror movie? No, I haven't. I will tell you this, because Winnie the Pooh himself is a horror. Winnie the Pooh is a fucking menace. <laughs> Go back and watch it. He is a menace to his society. He is breaking into their homes. He is eating all their food. He is breaking all their property. He's destroying Eeyore's house. I'm like, you're an asshole. Like, you're a constant asshole. And then I'm like, but we love you. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, did you like it? Was it all right? Oh, For, part, like, public domain shit, was it okay? Part one was okay. Part one? Part two was... There's two parts? Part two came out this year, and it was only in the theater for three days, and that was last month. Part two... All right, part one doesn't even make my top 50. Okay. I mean, I... Part two... Made my top ten. What? Really? Just because of Tigger. Okay, you've got me intrigued now. What's it on? Uh, you can't 
Uh, you can watch Because if the, I don't have it, Timmy apparently has it. My friend Timmy's like, I got it all. I've been paying for it. I'm like, you got Paramount Plus? Because the Knuckles show is coming. He said he tagged you in the... Oh, shit. On what? The clip for... Oh, on TikTok? God. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Thank you. Tigger in part two was funny. He wasn't in part one because he was in public domain at that time. I swear to God, I have all idiots in my life. Except for you. Like, like... It's all good. <laughs> no. I'm like... If I tell you guys, I have to go do X, Y, and Z for sure with this at 2.30 or whatever. Are you going to text me at 10.37 and, and then go, hey, are you still like, are you? No, I told you I could do X, Y, and Z and help you out and give you a ride or whatever from this time to this time. Now it's like, <laughs> I, in theory, yeah, but like, I, I what stupid idiots! Oh my god, I can't take it. Um, like just don't, you know, like not when it's just willy nilly. That's fine, but when it's like, hey, definitive things that need to get done. I will not be able to drive tomorrow. It's my car's getting fixed officially. Officially, like, what do you think that means, idiots? Sorry, but everyone's an idiot. Oh, here we go. Oh my god, thank you. Let's check this out. Joke. Chucky's great. Yeah, let's restart that because sorry. I'm this one. Oh my god, it's goosebumps! Uh -huh. There we go. <laughs> That's what I mean. Are we all are we all Chucky? <laughs> <laughs> that's the actual show that's not like a oh my god i love that i yeah that's what i mean chucky's gonna be old bitches and saying he doesn't want to be here i love that oh my god thank you so much for that oh my god okay i'm gonna maybe i'll start watching the chucky series which one okay what was the other ones i needed to watch <laughs> there was another show all of us are dead all of us are dead and um and then because i can rewatch stranger things that's yeah. all good but then I'm, I'm gonna start checking out chucky too because everybody speaks highly of it and when i hear somebody who's 35, somebody who's 50, somebody who's 12, and somebody who's like, like my cousin comes over, all say they like something, and, the, and oh, then, and yeah. then, that was the, my favorite part about working at board, it really was, I, I tell them that all the time, I'm like, that's the thing I miss, is I would have every color, every age, every everything, all in one area, and I'd be like, well, what, because the world is saying we're watching shit, but are we? So then yeah. I'd be like, and one of the, some of the best takes I've ever gotten have been from people in a smoking section at the factory. I just started watching. Oh, hey, Nicole! Fuck you. Did you? I was just talking about the phone calls that you gave me the phone numbers. Stop it. Dude, we can do stranger things. Dude, did you? Oh, my God. Now I'm stressed out because you're right. Did you, oh, my God. Do you see the thing? Were you here for this? Look what Josh gave me. It's fucking sick, dude. Dead <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Nicole. But no. Oh my god, what were we saying before Nicole interrupted? <laughs> before Nicole interrupted me. Um, oh, and then I'll tell you what my theory with this other thing is. Dead serious. <laughs> no, I Cardinals, man. Me and uh, Nicole and me are both psychic. I know people just say that all the time, but like her, Nicole's grandma was like, No, you have the gift. And I'm like, No, I have it too on my side. So it's like, no, I'm it's a thing. It's a thing, man. It really is. But uh wait, isn't it awesome? It's fucking sick. But um no, I'm going to have to watch Chucky. I'm going to have to watch the other one. I think you're right about the Stranger Things. But I'm like, oh, no, I think we're I think we're on the money. But I do. I think I – because I, I don't want them to go back in time, but I do. Because they're kids. And I'm like, I wouldn't like that. Yeah. I wouldn't mind it with this series. I really wouldn't. But here's – I'll tell you this. Like I was saying, I feel like we are giving all of these wonderful ideas away. <laughs> I feel like – and I, and I kind of didn't feel that way until – and I know it sounds crazy. And I'm sure you may have had this happen, too. Where like somebody gigantic steals your shit because you're oh, yeah. small and you're a small channel and you can't prove it. And the <laughs> only reason I know that it had, I know it happened. Somebody sent me a video about like a, a Harry Potter theory or something. It's like a year and a half ago, and I remember in my Harry Potter video, I was impressed with the sentence I came up with. I remember I was like, "Damn, Abby, like those are vocab words you you don't even use, and you <laughs> used them flawlessly." And I was like, "That was impressive," and it was verbatim oh, in yeah. a video. I was like. There's no way. I was like, that's weird. And then it happened again with another kind of grit where I was like, I can't prove that you, but I'm like, no, you did. And I was like, because you have to remember, I'm not thinking they're watching us. 
but I'm like some intern when you have 80 billion subscribers and you got 20 people working for you on a Friday is going, I really want to write this fucking shit. <laughs> what are the, what are these other, and what is somebody with one K supposed to do? Or like 100 at the time when I did is supposed to do nothing. Yeah. And it's like, but I knew that sentence. I was like, I was a good sentence. It was an impressive ass <laughs> sentence. And I know you fucking took it, but I feel like we're giving them all these ideas, but no, somebody told me to take this down. They were like, take it down because AMC is going to use it. And I'm like, good. Rick, we talked about this earlier. Rick Grimes. Rick Grimes cannot die by anybody else's hand but RJ's. That's true. So this is what we get. Because we would not accept it. That's our Caesar. Like I keep saying, yeah. we elected Rick Grimes. We are backing Rick Grimes. He can be insane. He can eat a throat. We don't want you to be a farmer, but we'll allow it at the prison. And we condone. All, we're backing him. The only way... We would support, because then I go, if they killed Rick ever in this series, how could he die? And I go, he doesn't deserve a peaceful death. Yeah. Has he given people peaceful deaths or lives? No. Whether or not we agree, he has not. <laughs> he has not. So I don't know if he deserves to die quietly in his bed. And I went, no. <laughs> the only way he dies is mano y mano with his son. Full tilt at each other. Oh, yeah. And then RJ's going to get him. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's going to hold his dad while he dies. And then Michonne's going to be watching from afar going like it had to happen like a samurai film. Like I say, and then oh, yeah. probably with her sword. And yeah. then he's going to be like, I know my seed and my bloodline <laughs> is strong enough now to enforce their will on the entire world and double the size of the Rick Grimes empire. I'm like, that is uh, the only way we would accept his death is if it's by <laughs> Judith or RJ. But I'm like, but Judith is Shane's and RJ is Rick Grimes Jr. Yeah. It's got to be, if they keep going, I'm like, it's got to be RJ. Did you watch Dead City? Oh, yeah. I, I called that Snake movie. Herschel off. Oh, yeah. RJ versus Herschel. I want somebody to gouge their eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel bad, but no, it, I, it's always like, somebody's like, take that down. They were like, AMC's going to take your idea. And I was like, should I want to leave it up then? Because all these <laughs> other people, I can't do nothing. I feel like I might be able to do something to AMC or they might pay me off. Oh, yeah. But it's... I'm like, I wouldn't hate that. I was like, I couldn't let Rick die any other way. I wouldn't oh, be yeah. Because that's why. Well, one, Jeffrey D. Morgan, and do, and everybody loving Negan is part of it. But the oh. other part is, you kept him there because the fans liked him. Oh, yeah. And you weren't going to let one kill the other. <laughs> you weren't. You weren't going to let one kill the other. You weren't. And so I'm just like, that we would allow to kill Rick, that we would be okay with on screen. We wouldn't. Yeah. So, and this is like Carol or something because she's sick of his shit. Have you seen Fear the Walking Dead? Not all the way through, but oh, Morgan. That's what I mean. Guess why? Guess why Rick don't fuck with Morgan? Oh, because Morgan and his son asserted dominance very quickly over Rick. Oh, <laughs> they yeah. were bashing him with a <laughs> shovel and were like, "Learn." And I think I have a theory. There's Morgan's the heart and soul of that pilot. Him and him talking about his wife and shit is like he's Rick. We're like, oh shit, this is scary and creepy. What the fuck? But we're but Morgan is the one like tugging at our heartstrings and shit. But Morgan was a psycho way before the apocalypse oh, he was yeah. a psychopath way and and rick knows it it's psycho sees psycho was but i got i got mark i know that he's got a daughter and they're in fear of the walking dead and yeah. what is he doing well here's the thing before i go on that one they can never kill morgan rick and morgan are one in the same oh yeah no they're identical they are they are very similar because see Here's the thing. Oh, I loved when Morgan would be like, they'd be like leading an entire group through the woods of like innocent people, like going to Alexandria, and he would turn around to somebody and be like, I'll slit your goddamn throat right here if you make one more noise. I know this conversation is being heard by everybody, but I will kill you in front of these innocent eyes the second you give me a reason. Morgan is crazier than Rick. Oh, yeah. So, Morgan in the episode called Claire, and people hate me because I remember this so. No, I love I, Clearly, yeah. no pun intended. <laughs> I love it. Morgan predicted what was going to happen. He said they were re they were wearing the dead's flesh, whispers. Oh fuck! He said they had pikes. Oh, they did that with their heads. Yeah. 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 Then he also said, "God damn it!" They had armor that would be Ezekiel or like oh no the Commonwealth. Yeah. Commonwealth. He said all this in one episode that predicted so much more. And made it clear. That's right. Now, here... Where are we at on the map? Like, we're not in Georgia, right? Not. Well... Where's in, Alexandria? Where are we at on the map? It's in Georgia. Okay, so where's Rick and Michonne at? 
they where's the Commonwealth headquarters there at? Not in Georgia. I don't it's know yeah, is. but I, I I'm curious. Did they ever say that? I don't think they did. If me and no. you both don't know, then yeah. they didn't. They didn't. Did say you it. watch uh, the ones who live? Yes. Yeah. So here's the thing. All right. So I, since you didn't watch all the Fear the Walking Dead, I thought honestly, I'll be real with you. I think that Denai Guerra and Andrew Lincoln need to be nominated for Emmys for that. Oh, yeah. I thought I was crazy, but when they were when when she don't say nothing to him at the Commonwealth, and he's like, I was like, Rick, you're being mean. And he's like, we have his broken. And I was like, Rick, you can break up. And Michonne, yeah. and I said that to mom. I go, Mom, I was like, I think they're about to break. And she goes, Michonne should be dumping him. She was like, I left my kids. I walked here, and now I'm in a Nazi compound. I'm dumping you. And I was like, no, that's actually a valid point. But I, when she didn't say nothing to him oh, and yeah. just looked at him, I was like, oh, oh. And then I realized, I think we kind of forget. Don't forget who you're fucking with. Michonne is is the shit. Michonne oh, is yeah. one of the. I think Michonne is one of the coolest, just coolest characters of all time in anything. Oh, then yeah. you go, are the samurai swords too much? And then you're like, no, they're not. Are the dreads too much? No, they're not. Her silhouette, everything. She's just fucking cool. And I was like, Rick, remember who you're fucking with? But that scene when they find when she finally goes, oh, I'm going in now. And she's like, you have a son. And she's like, what the? Fuck? And then when it's so simple as. Cause that's what love is, and that's what this. When they just go, I don't like who you are with them. Oh, Point yeah. blank, period. There's no convoluted shit. There's no nothing. It's like, I love that. But that scene, I went right when it ended. I was like, I'm getting emotional and shit. And then I turned to my mom, and my mom goes, I didn't breathe that entire time. <laughs> and I was like, Right. I go. That acting was out of this world, right? I was like, That acting was like. You know who wrote that episode? Who? The Nigeria. Shut the fuck up. Yep. She. she I saw they gave I saw they gave them executive producer credit, which she wrote that. Yep. Holy shit, that was really good. That was okay. No, she definitely needs to be nominated. They need to be. No, I I was like, I don't know if they'll let it, that show because then he takes horror seriously, yeah. and The Walking Dead got kind of wacky and shit. But I'm like, no. If you guys don't know how the Emmys work, you just submit two episodes. That way, everybody doesn't have to watch ten million seasons, and they, they judge off that with different categories. That should that should be in. That should oh, yeah. be that she at minimum should be nominated if not win. I, I that performance could go up against anything on HBO. Oh, Straight yeah. up, just go watch the clip if you didn't. Tell me that isn't some intense ass shit. It's Michonne and Rick going at it, and I love that too because I we're always waiting for Rick Grimes to snap. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. We push him into a corner. Rick snaps. We love it. We go Rick snap. Get crazy. Eat a throat. We fucking love that shit. Oh, yeah. But this time we realized no, he really was broken. And then I was like, do we like that? And then I go, no, we do because Michonne is the only person that he could be like that with. Uh, nobody else in this show would he break me not daryl not nobody he wouldn't be broken in front of them yeah michonne he will allow to build him back up rick don't need nobody but now he's going i will lean on michonne and i'm uh, like love this shit. fucking love this shit. and i really <laughs> liked the ones who live the titles a lot but i'm like no it ties into everything and yeah. everything like that but i'm like <sighs> only thing so here's my thing. Fear the Walking Dead ended in a manner to where you know some of those characters are going to end up on other shows. Oh, of course. That's Like I said, I was very impressed at the end of the, the full series. I was like, you could end it right here. It's very well done. I didn't think I'd give a shit about Rosita. And now I do. I, sure. Gabriel, I've been giving you shit. I apologize. And <laughs> I was like, damn, they could stop right here. But all this other stuff that I've already watched now, like Daryl and, and Dead City and everything, it works and i like it and i thought dead city was really i mean it was crazy but it was creative like the the, the zip the zip lining and shit oh, it yeah. was really creative and cool my favorite part of dead city was when they brought back the old Negan. not oh not. <laughs> that's when i go this is how i know i'd be a Negan because i'd be like i'm it's like bill the butcher like i'm gonna do it one time we're gonna make it real crazy but yeah when he's like I went, oh yeah that was that was <laughs> that was when we got negan back to be negan that was awesome and that's what i'm saying like say what you want about the walking dead in in the first pilot we have two of the most iconic scenes from tv history ever don't open dead inside and and rick riding a horse into atlanta oh yeah because you want know what we really fucking love cowboys <laughs> it's <laughs> our american shit we love that and i'm like just that it's great it's so good with the cars it's, it's iconic and then Negan coming out of the woods whistling with the baseball bat. Oh, yeah. That is iconic. If you don't know the, all of it, you know that shit though. You know it. You know you know what time it is at least. Like you, it's like I'm um, like if you saw it on a meme, you might not know it, but you'd be like, oh, this person is fucked. Oh yeah. And it's. Have you seen? My it? only thing is, I I would overheat in that leather jacket. I think we all I I get it for the comic book look, but I'm like, Atlanta. Oh yeah. Atlanta. <laughs> 
in a leather jacket, zipped up. No. Have you seen uh, the unedited and unrated version of when Negan first appeared? No. You should go on YouTube and watch it tonight. Oh, I would and then out. when you do, do you want to? If I, if you're not doing anything, do you want to react? I can send you a thing. We can react to it together, or like watch it together if you want to. Yeah. To you. I, or, or if you come back. So say, I did not mean to stay till 11 p.m. I've been holding his family hostage, but no, nice. yeah. I'm just uh, like no. When I'll, I mean, I'll look at it because that was rough. They said that like when Glenn died, which from Michigan in the show. Just saying. Uh, he is. What he say? He's like, I'm from Michigan. I'm a pizza man. <laughs> Glenn was great though. Glenn really was a ride or die. Oh, yeah. They said that they had that. That was the biggest fall off. Was when that happened. T Dog is unsanctimoniously killed. By the way. Oh yeah. Everybody's mean to Dale. I don't know why. Well. Literally the first time we meet, I don't know how, do you want to know how we, how, our, how did our minds work with this? Because I'm like, the first time we meet Daryl, I swear to God, in the first 15 seconds of meeting Daryl, he walks up. All we know is that his brother has been dropping N-bombs and we do not like him. And Rick has him hooked to a pipe. And we're like, we don't know Daryl yet. So we're assuming, and they do a really good job with this. Because if you guys want to know, that's how you make us really hate a character really quick. And they use the dialogue correctly. I was like, this could come off gratuitous and gross. There's uh, Sometimes it's like, do you guys just want to say the N-word? Because that's really kind of what it feels like it doesn't feel that way with that it's going we got two minutes how do we get across to the and like i said normally this would be psychotic yeah. rick pummels this man and not only that that's fine we have to stop the situation but then leaves him hooked to a pipe on a roof in atlanta to cook that is extreme and torturous to do to a human being and i'm like but we all went no fucking do that shit and you want to know why because in the first 30 seconds merle is dropping end bombs and and brutally beating T Dog, and Rick's like, no, not today. And so, as an audience, we go, fuck that guy, <laughs> get the shit out of him, Rick. Leave him, leave him with that pipe. And then he tries to talk to T Dog, and he's like, why would I do that? T Dog's got some great shit going on. But I'm like, no, they do a really good job with it, real quick. This had no budget, probably. No. They probably were like, we can only do three takes, so they <laughs> they just did it really smart. But all we know about Daryl is that's your brother, and we really didn't like him a minute ago. And he comes and anybody that will eat a squirrel, it's I don't I'm not fucking with them. <laughs> he comes walking out of the woods, slimy as hell, thing of squirrels around, and you're like, you eat squirrels, that's nuts. We've met your brother, are you like him? And then immediately gets in Dale's face, who did not say anything to him, and is like, Don't tell me nothing, old man. Blah blah blah. And he's screaming at him. And I'm like, oh my god, like, why are we doing this? And then 10 seconds later, he pulls out a crossbow and shoots something in the head from a million feet away. And we're like, that's what got us. We went, yep, I love that. (laughs) And even talking to Rick, Rick's like, oh yeah, your brother's like kind of saying to him without saying to him, like, are you gonna be a problem too? And Daryl immediately knows what his brother is. Like, not just racist, but just a piece of shit. And he's like, he says to him, Did you at least leave him the key? Like, I know you probably did have to do I know what my brother is. But did you at least like give him a way to get out? Like, <laughs> we don't have to go back. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, no, they did a, they did. I'm telling you, that beginning of The Walking Dead shocked me. I was oh, yeah. like, this was really good, except everybody hates Dale and is very mean to him. And all he's doing is looking out, except for one time, T Dog walks away behind an RV to smoke a cig. And as a smoker, <laughs> I know there are, a, I can probably start rolling them if I want to. There are a finite amount. <laughs> a fresh your brand sig out there and t-dog walks away from everybody and is behind the rv lighting up a sig and dale comes up and starts badgering him and i'm like i would hit you so hard dale i would be like you wait till this is done god could you imagine if everything was gone and i found the last like monster like oh. monster energy drink nicole i'm just saying imagine i almost i almost murdered so she did it on purpose. Okay. My friend's girlfriend was, she was mean. She was abusive and awful. And she was point blank period. And we were at Bonnaroo, hot ass Bonnaroo music festival. Yeah. Day three. Is that her? I like you. Oh my God. Thank you. We both got man. We both got Sam Jackson on. My brother got me this. It's my favorite. No. Yeah. I got it for Christmas. I love it. No. Oh my God. No. I was at Bonnaroo and this bitch, I woke up. It's a billion degrees. It's hot. She's been awful the entire time. It's my my good friend's girlfriend. And now this is the first time I'm having to deal with her. There's nowhere I can go. I'm in a campsite. I roll over. I bought, that was my thing. I said, I'll buy all the drinks and all the everything. My other buddy bought all the food. You guys brought the camping equipment. Fair. I spent $200 on drinks. I said, what do you drink in the morning, Ashley? She's like, Red Bull. I got her two cases, two enormous cases of Red Bull. <laughs> Everybody knows. Everybody's known my forever. Do not touch my monster. I roll over, I come out of my tent, and this bitch is taking a monster out of my case and cracking it and looking at me like this. 
she was asking for a fight, man. I was like, and I didn't do anything. I was like, okay, have a good morning. But I'm just like, if I found the last monster in the apocalypse, I could restrain at that point in my life. And I almost didn't want to. I wanted to slaughter that girl. I wanted to bash her. And I had 10 more right there, but I'm like, it was the principal. Oh, yeah. It was the principal if I got you the Red Bull and you're touching my monster and you're pissing me off. And I'm like, if it was the end of the world and I found one and I went and walked away to drink it and you came and were like, well, I think we should tell Carl to stop being whiny. I'd be like, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to murder you right here. I'd be so pissed. Shane points a gun at it, Dale, more than once. Andrew from Andrew's a psycho. <laughs> from the jump, she's like shoving Rick. She's like, What are you doing, asshole? And I'm like, and every time she thinks people are challenging her authority, and I'm like, I feel you, Andrea, but we need to take a chill pill here. Cause she's like, Why can't I go? And they're like, Because honestly, you won't fit. But did you want me to say like Glenn says something like, Did you want me to say that? I didn't want to be rude. And she's like, Why can't I go? He's like, Cause you won't fit. And I was like, Oh my god. Jonathan asks if that's one of your favorite movies. Oh yeah. No, I was just saying that Pulp Fiction was the first thing I watched that I went, I had already had an appreciation for film, but after watching it, I was probably like eleven or twelve and went, Okay, so how do these go together? How do these get how how do you put a film? And maybe it was like the time jumping in there. I don't know, but I was like. I want to look more into how, how do you make this? What do you do here? And like, like actual filmmaking. Uh, I love Pulp Fiction. I quote Pulp Fiction. I think a lot and people don't realize it. Um, I've been telling people that we should go as Pulp Fiction characters for Halloween because they'd be so easy. I'm like, Mia Wallace would be easy. I'm very worried about the oh, pro remake. Oh, if you want, because I have <laughs> to, I have to eventually let Josh go and get out of his home. But, uh, we are, believe me, we are very concerned. In the first 10 seconds of us talking on his channel a couple weeks ago before the trailer came out, we literally said everything we didn't want. And then in my reaction, I'm like, oh, yeah, no, Josh, look. And then we're like, I was like, shut the fuck up. Because it opened <laughs> with, and that's when I blacked out. Because we, you literally said, I don't want him in jail. I don't want him to be a criminal. I don't want, and I'm like, right, because that's not, and then I'm like, you, you can watch my reaction. I literally go, he's in jail. And then I'm like, <laughs> and after that, I promise you, I don't remember most of that. I was like, I don't remember saying that. I don't remember doing that. I don't remember any, I don't, I don't remember anything till the shotgun blast. And I think that brought me back. And I'm like, Oh my, believe me, we are not happy about the, the crow shit because I feel like, and honestly I do. I feel like they're like sacrificing Bill Skarsgård. Yeah. I feel like they're like, Hey, you take the heat for this. And it's like, <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. I also realized no Sarah sucks. I don't want this supernatural shit. And then they're going to go, well, we wanted to make it different. It's like, we didn't want it at all. <laughs> Nobody wanted it. But no, we need RJ to murder Rick in cold blood. <laughs> but no, yeah, Andrew's a psycho. You, re oh, yeah, you're, I know that Rick and her are together in the, in the comic. comic. Yeah. yeah. But I don't mind that change. I mean, yeah. I didn't read the comic all the way through, though. So, but I'm like, but I feel like comic book readers don't mind the Michonne Rick change. You know how the comic ends? No. <laughs> there's no Daryl, right? And there's no Carol. There's no Carol, Daryl, Merle. There's no Daryl, Carol, or Merle. And listen, those are great. That's that's another example of like great characters that didn't have to be there. I'm glad it got pushed to August. What are they gonna fix? What are you gonna fix from June to August? Not putting it out. Do you guys really think they'll do that? No, no and sure. then it'll become a novelty thing. They better not. Well, no, they they pushed it back to August because they don't want it going against any of these huge ass movies that are coming out. When is August. oh speaking of that, when is um Fantastic Four? That's gonna be oh, and Eddie Munson's gonna be in that. Yeah, I'm not sure when Fantastic Four is. I'm gonna. Uh, However, though, next weekend I will be going to see Abigail, that new vampire. I was gonna movie. ask you. I literally have it pulled up, like all the stuff, but um, oh, there's Inside Out two, but I'm trying to see like what demographic would clash. Oh, Bad Boys, Ride or Die. I'm just trying to see what would have clashed with the crow. Um, well, Bad Boys Ride or Die is actually predicted to be the best Bad Boys movie out of all of them. I'm going to stand by this statement I'm about to make, and people are going to say it's crazy. The year of the pandemic. The way the Oscars works, that's why we all movie people got mad at Steven Spielberg when he was talking shit about Roma. Because we were like, really, you're going to come at streaming? You're going to come at you're going to come at up and coming creator <laughs> Steven Spielberg, Mr. Jaws? Get fucked. Like, remember uh, where you came from. And then he recanted his statement. But he was like, movies have to be like out in theaters for a certain amount of time or a certain amount of place. What There's rules to the Oscars and shit, right? And they don't want it to just be uh, streaming services. So I'm like, I'm sorry, what was I just saying with that? Um, What was I saying about the Oscars with Steven Spielberg? Oh, that uh, he was talking about bad about other Yeah, people. but there was something about uh, something about the 
how film making works. <laughs> and I'm like an idiot because then I start thinking about Abigail. God damn it. Why do we do this, Josh? I'm so stupid. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I started thinking. I'm like, God damn it. Oh, no, you were saying you were interested in how they make movies, how they film movies and stuff. No, yeah, but it was like so a reason why things were in fucking theaters. Like there's a, a, a for amount of time had to be out and not just straight to the streaming. Oh, because you were saying that uh, Steven Spielberg was saying. Yeah, no, but there's a reason for that. I'm like, why, why, why am I saying that? We went, we, what were we just talking about, you guys? The I just Oscars don't know. Oscars need the movies to be out for a certain amount of time or something like that. No, it's something about prestige film and people giving a shit. Yeah. Oh, with the, uh, conflicting demographics. Yes. Um, I can't remember what I was saying, and I, and I was trying to. Oh my god. But then it would make it a novelty. Is that what I was going to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was worried about with The Crow. I'm like, or th- that they're going to try to do with this and go like, oh, now it's like, a... remember when The Devil Reje- Devil's Rejects came out? Oh. And you remember how it was like, don't go see this, don't let your kids see it. But then we want to go see it more. Well, the funny thing is, is when that movie came out, I was working at the drive-in in Dearborn, the Fort Wyoming, if anyone, you know. And uh, they had it in Theater 9 and in Theater 6, which were right next to each other. You had Devil's Rejects here. You had Toy Story right here. Fucking stop. No, that's it. But that's exactly why. Well, that's insane to do. But that's exactly why, like we were saying with the trailers earlier. Yeah. Like, that's why trailers are cut a certain way. Because it's like, you don't know if... I actually walked in the wrong theater, and I had my six-year-old with me, and now we're seeing some crazy shit. That's... No, they're normally edited down. Like, that's that's what happens. But, oh my God, I can't believe I... Oh, Mr. Up-and-coming movie director. That's why I'm like, what the fuck yeah. are you guys talking about? Like, why did I bring that up? I'm like... Things need to be out for a certain amount of time because of, and they're not taken seriously. Maybe they had to do that. God, I can. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm totally out of it. Me and Josh have been just going back and forth for hours. But um, but I do that all the time. We could do this all night. <laughs> yeah, right. For real though, I'm like, no, I could. But um, no, it's because then I start getting other thoughts coming in. Oh, then I was looking up movies. Oh, yeah, movies for you to talk about Abigail, too. Which I will be seeing next weekend. And then I was reading. That's what honestly, you guys don't know what threw me off is I started. Re- oh, bad boys. Yeah. That's what it was. I'll tell you guys. I stand by this. The year of the pandemic. So movies need to be out for a certain amount of time. And technically, if they wouldn't have changed the rules that year, the only movies that would have been up for Oscars are Sonic, <laughs> which honestly, great. And I'm really excited for the Knuckles show. Nicole loves Tales. That's hers. Knuckles. This is what I mean, too. When you're the youngest, you don't get any of the main shit. But it didn't matter because Knuckles is my dude. This is true. This is how my infatuation with the Predator started. <laughs> Because my mom was watching Predator 2. Yeah. And I assumed, because I was like, Knuckles is, my, Knuckles is my favorite video game character of all time. But I'm like, oh, I love this. Also probably because my sister said, yeah, no, 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 no. I get this one. <laughs> and I just learned to love it probably, but I always did. I saw the Predator and I was like, that's a live action of that. Mm-hmm. And in my little kid brain, I'm like, that's what it is. That's how I knew without seeing it. And we have to. After my dad died, I knew I had everybody wrapped around my finger. I'm like, can I have a Big Mac, though? They'd be like, your dad's dead. Sure, kid. We'll get you whatever the fuck you want. For a while, I was running shit. Shadow oh. is the name. So I'm, I'm I'm running shit. I can do whatever I want. And I'm like, hmm. I like that Predator Knuckles thing. I don't know it's the Predator. I think it's Knuckles. But I know I want to see more of it. And I asked my uncle to take me to Best Buy one day and buy it for me. And he did. I was like, and then he, and then it said pussy. And I was like, well, this has to stay upstairs and the mom doesn't know about it. Uh, we watch it on the PlayStation 2. Thing, or mom just doesn't need to know about this category like <laughs> that we have because we might get upset. Because normally mom was cool with stuff. It just couldn't be gratuitous or for no reason. That was always her rule. Like I've watched a God by the way. There wasn't a time in my life I didn't watch it. Watching Westerns and everything else forever. But uh, I, I think that Mike um, or Martin Lawrence in Bad Boys, whatever came out, because that would those would have been the only movies at the Oscars. I was like, what's going to be in best category? What's going to be best film category? <laughs> Sonic, Bad Boys for Life, or whatever, and like two other things that they came out. But then they changed up so that it would be okay. But I was like, God damn, Martin Lawrence really was pulling at my heart, man. When he's like, man, you got to like his acting in that was really good. I was like, oh my god, that was. I did not expect that in my Bad Boys movie that that I threw on for funsies after work and not pay attention to. And I'm like. <laughs> and he's cutting his beard from him when he's in a coma and shit. I was like, oh my God. And then I was just like, honestly, Martin Lawrence getting the Oscar for Bad Boys Forever or for whatever wouldn't have bugged me that year going oh, yeah. up against Sonic. I wouldn't have, it would not, and it would not have bothered me at all. And that's what I was, that's, that's coming out. And then there's a couple other things, but nothing huge. But I wanted to ask you about that. I was going to say, we got, um, uh, movies, and I want to ask you about that, Abigail. And 
it's, it's not a vampire, is it? Because what was really creepy is when I went to go see the remake of, when they redid it for America, the uh, let, let the Right One In. Martin Lawrence is, I think, is almost 60. Yeah, no, he's up there, and he does not get the acknowledgement he deserves either. Like, yeah. Martin didn't, and other things didn't, like the accolades. And I'm like, Martin's good. Oh, yeah. Like, he's good. He All really right. is. And so I'm like, give the man a shot. And I was like, I wouldn't be mad if he got this Oscar. You know, he got his start. <laughs> Where? House Party 2. Martin Lawrence? That, he played. With Sinbad. It all comes back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, it was house guest. Yeah. Oops, I fucked up. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that wasn't his start start. Right, right, right. That was like, that was when he First, start, like, yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Oh, no. But, so, Abby, I, I remember I, I watched the original one to the foreign one. Let the right one in? Yeah. Is, is which title is correct? I don't know. Uh, no, that's let the right is that one what in. it's called? Yeah. yeah. And there's the... I liked the concept of that because on the channel, if you guys have been here for a minute, that I use I use Farmer Rick. Don't don't Farmer Rick it because that just means <laughs> don't make the character boring. Oh, yeah. If they're a badass, you don't make them go sit around. And then we go, no, don't make them Farmer Rick. And I, somebody says they go, Abby, that's a familiar. And I go, no, undead keepers. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Oh yeah. The the person or the creature, the whatever that protects the vampire while it sleeps during the day. That's got to walk around. And I was like, that is a crazy kind because they would get older. And it's like, what if you didn't change them? You wouldn't have to get a new one, wouldn't you? And oh, I was yeah. like, oh shit. But and I really like that one a lot. But, or they think they're going to get in or something. But it's from Salem's Lot. And we found out they never say those words. Yeah. Me and my sisters and my mom watch that every year. And we call <laughs> that man the undead keeper. And there's another, he's another thespian actor that like decided to do Salem's Lot. And it was really good. <laughs> but uh, that's a term I use. And that's just what it means for, like, for anything though. Because uh, I was like, no, a familiar would be like an animal protector for a witch, stupid. <laughs> I'm like, an undead keeper. is <laughs> just some shit me and my family say, apparently. <laughs> but the, there's like certain terminology that I have to break down every once in a while on the channel. Because I'm like, oh, if I say Farmer Rick, that means don't make that character boring as shit. Oh, yeah. If I say undead keeper, I mean the thing or person protecting whatever while whatever's busy. And uh, can we can we say, can we acknowledge one of the best, we'll, we'll call him an undead keeper, the dude. Who protected Jerry Dandridge in Fright Night, the original? Yes. No. Uh, gay carpenter bo boyfriends hanging out? Yeah. No, I just rewatched <laughs> Fright Night. I, I watched it on TikTok with people, and everyone's like, what? And I'm like, there is no way this mom thinks this man is straight. There's no way. She's like, and I'm like, how come? I was like, but nobody's going to say it because it's the 80s. So we're not going to use that word. But he's like, I'm a live in carpenter. And it's like, uh huh. If somebody tells you they're a living carpenter, you're like, I'm sure they are. Just like how that's your uncle's friend that keeps coming over at every holiday. Like, yeah, I'm sure it is. He's great, though. Oh, yeah. He's great. Everything about Chris Sarandon. He's like, Mr. Steal Your Girl, if you do that, I'm going to come and bang your mom. Like, he insinuates that a lot. That is, that's one of the best depictions, like, of a vampire, because that's what I was trying to tell you. I'm like, they are, like, they've always been, like, sexual and everything like that, but it's, it's the attracting to come get my prey. Oh, yeah. And it's like the feeding is that. That's why I was fighting with you about an interview with a vampire. But I remember when I went to, I seen the original Let the Right One In. My, a kid who I used to babysit his dad was like, well, he liked movies and we like, watch this, it's pretty good. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But then I wanted to go see the new one with my friend Brad and, uh, and my buddy Jason. And we walk in and we miss the beginning starting. And we walk right in when it just said, and my name was rarely used in things. It's kind of becoming popular again, but it was a rarity. Oh, yeah. And literally right when we walk in, there's just right on the big screen, it says, like tell Abby I'm sorry and I just turned around and I was like should we leave I was like I think that's a bad sign like I don't think that's good for us to be like we're running late and now we're walking in and right on screen just tell Abby I'm sorry I'm like I don't know if I, I don't know if we should be here but I remember I really like that I should rewatch it because that is a crazy and then it's like befriending and then it's like it's creepy because it's oh, yeah. like it looks nice at the end and looks nice like they got with it but the truth is this is an undead murdering monster that's super old oh, and yeah. looks like a little girl mm -hmm. and now this little boy's like mm, i'm on the train with my box person my person in a box and it's like that's a that's creepy i really liked that one but that abigail what is that that's a vampire movie it's vampires again yeah. How, abigails are getting all the vampires okay 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 oh there's a movie somebody on tiktok told me to watch i have wrote down it's not imaginary but it's one word and i think it was only in certain theaters but i'll have to look into it but no yeah i didn't know yeah don't see imaginary i was gonna say i don't think that's it but somebody said and i have it wrote down at home but okay so what do we are you excited for joker 2 there ain't no way gladiator 2 is coming out in 2024 yeah it is it's been made for the last year and a half 
Betty is one of my favorite films of all time. Proximo is the best character in the whole thing. Or just so you guys know, that's the he's the best character. Proximo, the guy who trains him, he's the best one. He's the best one in the whole movie. That's another one. Oliver Reed just chilling and said, "Yeah, I'll come be in your movie for ten minutes," and then died during the production. Like just had a heart attack, like eating food or something. Like in the movie. Yeah. I'm like, what a boss. Yeah. Oliver Reed was the shit. But he is the best. I didn't say I knew him. I said he, I, t- I didn't say I knew him. I said he, t- he touched me on the shoulder once. It's my favorite line. Imaginary. No, it's definitely not imaginary. It's something <laughs> else. But it was like only in a few theaters. And somebody's like, no, you got to see it. It's a scary movie. It's one word. And that's why that keeps throwing me off. But we have. Are you excited for Joker 2? Uh, yes and no. Same. I right. think it's going to be really good. I think it's going to be great. I don't think people appreciate or understand even like how hard a musical is. I'm, I like Lady Gaga. I think I, I honestly, I'm glad if they are going to do it this way, you got someone who can actually sing. Yeah. My thing is, it's I heard a lot of its cover songs. The thing with musicals is, they move the plot forward, yeah. and not only that, like the two things you want from musicals, you want people leaving, looking it up, bumping it on their stereo, or humming it, walking out of the theater. Oh yeah. Or, or not or and. They that's what I mean. Like your choreography, and we're dancing and we're singing, and it's move but think of a Disney movie and it's moving the plot forward. We have actual things happening. It's not just going like we like the song and a <laughs> scene of us singing, you know. So I'm like, if they're all covers, they're all gonna have to like apply, right? I was saying this a long time ago when they said that. I go, that's weird. And then I go, wait, it's it's Harley Quinn and the Joker. They're gonna see it as this poppy singing in the rain shit. Mm-hmm. All of us, when they cut away, are gonna see it as what the f- fuck are they doing shit oh yeah if this whole thing takes place in arkham that's interesting to me though because i thought they'd be running around the town but now i'm like are they completely in their heads because that's well here's what's your concern because i remember we talked about this before yeah i'm saying along the lines of yes to no i think it's going to be good for the simple fact because it's going to give us a different look and how the joker's portrayed and i'm glad that we're getting people that you can tell give a shit about making film again yeah so i will say that okay dude if they do honestly they should i it's funny you say that because i was like what should i use for the background music for my link on on one of my stories (laughs) and i was like oh i'm one of my did like steve miller band i did (laughs) joker steve miller band and then i was like what the fuck am i doing i was like it's bad romance by lady gaga and then i was like they kind of need to use that, you know? I'm like, honestly, that I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd hate that. I was like, because it's kind of perfect. But okay, what's your biggest concern? My biggest concern is you're turning DC into a fun house. Ooh. Yeah. See what I did there? Oh, <laughs> yeah. just... No, seriously, though. Because if you look at it, I mean, it's like. I think that they are, they're on the right track, though, because what DC did and what Warner Brothers has done is go, we're going to be like how comics are. Yeah. And we're going to go, hey, new creator, you make this your way. Hey, other creator, you make it your way. And I can appreciate that oh, yeah. if we don't get too upset and crazy. Now, here's my thing, off of what Jonathan said. If you play bad romance, it has to be her transformation from being Harley Quinn to Harley Quinn. Ooh, I like that. I, and I was going to say, I don't mind if we skip her being a doctor. I don't mind if we see, I, I, I was glad in the Batman when I was like, I don't want to see Pearls. I don't want to see Martha. I don't want to see Crime Alley. I don't want to see us going to the theater. I don't, I don't, I don't skip that shit. We already fucking know. And when they were like, oh, ass meeting time, I was like, there we oh, go. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you've heard me talk about this, but I've talked about this extensively. The Penguin is my favorite Batman villain of all time. Yes. Everyone is iconic and everyone is great. Meredith Burgess is great. Uh, Danny DeVito is my favorite. I say that a lot and things that it doesn't matter, like uh, even have any kind of but if people say like oh, it could be worse your nose could be gushing blood <laughs> or like i'll say 10 chubby digits a lot and i'm like i don't know if anybody picks up on that but they're all great and i love them and then we got the colin Farrell penguin i was so excited i was like we finally get mob boss fucking penguin that is my most exciting thing i'm for all the series i'm so excited for that but after i got out of batman and they did the, the they released the joker scene and it's funny how youtube works because that was the first thing I ever did that got like a couple thousand reviews. And I was like, holy shit. And it always goes like this, where I will s- spend meticulous time doing some shit and it'll get four views. I get off work from the factory. I'm sweating my ass off and I'm like, oh, they dropped a Batman thing at an absurd time. Fuck it. I'll react to it <laughs> and throw it up looking like shit at six in the morning. And all of a sudden it, it was my best doing thing. And I'm like, I fucking hate the internet. I was like, I hate it so much. <laughs> but I was like, no, I'm glad they cut this. 
because it was too much added. It, it would have been too much, and we got to appreciate the movie for what it was. I need the rise of the penguin, right? Because he mm-hmm. take he's taking over Falcone. Joker gets out in Batman Two. This is what I want: the Batman Two. So we have Joker gang, penguin mob, fisticuffs, fight for Gotham, and now we have this new young Batman going. Yeah. How do I handle these motherfuckers? And it's more of him going. How do I wrangle? It? But we have mob boss penguin, Joker gang, and they're fighting for the control of Gotham now. And Batman's got to figure out of like, what the shit do I do? I'm new at this. And I, that's what I want. That's what I want the second one all to be is just like more of the Joker and the Penguin with organized crime shit and coming up. And, and, and we can, I, I don't know, but I feel like Matt Reeves knows what he's doing with that, with his universe for oh, sure. Yeah. But I get what you're saying with the, honestly, I don't know if I want to get there's here. You want a controversial take for the internet. <sighs> <laughs> The Snyder Cut is fine. It is horrible what happened with him having to not do what he wanted. But also, he didn't get to film everything he wanted. So all we're doing is playing Jenga with fucking scenes you didn't even make. So I'm like, it's still not your shit. Like, that's like me going, oh, okay, I got to go do whatever. And then you film a bunch of stuff for me. And then I just cut it different. That's not the Abby cut. That's the... Josh and Abby made it together and Abby re-edited it. Cut. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? If I give you all my footage on my tablet right now and you redo an, a review I've done, it's not the the Josh cut. It's the Josh re-edited it with with Abby's shit cut. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. And I'm like, but it's fine. I see what you were doing. It's fine. I could give a fuck less about that universe. I really don't. I think they've just beat it to death. I'm like, stop, stop, stop uh. it. Like, or, or I don't know. Like, I just don't have to have it. I like Ben Affleck. I like him as Batman. I love Henry Cavill as Superman. What a perfect person for it. I love Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. I love them all. I don't mind if we get more, but I'm just like, we're really going hard on it. And people are like, (laughs) gotta have the DC shit. But what's real smart, and you'll appreciate this, because when I talk to other people, they're like, oh, the fuck, baby. I'm like, the second they said James Gunn and other who's the other one is whatever i in charge i was like getting a director who's been on the ground this is like when you have a boss that's never done your job come up and go like hey let me tell you what you should be doing you're like have you ever done this ever in your fucking life oh no well then who the fuck are you but you got someone to tag team this who has been there with guardians of the galaxy with huge things with huge franchises i'm like he's logistically is that's very smart and i like james gunn but I, and I think they're making, but I don't know, Warner Brothers is pulling the plug for, not, you sneeze too loud, and they're like, move, show's done, Batgirl uh, gets made, Salem's Lot is finished, I don't give a fuck, so it's crazy what's happening there, but I get what, I get what you, so do you mean like DC as a whole with Warner Brothers, or do you mean like, or do you, do you think it's just getting too out of, do you think they're just leaning on it too hard? I think. And it's becoming too much. I think what they're doing, and this is going to be kind of an off the wall kind of way of saying things. No, I get, I can see what I think me and you are saying, like we can see down the road yeah. and right now we're like, yeah, we love the Joker, but. Suicide Squad, James Gunn. That one was good. That was the good one, right? Yeah. I liked that a lot. I did like that. And that had one of the best, not to get depressing, but that had one of the best scenes ever to explain like uh, domestic violence ever is when Harley Quinn starts going, but guys like they guys like that don't stop. They kill your dog. They do this. They do, and then they and then you don't call. And then they're doing this. And then you're stuck with. And then you just keep ending up with guys like that. And I'm like, no, that's exactly what it's like. And he's like, they. She's like, they don't go away. She's like, you try to leave and they drag you back. You try to leave and they kill your dogs. I'm like, oh my god, that's it. I was like, and it was great. And then and then she turns out she's like, okay, and then kills that guy. And she's like, that's. I was like, you just went from this like emotional ass like realistic thing to, and I love Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. She's great. And Peacemaker. Oh, Peacemaker was good too. Um, John Cena has been great, but I'm not saying that it, they've had some good stuff. They've had some oh, they jams. Have. They need what the problem was. They were rushing to try and race with Marvel, and they weren't allowing people to find their footing and find who is good for that. It, I'll say this: The Witcher sucks. The Witcher is not a good show. I don't know what the shit anybody is talking about. Henry Cavill is cool. The Witcher is cool. I played the games. I know all about it. I'm not saying it's shit, but I'm like, who is this for? And what is going on? Yeah. This is all I'm going to say is we got that head splitting choreography. That was sick. That was one of the coolest fight scenes I've ever seen. I heard there's going to be a season two. Oh, there is. They're going to keep going with that. That's their bread and butter right now. Warner Brothers is going under. 
their yeah. DC is their lifeline. That's why I'm like, there could, I get what you're saying, where I feel like we could start spinning out of control here. Oh, yeah. But um, what was I just talking about? The Witcher 2. And- oh, The Witcher. It's awful. Uh, and I'm like, I'm like, this isn't, it's not awful. It has great music. It felt like a video game where it needed to. But I found out that after that choreography with the head splitting, they fired them. Yeah. They got that shit out of them, and then we're like, "Get out!" And I'm like, "The now I now I know why." But I like the Xena Warrior Princess vibe. I liked that it was all like there's a lot of practical going on. I really there was really the music oh, yeah. great. I, I listened to that score a lot, and the bard shit is great. Toss a coin to your Witcher is great. But I was like, "Who the shit is this for?" I was like, "Is it for men?" Because you keep showing me titties and these girls at this school, but it's kind of getting weird. And I don't know what's going on here. But then I'm like, but then you're like, look at these women in power. But then I was like, that's not how it works. Because <laughs> I was like, do you want to know what happens when women try to go, I'll rule with an iron fist? They go, yeah, fuck that even more. And I was like, I like having these badass women. But you need to look at shows like Vikings and other things that have handled it correctly. Because I appreciate what you're doing. Oh, yeah. But I think you're trying way too hard. But I was like, once you guys find your footing with this show, I think it could be out of this world. And they didn't. Instead, they just kept going like, "Churn it out, churn it out, churn it out." Henry Cavill's gone. Now we got Liam Hemsworth coming in or some shit, yeah. and it's it's just off. But I was like, "It's not bad. It's entertaining. <coughs> I liked it." But I was like, "Who and what is going on here?" I was like, "Sometimes it's really great, but then I'm like, what is?" And then oh, the time jumping. Mm. Now we're jumping in time, but we're not establishing things. True. And now I'm like, "Why should I care about this girl screeching?" I'm like, "We could have." And but I get what you're doing. I'm like, I see the Mandalorian. Uh, thing we love here of the odd couple, special sidekick, big badass, yeah. but we need to get to that shit. And I don't care about your girlfriend oh, and yeah. I don't care about you fighting in the street and you should have been cracking skulls open for this whole movie. <laughs> but to fire those people, I'm like, no, I think what you guys did was you got the first like pilot and shit out so you could cut a trailer and then yeah. you fired everybody. Those CWDC shows. Some people stand by those. I know people that stand by the Flash. They do. They mm. stand by the Flash, but... Here's my thing. The DC shows, to me, fall short, and this is going to be controversial as hell, fall short in every aspect of DC. Hold up, it is 2024. Sorry. I, I yeah. heard what you said, but I just realized that. So you're telling me Gladiator 2 is coming out this year? Yeah. This is a problem. Never mind. Let's focus on <laughs> one thing at a time. We cannot focus on Gladiator 2 right now because that's ridiculous. No, but yeah, um, all the CW shows have fallen short on in every aspect. I feel like they... they I feel like they aren't listening. People said that on one of my posts. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm sure Disney's going to see this. And I was like, actually, have you ever heard the internet get mad and then people react? Are you t- <laughs> like, go look up the original Sonic design and see what happened there. It can have an effect if we all say it, you know. But I'm like, I know every Flash fan I know loved that show. And I'm like, internet, you're all saying it. Is everything okay? Yeah. Oh, my God. I got scared. CW. What the fuck are you doing then? Then, then no, you're fine. Then get them. No, it, I, it's fine with me. I was worried that we had to go murder, but uh, I'm like, I was like, what the fuck's happening? Uh, but uh, but I'm just like, why are you can still keep it CWE? Yeah. But why are we giving it the correct respect then? If it's making the making the m- money, Supergirl. See, he, all right. That was a big huge. Well, that Flash movie was awful, but that Kara was kind of a bitch. I was like, I don't know, whatever. But then I'm like, Superman's such a sweetie. Is that supposed to be the juxtaposition of them? But I'm like, if that's you coming here in an alternate universe, like, shouldn't they be kind of like Clark Kent and not a bitch? That's another one. Who wrote yeah. this female character? Because we're going, we can only rule with physicality. And it's like, she can still be stoic. This is what they do with women, you guys. You can't be, you are a lesbian off rip if you can normally beat ass, like, or like gay or bi. They do that a lot, which I don't mind, but it happens a lot (laughs) where it's like they're very butch or they're masculine presenting. You very rarely, that's why we love things like Sailor Moon. They go, we can put on a dress, but we can also dress like a guy and kick the shit out of you if we want. Like there's facets. And with that, well, the Flash movie was awful, but specifically that Kara, I was like, who wrote you? Because somebody tried to go, and they tried, and I can appreciate it. They went, let's make a badass lady. That's awesome. I'm not saying every lady needs to put on a dress or, or do some shit or talk nice and go, oh, yeah. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is it's giving off mad vibes of <laughs> I'm not one, and I'm just going to write it from this point of, like, don't doesn't everybody just want to see a badass kicking ass? And it's like, no, they can also be complex. They don't just need to want to beat the shit out of people physically and, and be mean and scout – because I do appreciate that too. Like, I don't need to always smile at you because I'm uh, a lady, you know? Like, 
I don't all, but I'm like, you're trying too hard to do that. Where I'm like, if you eased up a little bit, I would have appreciated it more. But that whole movie. Did you know they didn't let Michael Keaton read the whole script until after he signed a contract? This all makes sense now. Because see, here's what happened. No, this all makes sense now. Because I was like, how did you get this man on set? Well, they originally. What do you think they showed him to get him there? All they showed him was that Batman, how they introduced him in the movie, that's as far as he got to read. I was going to say, did, was it like an order? Did they go, oh, read this fight scene? And you went, oh, okay, cool. And didn't know. I didn't mind the introduction, kind of. Yeah. But anyway, keep going. I, that makes so much fucking sense. But Michael Keaton said that he did not like the fact that... Right. They, there's, they're an LGBT character? No, oh, which yeah. is fine. That's fine. But 99.9% .9 of the time, if a lady becomes or is a badass, they're going to go... I like women too. And it's like, we're not all gay. <laughs> we're not all gay. Like it's, it's okay. Like I don't mind it. And kind of what irks me is that female uh, gender fluidity is more acceptable. We go, if I go, Oh yeah, I had a girlfriend in college. Not for me. Everybody goes, dude says they touched a dick one time. We all lose our <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, I'm just saying like, I'm not, I, whatever. That's a nitpick though. I mean, we've come very far and that's why I was like, she's not terrible. But I was like, it just seems like a little boy went, Ladies don't always have to smile at us, but I'm like, no, I appreciate that. But it's like, now we're going to make her scowl the whole time. And it's like, it doesn't mean that we're just angry the whole time. <laughs> then it's like, she can kick my ass. Okay, but that doesn't mean they just want to destroy the whole time. Superman doesn't. Batman doesn't. So it's like, remember to apply that over here. Or maybe maybe just go, hey, lady in my life, how do you feel about situations? Can you help me with this character? But I'm just like, but I didn't hate it because I knew they tried. But anyway. Continue, yeah. Josh. But yeah, they uh, so they got Michael Keaton to sign the contract, and then they finally let him read the whole script. And because he finally signed the contract, he this couldn't back out sense. of it. So after the movie was filmed, after the movie came out, he went on record and said that had he read the whole script, he would have had not his name on it at all. Who would have? That was here's where I I, I really did one. I've been going J. Jonah Jameson on Ezra Miller for like since before my YouTube channel. What was it when he pushed the fan to the ground? Because yeah. I was like, is it? But I'm like, we're convention people. We know like maybe it just was something weird. We don't know if somebody got the camera angle right. We don't know. And I was like, it could have just been some a weird accent that looks bad. It could. True. But I was like, either way, it's getting weird. And then people kept complaining about him. And then they were like, he's got a weird compound. And I'm like, what is happening? And then they're like, the cops are getting called 19 times. And I'm like, most people if that happened would be losing their jobs and shit. Like, oh, yeah. and I'm like, what is going on with this man? And he was, he's crazy. He's, a, he's, I think he's a real psychopath for real. Oh, yeah. I, he's really out, out, out of control. I think, I think that man is going to do something postal one day and it's scary, but he, he kind of reminds you of Shia LaBeouf after Transformers. Yeah, a little bit. But I think that Shia li really was going through stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not saying, like, I don't know. Maybe he is, but I'm just like, I feel like Shia was a helpable. Does that make sense? Oh, well, yeah. I feel like Shia could go to therapy and we'd be okay. I feel like Ezra Miller, no, there's something really wrong. He's gone. Yeah, there's something very wrong with him. But, yeah. but anyway, um, <laughs> that makes, I didn't know that they didn't let him read. Because that's why I was like, when all that shit started happening. I felt bad because I had a fan. I had friends who were like super Flash fans. People fought for that since like 2016 to be made, and it's finally. I was trying to tell people that I was like, it's not like this thing is just doing promotion, dude. Disturbia is good and underrated, but I was like, it's not like oh, this, yeah. this thing isn't like because people were like, oh yeah, recast him. I was like, I don't think you guys are understanding. <laughs> this is done. This movie is made. Like, oh yeah. And then I, it, this is where I was like, what? And because I was really trying to give it a fair shake, because I was like, I don't like Ezra Miller. He's being a psychopath. But Michael Keaton's here. And like I always say, we'll support Michael Keaton. We will. We will support him no matter what. So I'm like, when they open the movie with him running past a stop sign or some shit, or like Metropolis, is that where he lives? Yeah. That's and like, I like his mom, who's played by Carrie Ann Moss. Can we stop bringing moms into the DC? I'm sorry. <laughs> like, we're getting crazy with the mom stuff. We are really getting crazy with the mom stuff. I mean, I get it. My mom's a big deal, too. A mom is a great motivator. But I'm like, I feel like we've made these characters so god tier already that there's it's that there's nothing left for him to give a fuck about. So we're just going to mom, which is fair. But yeah. I I'm like, we went to god tier real quick, uh -huh. and when that happens, you gotta have a villain that is also be able to take that on. I don't know, but when we when we opened up the Flash movie, and it he ran by, and we panned down. 
and I saw a street sign or a metropolis sign or some shit. I was like, why does this CGI look so bad? Oh, Are yeah. you fucking with me? Because I said that about the trailer, and people were like, you don't know. And I was like, I can tell when CGI looks wonky as shit, and this <laughs> looks wonky as shit. And, but it's not finished, so we'll wait. And then I'm like, you have Michael Keaton coming back as Batman. Mm-hmm. This is a major thing that's been being made for six years. I, I'll forgive if, like, a fight isn't totally perfect or something. I shouldn't forgive that because it's, it's this isn't... This isn't us. <laughs> you know, this is this <laughs> fucking a huge thing with a huge IP. It's not something. It's not like if the, that movie, The Creator, like I'm just using that as a thing. Like if that looked a little off, we'd forgive it a bit because we go, oh, it's an original thing. It might not have got the same amount of time. It might not, There's more wiggle room. Right. I'm not saying anything about that movie. I'm just using it. Uh, but The Flash is The Flash. Yeah. And you have fucking Michael goddamn Keaton in it. And what? You wasted him. And you wasted him. That's the most atrocious part. But I'm like, why does this look like shit? I was like, why does this look so bad? The one thing that was cool in there, I'll give it credit where credit is due. I like Batman and Robin. I do. And when uh, George Clooney got out of the car at the end, I was like, oh, George Clooney! He's a great Bruce Wayne, too. Like, Michael Keaton's the best. But I think this Bruce Wayne, George Clooney, like, literally is him. So it's like... I think he does make a good Bruce Wayne. It's just that that movie was nuts. And McDonald's was mad at Tim Burton. <laughs> That's a fact. Just so you guys know, the reason we didn't get the third Tim Burton is because uh, they made the second one with Danny DeVito too, like, sexual with leather and crazy, crazy shit. <laughs> and McDonald's was like, we can't give these toys to kids. <laughs> That's crazy. Speaking of Tyrion Moss, I also <sighs> like her and Jessica Jones. Okay. Who? Okay. I remember really liking the first season of Jessica Jones mm-hmm. and then really not liking the second one or not, not liking it, that it was too long. It was like really drawn out. It, it, there's, her mom shows up, right? Yeah. I think uh, I really I, loved Luke Cage. Here's my problem with those. Oh, shows. we have issues here. Yes. Okay. I would have never made Iron Fist. Oh, no. Why can't you be a superhero and get your ass kicked every single fight? How are you going to be a superhero and wear fucking flip-flops? I'm sorry, man. Like, I say that about Final Fantasy X, too. I'm like, it's my favorite game of all time, but you're wearing flip-flops. You're getting your ass beat. Anybody wearing flip-flops? <laughs> <laughs> Play uh, Kingdom Hearts. Every character that can beat your ass is not wearing flip-flops on that beach. Like, oh, I'm yeah. just saying, God, they have appropriate footwear on. <laughs> and then, uh, I think... They really did have Iron Fist show up in some gaucho pants and some flip-flops. Like, who's... <laughs> Oh, yeah. I think uh, Jessica Jones should have only been one season. Yeah. I think Luke Cage. They're really milking that. Yeah. Here's my thing with Luke Cage. That was a hit or a miss. It was good. I liked him, though. Like, season one was really good. Yeah. No, I love the guy playing him. I love all that. That was oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Season two? Yeah. I could have gone without season two, but I get it. Yeah. Uh, I should rewatch it. Daredevil. Can I talk about Catholic guilt personified? I mean, literally, he's like in it all the time, but it's like dressing with the devil. And I'm like, oh my god, we're going to Catholic church and we're a boxer and we're talking to priests. I'm like, oh my god, I love this. I liked it, but it got crazy, didn't it? Yes. Did an Electra show up? And we lived yes. through the Electra and Daredevil days. Yeah. I think Brad told me he saw it like seven times at the Dollar Show, and he was like, I don't know why. And I'm like, because <laughs> we, I don't know, like and we had that. I was so, working at the AMC Star Friendly when it came out. Uh, so, Daredevil. But if we're saying something's getting crazy, we really mean it. That's what I mean, too, like when we were talking about Kazam and shit. I'm like, do you know what we lived through with our media? Oh, yeah. We know crazy. We will tolerate crazy all day. But once we start going, like, dumb crazy, then we're like, this is dumb crazy. Like, oh, yeah. this is not good. But I, but see, didn't they fight in the, in like, under the, but see, Kingpin is my favorite villain for Marvel. I have a theme here of like Penguin, Kingpin. <laughs> I realized that, but I love Kingpin. He's awesome. But I, and that was great. Everything they were doing there, but I'm like, we're jumping. What him was, we jumped too quick into shit. Where we're like, that's my favorite part of the MCU. And then I really will let Josh stop dealing with me. Um, <laughs> and, and I mean, I'm, oh my God. Well, hold on. Oh yeah. Tell me about Iron Fist getting his ass beat. Well, no, no, no. I want to say that, uh, not a lot of people have, know this, but uh, Abby is an award-winning. Oh my God! She 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 has won an award for media dig, digital media creator of the year for 2023. I don't. I really don't. Like, I like bragging about myself, but I don't. It's like, oh, so thank you should. You're a like, good person. 
Oh, thank you. No. That was the NC-17 Awards. I know I'm just a small show, but still. No, I made a TikTok about it, and, my, and then my TikTok got banned. Or, <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, I should make another one. And then I was like, I feel stupid. And then I was like, I look like a jackass. It wasn't <laughs> you. It was me. I was like, this is, honestly, like, I'm so appreciative of that, like, for real. Like, because, like, it, it, when people that do what you do are like, we like your shit. It's like. Really? Because I don't know what I'm doing, and I like I really appreciate. It. I mean, I and I really. Oh, I no, I know people that enjoyed it, but no, but I really, I don't you know that means a lot to me. I the only time I I, I will you can ask anybody. Like I have no problem going. Like I love myself. Like <laughs> I think I'm the shit, but I'm like when it comes to this stuff and everything, I I, I it's not even sounding like a douche. I'll gladly be like I want a fucking award, but I'm like it's. I don't know. It's it's I, I it's the only time I'm like I don't know what to do. I feel like Ricky Bobby, and then I that rarely happens, and I'm I really don't know what to say because I'm like just grateful. I'm like that's it's really kind of you to even acknowledge other people at all, and we're gonna hype Josh up for that. Josh pr- promotes, shares, likes anybody else, and it's like I try to do that too, and I and I see that, but you go above and beyond. And you do, you go above and beyond to go, let's work together. Let's do this together. Let's just hang out. Let's do awards. Like that speaks volumes. And I want to give you credit for that because I'm like, I can barely keep my shit together. And you're like, let's think of others and actually acknowledge them for the things they do. And it's like, that's awesome. That's really, and it's special. And thank you for, thank you for being like that. Thank you for being you. And thank you for ever talking to me or doing stuff with me or letting me in your home. I really appreciate it. But I'm like, that. That and the Joe Dante shit, but I'm like, you know, I, went, I thought the, the paper was over there, but I'm like, that really did mean so much to me, where I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. So thank you for that. I really right. do, because then it makes me go, okay, we can do this. We can all do this. If, if I can do this and people can go, we like your shit, Abby, we can all do this. Just so you guys know, like, you can all do what you want to do. Just try really hard. I mean, maybe not everything, but you can at least attempt, because I just like talking about movies. Yeah. And I think we're pretty smart, right? <laughs> thank hey. you so much for real. Oh, you're welcome. No, thank you. Uh, thank you for having but yeah, me. But no, yeah, but no, yeah, stuff. that's the other part too, where I'm like, no, I want to hit people on. I feel like I sound like a dick or something. And I'm like, I, tr- but you saw it today. I'm like, I don't know. I, everything I do is like rigged. And then I'm like, it gets me by, but I'm learning. I'm getting better. So it's cool. But oh. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, but Iron Fist, do you want to finish with Iron Fist getting his ass beat? Yeah. Iron oh, F- go follow Josh first and also do that. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, Iron Fist, I, I don't see how he could be a superhero and get his ass kicked all the time. But then again, I also He really think, does, though. Yeah. But uh, the Daredevil show was good. Yeah, they, they, draw, they, they drew them all out. The only one I will stand by to a T, and it is not because of the character. It's because who plays the character because he plays it perfect. Punisher? Punisher. Hell yeah. No, that's what I was saying the other day. I go, <laughs> John Bernthal's an asshole, but he's great as a Punisher. One of, I, I, I'll stand by this. One of the best trailers of all time. When they released the trailer for The Punisher and they started playing One by Metallica, which is my jammy anyway. It, <laughs> but I'm like, if you know what One by Metallica, I remember somebody came over one day, like they had to write like a basic ass college paper and they're like, what do I write it on? I have to do it on something that means whatever. And I go, what do you want? War Pigs or One by Metallica? And I was like, those are the easiest ones to go with. And they were like, what do you mean? And I was like, we can do War Pigs about war propaganda or we can do, <laughs> it's like we can do One by Metallica, which is about being a veteran and then the world not giving a shit about you. True. And to use that for the Punisher is super perfect. But uh, then they did this. I was like, holy shit. So it's Metallica, right? It's the Punisher. And they start doing all of the beats for one with gunfire. Okay. And I was like, oh shit. This is <laughs> this is the shit. This is the coolest trailer I've ever seen. That's awesome. And it was so cool. And I loved the Punisher. They did that and handling being a veteran and all, very well. I was like, damn. But I was like, yeah, no, John Bernthal could be a prick, I think. I think that guy's probably a prick. He's great. He's uh, You can't deny somebody's work, though. You can't. He's he's perfect. Let's look at this for a, se- for a second real quick. Two of the best things that have been TV shows have both played Metallica songs. Punisher with one, Stranger Things oh, with Master of And Puppets. Netflix. Yeah, Netflix. Yes. Does Netflix have a deal with them? Uh, I don't know, but I will tell you this much. If you're playing Metallica on your show, 
I'm watching it, and I'm like, oh. I'm telling you right now that if you do Metallica at all, we're involved. But I'm like, but I think Metallica's not like they're not dicks. Like Led Zeppelin is kind of dicks. But yeah, I think no. that's also because a bunch of people probably own their shit still, you know. But Metallica's like, that's the thing. You're gonna drop Metallica in a scene or anything. It has to be on par or better than, which oh, yeah. normally you can't be Metallica. Like you're lucky that you're not. It's, I'm not, you know, because it's movies and TV, so you can have that wiggle room. But here, there are certain things you don't do. I never saw the Punisher, but what got me interested is when I saw. Yeah, the, yeah, John yeah. Bernthal. Yeah, Shane. And let can I just say this? Shane's a snake in the grass. Oh yeah, from the jump. And I'm like, how come we? Because I remember being like, oh, but I kind of like Shane, but then. I do feel like sometimes there does need to all, I don't know why I felt like this before, honestly, now that I'm saying it out loud, because I'm like, there needs to be someone there that acts a little crazy and just does it. But I was like, wait, Rick's here. But maybe in the beginning when the, that's because remember, he's like, when he goes running up to that barn, it's like, fuck you, Herschel. He just starts <laughs> ripping it open and shooting loggers. It's kind of great. And because it's funny a little bit, but also it needed to be done. But it, it, it's funny. But it's great because it's like, no, someone needed to do this. Mm -hmm. Good job, Shane. Thank you. Who cares? Because Rick's kind of playing the political game in the beginning where it's like, I want you guys to like me. Oh, yeah. Shane's like, I don't give a fuck. Rick's back. I'm losing it. My girlfriend doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> I wanted to be Carl's dad immediately, which is weird because it's not like you met them later on. You knew them before. You're really trying to be this guy's dad. Strange. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> he's a real <laughs> dick. Like, he's really, like, actively, like. Because I always, I always kind of got the impression that it was like him and Lori kind of was like a, like a trauma thing, like a trauma bond. But then I'm like, no, in the first scene, Rick is telling you all about his marriage issues. Mm -hmm. You knew there was a problem mm -hmm. and you were like, end of the world, perfect timing. And then I, that's another thing the ending did real well. Judith being in the hospital with people to protect her oh, when yeah. Rick was alone. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, they did that so good. And I was going to say, Daryl does the, the door block, but then he stops and he's like, no, we're not going to leave each other. And I'm like, right. We left Rick in, in episode one. We're not leaving each other this time. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know what's happening anymore. But I did like that. But uh, yeah, no, Shane is, a, but I like Shane. But I re watching it recently, I'm like, how did I have some of the takes I had? <laughs> I was like, I really was like, not, I don't know if I was watching that. I don't know if any of us, I think we were all hypnotized by rick grimes yeah something happened to all of us when the rick when when, when the rick grimes came out when the walking <laughs> dead came out because well let's look at it like this too though imagine... yes daryl scream in that old man's face that you want to murder <laughs> <laughs> imagine shane being alive when they introduced negan oh he wouldn't have made it he wouldn't have made it through that i think him and negan would have seen that they are one and the same and I think that would have broke Shane. I think Shane would wanted to wa would want to be everything Negan is. Shane doesn't have the the charisma of of falsehood to put on, or the personality performer of yeah. Negan. I don't think. I think Shane's very like he is like Negan. But I think that yeah, that would have been good. That would have been good. Now I thought that Rick stabbed him. I thought oh, yeah. he shot him. He stabs him viciously, and then he lies. Shane puts that's what Shane puts his gun down. This is when we knew this is. That's what I mean. And we were like, good choice, Rick. Love this guy. <laughs> Fucking love this guy. Trick your best friend. Put, everybody put your guns down. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Uh, Banging your wife is, I mean, it's bad, but Jesus. It's like, okay. And then Carl yeah. had to put down the walker, Shane. Yeah. That was, I, I, man, I really do see where it got us. Because I were, it, it really, it's really well done. Like, oh, damn. Here's a shocker, though. In the comic book, it was vice versa. Shane oh, sta uh, Carl stabbed Shane. Shane became a zombie. Rick shot Shane. Because I was going to say, I know that the Carl Negan stuff. I know all about that and yeah. hiding in the truck and going. Yeah, I, I know that Carl's still there. Like, I and that's I. There were people on my Instagram that were like, "No, I quit watching after that because I was that pissed about that." I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and I was like, "I didn't know that. I knew that. I knew stuff he did. I didn't know it had gone as far as it did." But I'm like, "Yeah." But let's let's talk about. <sighs> I love The Walking Dead. It is past Hall of Fame. 
It is, really? It is past legendary. It is in its own league. Someone said that's not on the top 10 most popular shows of all time, and I'm like, that's impossible. And they need to stop smoking them. Yeah, that's impossible. <laughs> yeah, that's impossible, right? Oh, yeah. It's huge. Like, now the only, there was only three episodes that really pissed me off. Okay. The first one, when Shane opened the barn, Walkers came out, I knew. That Sophia was going to be in there. Yeah, we really spent a lot of time walking around in the goddamn woods. Yes. I got that, too. I get it. I'm like, we get. We have to introduce everybody. We got to have some type of conflict. But this is, we all know it. Oh, yeah. And my thing is. is or, like, or we at least know Sophia ain't coming back. Right. So when she came walking out, the first thing that popped in my head was like, they should have said, first off, who the fuck don't have a picture of their kid? So Carol should have had a picture of her kid okay. and showed Herschel. Not if you dipped out all fast, maybe not. Carl and Lori took their pictures. Good point. But that is something Morgan says about his wife. He goes, I was running for for supplies. She was running, she was running for the photo albums. That should tell you what kind of people that what kind of different people we are. And I was like, oh my god, Morgan. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. But my thing is Ari could have or, or nobody could like do a sketch. Like right. or something, or just even describe what she was wearing. Oh, good point. Herschel's a real, uh, a real stick in the mud. Hers too. Herschel's really <laughs> like, don't touch my fucking bar. Oh, yeah. I'm so, gonna go get drunk at the bar. Like, <laughs> don't threaten me. You know, Carl even getting shot was rough, and that little kid Chandler Riggs was acting his ass off, and that that was rough. Actually, when I met Chandler Riggs. Oh, that was that he was that kid was because I was like, oh my god, this is making me uncomfortable, and it should. A kid just got shot, and it's, but I'm like, damn man, but I forgot how intense that was, and how oh, like yeah. that guy that even shoots him is immediately like, I'm so sorry, like I got you, and I was like, oh yeah, we got to get to the barn. I'm like, oh, it's a oh, thing. Yeah. But what did he say? So when I met Chandler Riggs, I was asking him. We had about a 15 minute conversation actually. Oh. <laughs> but I asked him. I was like, so what was your favorite scene to film? What was your hardest scene to film? Ooh. And he said his favorite Good scene question. in the film was sitting on the house eating the pudding. Oh, Because he said he got to eat all the free pudding he wanted. I was like, okay, that, cool. Yeah, but also, like, I get to sit there and hang out all right. day. That, that's what I mean. Like, when you when I watched that pilot, I, I thought that for a split second, I'm like, yeah. How, and that's what, how long was Andrew Lincoln, Rick Grimes, how long was he walking around in this? And then they really do, like. <laughs> he like really go close in on his face and they're going in and out. And I was like, how long were you just spinning around <laughs> in a hospital gown? Probably for two days. Like imagine that's what you got to do when you go to work. You're like, can't wait to do this again today. <laughs> like, or like something that's what, what, like mud. That's uh, another one. Or like when people are in prosthetics, like that's why those things are a big deal. Cause it's like, or like Lord of the Rings. You're oh just God. walking through mountains oh, Lord of the for Rings, yeah. hours and hours and hours. And it's just like, <laughs> We didn't get it. Go back. Walk back again. It's like that's and some of that stuff is like grueling to do over and over, I bet. And so it's just like if you get a day where me and Denai get to sit on a roof and chill and <laughs> Andrew's gonna run around, cool. Cause uh, yeah. remember remember when we had the Negan episode? We probably had to sit on our knees for hours doing a bunch of takes. On our knees all day for hours. Jesus, that would even be bad. Like, let's uh, go. How about how long do you guys want to go in the woods and sit on our knees for? Like, I could not last an. Uh, I could not last twenty minutes. Oh yeah. Well, no, actually, uh, my knees are bad. <laughs> so he said the hardest scene he had to film was the barn scene where Sophia came out because him and Sophia were the only two little kids. Yeah. So he was like, all right, so now he said not only on a show, but now he's literally yeah. the only young person there. And I was like, I can see how that can go. Yeah, or like, I know my friend's not going to be at work tomorrow. Yeah. That sucks. Like, that sucks. Oh, yeah. But, oh, uh, that's a sweet thing to say. That makes me uh, go like, he's probably a sweet guy. Like, oh, yeah. And like a good kid. Like, oh, yeah. that's nice. But he said. Uh, Bad haircuts on the show. Sweet kid. Oh, yeah. He said that. uh one of his favorite lines throughout the whole movie, I not movie throughout the whole show is when he told Negan, "We're still gonna kill you." That was, I mean, <laughs> that was, I mean, it's great. Negan's great. Negan and Carl with him was great. I just, oh yeah, 
Carl pissed me off too many times. But then I'm just like, I, am I am I judging this kid too hard? And then, like I said, I don't think I was remembering things correctly because the second watch through, I wasn't as irritated. Did you guys know the whole Negan scene when Negan killed Glenn? Is it totally different? He read them. Is it totally different? Actually, it is different because... Or is it the same, like, concept? Uh, well, his his death was pretty much the same death. but like, The they, way he dies is yeah. the same, but is it the same place? Same... Uh, kind of. Okay. But uh, what You can make, tell me. It's okay. Yeah, but what makes it real different is he also killed Abraham. Yeah. Because in the comic, Abraham gets shot in that... Imagine remember? being that guy, though. It's like, we, we like you, Abe, but everybody's like... God damn it, Glenn's gone. <laughs> like at first we're like <laughs> nobody's going like and Abe. We're all going like Glass. but oh, yeah. no, keep going. Well in a comic Oh, so in the comic it's just Glenn. Just Glenn. Oh, that makes it harder. Yeah. They shouldn't because did they do Abe first in the show? Uh yeah. Because that was the fake out then. That was the okay. But was, that would have been more that's more serious, like storytelling wise is just this one just this one we've been with from the the reason rick grimes is here like yeah oh shit so, but i get why the show would do it too to fake out you oh, guys yeah. yeah well so abraham in a comic he's the one who gets shot in the head through the eye with the arrow <gasps> that denise got oh shit okay yeah no me and my friend were me and my friend timmy were like going back and forth so much about that no but uh because i was like no i was like the gay doctor. And he was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, the gay doctor dating the one chick. And he was like, who? And I was like, the gay doctor. I just kept yelling it over and over again. He goes, oh, the nurse chick. Yeah, she's dead. <laughs> the arrow. And I was like, oh, yeah, the arrow. And I was like, yeah, it took me 20 minutes of just me yelling the gay doctor over and over again. I'm like, <laughs> I had no other description. So I was like, she's got glasses. Like, okay, so Abe took the arrow. Yep. As a matter of fact, a lot of the death scene death scenes that were in the show were different than what was in the comic. Like Ooh. the whole Pike lineup. Oh, Rosita was in the Pike. Damn. Lineup. So was Ezekiel. What? Yep. No. Yeah. How bad do you think his dread smell in the apocalypse? Terrible. I don't think Michonne's are the same. His are like fucking. Have you oh, seen yeah. those? And then he starts putting peacock feathers in. I love it, Ezekiel. <laughs> I'm dramatic too. I love it. I'm here for it. It's the apocalypse. But I was like, all I can think when he's wearing those, and then even the actor, I'm like, I bet you those are heavy as shit. They uh, look heavy as hell. Like, yeah, he, uh, when I met him, he, uh, I met maybe 45% of the cast. Oh my God. Yeah. Who's nicest? Actually, they were all pretty nice. That's awesome. Well, I think they were thrown into like, like Game of Thrones was a slow burn. Sopranos, you can say the ending, but. I really can't think of something besides like back when like I Love Lucy or something was overnight yeah. that big as The Walking Dead was. I'm talking right. uh, people had like bloody fake footprints on their kitchen floors in the middle of June. Like, and yeah. it was, uh, it was huge. It was huge. Well, and I'm like, the it Walking still is. The Walking Dead spanned its own convention. Walking yeah. Walking yeah. And, and it was the first thing to do that. And I think this is kind of cheap to all you shows. And just so everybody knows, like, I hate, I, it's the breakdowns after series. Oh yeah. Cause I'm like, I can't, I don't watch those. I don't watch other people's reviews and shit until I do mine because I don't want other people to, to taint my opinion. And even if it's the creator, I'm like, then let me be wrong. Cause I took it a different way. Yeah. And maybe you're, maybe you're dumb and you d thought you were saying one thing and you weren't, <laughs> but I'm also going all these podcasts and shit. Like, and I, I liked with the talking dead was the one that started it, and I don't hate on it for that. It was. I think they were smart for doing it, but now I'm just like, they just don't want people watching us. Like, they just want the money and the click and the view. Fuck them. I was like, you assholes. I was like, let's have something, because I was like, these are paid employees. Oh, yeah. But I feel like Chris Hardwick was a genuine, they they did the right thing there. They got a genuine, like, fan of that shit. Like, of oh, course, yeah. he couldn't do certain things, but it's like, you could tell he was genuinely excited to see guests. And then oh, who yeah. is the black actress who's always on there with him? Oh. You know what I'm talking about? The she was on, yeah, she was on community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, you could tell she, once they realized she came out as a guest and was like, no, I love this shit. They were like, oh, no, she's coming back all the time. She's going to be a recurring thing. The uh, AMC is smart about that. But I'm like, these other ones where they're like, this is the companion podcast after this episode. I'm like, <laughs> eat my ass. And how about let people go click on my video? That would be really cool. And, my, and then it's like, because then they just go, oh, well, you watched the thing of how it's made. And it's like, yeah. no. Have it come out like a day later. Don't do it like right after because that's what they're doing. They're going, yeah. don't go listen to people. And I'm just like, oh, whatever, man. But 
yeah, who, who, was there anybody that was like top tier, just really a nice outgoing person to everybody? Or because th- that's what I mean. Like, if it's that popular overnight, you must be told. Like, it's it'd be like joining Marvel. Yeah. Be like, listen, this is how things are. But it's like I feel like The Walking Dead's a little different. It's a tie between Chandler Riggs oh. and Cooper Andrews, who plays Jerry. Oh my God! Of course it is. Yeah. You know, well, Ross Marcon too. Who's that? He played Aaron. Oh my God! Oh yeah, Aaron really was bringing it home in the end too. Uh, I really liked him. Well, yeah. When I met him, it was funny because I was like, "I bet I could get you to break character," because he was like. Because when, when you meet him, he gives you a choice. You can get an autograph, you yeah. can get an autograph and a picture, or you can get an autograph and a picture, and he'll do a video. Oh. So I did all three. Oh, my God. That's really, that's sweet of him. Oh, yeah. So I told him, I was like, Because yeah. that's a lot. That's a lot if you're, like, meeting a ton. Yeah. That's oh, why I was saying to you earlier, like, if you really just don't want to fuck with people, don't do this shit. Like, then oh, yeah. it's okay. I can respect that. But that's <laughs> awesome. What's funny is, is I told him I bet I can make you break character because he does a lot of imitations. Yeah, this, I mean, that's how he got the Marvel gig, yeah. Uh, so he was doing Christopher Walken, and I was like, we were just talking and stuff, and he, you know, he's doing his Christopher Walken thing. He goes, is there anyone out there you want to say hello to in uh, TV land? I was like, yeah, to my wife. Oh, God, you guys are the sweetest. She happens to, she was there at the convention with me, but uh-huh. she was over meeting uh, Homelander. Oh, okay, okay. So he goes in Christopher Walken voice. He goes, Lauren, why ain't you here? You know, I was like, she's over me and the boys. He's like, oh, I guess that's a good reason. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, oh my god, that is funny. That. Yeah. Oh my god, you guys are the best. You guys are adorable. Yeah. No, but that and like it's just like I said, it's nice to know who you support is a decent human being, and it's like uh, I'm not saying everybody has to be. That's their job. Like they don't all have to be like. I'm really personable, like, or, or, or want to deal with the public, but it's like, if you go to a goddamn convention <laughs> and somebody's paying to see you or stands in a, like I said, if anybody stood in a goddamn line to come say hi to me, I'd be going, holy shit, man. Like, but uh, yeah, maybe I am having a bad day or something and I'm not as, maybe I'm tired. Maybe I haven't had my monster yet. I don't fucking know. And it just came off the wrong way. But it's like, if you're straight up telling people like, no, well, you're actually going to actually have a chance for that to happen because I was talking to Lisa earlier and we plan on having some events happen. I am down for events. And at some of these events, people are going to be able to walk up and get autographs from some of the people that we are. Oh, wait, you think you want to talk to me? Oh, I know like four or five people from my work. Will be oh, my God. <laughs> That's, I'm flattered, but I'm like, oh, do you want to like have an event? event? Like, oh, we'll talk about that. But I'm like, Jesus. Okay, I thought you meant, like, let's go to events. Oh, no, we'll be doing that, too. I thought you meant, like, let's go to events. I'm like, I'm down for events. Let's go. And then I was like, oh, wait, you're talking about me? I'm like, I was like, oh, no, I'm fucking down. No, that'd be awesome. I'd love to do more panels and stuff. That'd be, I think people need to realize, like, hey, if we all don't all start banding together and looking out for each other. Yeah. Nobody else is going to. Like, oh, yeah. that, the music industry that, like, when I watch my friends do that shit, I'm like, I, I mean, like, I get it, but I don't. I'm like, you guys are, like, vicious to each other. Where I'm like, I... It, even podcasting people can be that way and I, oh, yeah. it, they totally can, but it's like, how far do you think you're going to get? Like r- for real, like it's, with the internet thing where it's like, you gotta like, you gotta have, you, you, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm just like, we'll see. what are you going to do? If, like all of us are like, fuck off. Everybody who runs into you is like, okay, well now nobody will work with you. Nobody will collab with you. Like, what do you I'm just be nice? <laughs> Yeah. And it's free to share each other's shit, but like that's what I mean. Anybody trying to use the internet to do things, but we specifically do the internet. Oh yeah. When you do music, I'm not. That's doing music and using the internet. Yeah. We are literally <laughs> doing. We need the internet, and so it's like. As a matter of fact, this is your first live. Oh yeah, this is my first like live through YouTube. Yeah. And we are three hours and forty. Oh my god, we're in. done here. Okay, so <laughs> go follow Josh at the NC Seventeen podcast. We're gonna have some announcements. I need to go home. I'm like, I need to get my car in tomorrow morning. That's what I had to do tomorrow. I was like, there's something I have to do, but it's gonna be done. Um, we need Sinbad to come back. Uh, go watch Kazam. What was the other ones? Uh, oh yeah, Stranger Things. I think we're right. I think you're right. I think we're in a combination of. But you're right about the deaths. Yeah. I will say this. They or or Nancy's gonna be going down and Steve's gonna jump in the way. I can't start going again. I can't yeah. something though, but you're right. You're right about that. <laughs> you are, you are, you're right. I will say this that <sighs> NC seventeen, which is my show, we it's tagged in the title. We have 
big things coming up. And with joint ventures later on with Motor City Nerds. That'd be awesome. We uh we will be doing some things, especially around October, every every day for the entire month of October. Oh we are reviewing a different horror movie. Oh my god, that is awesome. But we're staying away from Halloween, the we're, series. We're avoiding like the entire Halloween franchise. Yes, because that is so cliche. Oh yeah. And we are also I like to know what like we'll talk about this in detail. Don't tell me now, and you guys can have your answers ready. Like everybody has like the Halloween like it's like Christmas. What what are the Halloween movies you have to watch that season? Like me and my family sit down and watch Salem's Lot every year together, whether we just uh, have it on the background or not. Did you guys know? Yeah, okay. Wrapping it up. Yeah, NC seventeen. Oh, yes. this could be a twenty four hour. Shit, have you seen my Snapchats? <laughs> this is all I do is just yell at screens all day. I I love it. I last month and then me and Josh man. Now it's a problem. Last month or the month before that, I mean you did. Four or something like in a five row. Five episodes back to back, and each one was an hour. So yeah, I um, felt bad. That's why I was like, "No, me and Josh will just go." And I'm just like, <laughs> and I love it. And that's why I was like, "I need to get out of their home." I'm so sorry, but no, yeah, I'll uh, just go. That's my thing too. Sukhas. Oh, I appreciate. No, that's the thing. Like that's how I made two of my best friends at Ford. I was like, I talk a shit ton. You guys don't talk at all. It's perfect. It works. <laughs> you smoke the same cigarettes as me, and you drive the same way home in case my car breaks down. We're all going to be friends. And then they all been be, that was the first day I met them. I literally said, I didn't even know them at all. I was like, you guys don't talk at all. I talk a shit ton. It's going to be a match made in heaven. It's all going to be good. But then we both love our shit. It's like, <laughs> but no. Yeah. And I, and I love it, but one day we'll make this more cohesive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause we didn't even plan anything today. No. We truly, we didn't plan one thing today. I'm sure we'd be like, when we have bigger things that are coming up, yeah. People will see where we really shine and why we're being so lackadaisical now. Oh yeah. I feel like that's I feel like we're on the same wavelength of that where we're like we're gonna get serious. Oh yeah. But as of right now, we're just being like, I love that shit too. Yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah. Uh stranger thing. Yeah, don't we can't get going on that again, but I think you are right. And I'm like, the only thing that really makes me think the time bag is the clocks. And I'm like, ah yeah. oh, shit. And that can bring everybody back. But no, yeah. hold on a second. One second. Oh, I'm sorry, what were you saying? No, no, no. What if stranger things ends like this? Now that you've brought Max into the picture and she's brain dead, uh huh. What if somehow Eleven finds a way to get into Max's mind? I thought that's what she was gonna do and like pull her up. That, but as she's doing that, she also sees Billy brings him back, and then she. But realizes, how does he have a body now? I think I thought this was like a, a philosophical thing. Like she literally is going into her mind and like getting her, like bring her mind back online. Yeah, like a Westworld host, and uh, but then I'm like Billy. I get what you're saying. But I'm like, oh, but like herself could be like in the upside down is what you're saying. I'm picking up. I thought we were saying like Eleven was standing by her bedside. Yeah, no, no. We're no. saying like in the upside down we find yeah. her. Got it. Now, got it. Here's my thing. The only way, and then I'll let you go. No, you're fine. The only way I can see them bringing everybody back and doing a fresh restart is for Eleven and Vecna to destroy each other. But in her last remaining thing that she does wait she gets it all back well no the final thing will be like her wiggling a penny or some shit <laughs> like you know wait <laughs> doesn't that happen in something what is, it, is it not inception what's that happening that was no that was inception is it or yeah. what what do you have there's a movie or tv a big thing that ends with them like looking at it and just wiggles a little bit and then it oh uh, that is was, it magneto no it's yes, not me. is it magneto? magneto yes he was sitting in the park in, uh, and then it wiggles yeah yeah, yeah it's a chessboard it's a chessboard <laughs> And I was like, I could see it in my head. I'm like, I could see something wiggling outside on the table. But um, I have a catch up. I'm I'm gonna rewatch it now. Nicole's watching it. We're talking about. It. I'm gonna rewatch it now. But uh, I actually rewatched uh, all four seasons last. Week. It's a gem. It's such yeah. a gem. It really is. It really is great. It deserves the acknowledgement it gets. But okay, I think that. <laughs> then I'm really going. I think that you're. I okay. Now that you're saying that she's in a physical place and they're going to bring her out, you could get Billy. You're absolutely right. My thing is this. I'm totally forgetting that in the timeline, Vecna, would he be... He wouldn't be working at the hospital when she got out. He would have been gone right before that, right? Yeah. No. That's what I'm saying. Do we have a weird... She's the reason he became Vecna. Oh, yeah. So... Do we have to go back and make it so she doesn't make him Vecna? 
I don't know. Ooh. I'm done. I'm done giving Netflix ideas. Here we go. Here I we go. She goes back. He's in his human form. But instead of sending him into the upside down, she kills him another way. I just had a totally other one now. Because I'm like, <laughs> here we fucking go, guys. Because I was like, what if she can't time travel, but she can send her shit back somehow? Ooh, here's... And she could go back to her younger self and fuck that guy up or not fuck him up. Here's an even better one. What if because what if Netflix gave us a job? <laughs> That'd be really great. Netflix, just throw us money. You don't have to hire us, but don't take our shit. What if she was able to go into the mind of Brenner, who is dead, but go into the mind of younger Brenner? That's what I'm saying. If we're if we're sending our mind back, yeah, we can do a lot of shit. And so you're saying into the doctor, into Coke can crushing doctor. Right. Before he started doing all these experiments, therefore they stopping the whole thing. Yes. <gasps> That would be interesting. See, because then we're getting real crazy with that shit. But I like that. And then, and then we pan down and we see our boys on their bikes, and nobody's no, no, gonna no, get no. hurt. Then we pan down and we see the boys playing D and D. Seriously, that would. Seriously. But I'm like, I'm, I keep thinking they're gonna show the bike, they're the the road because. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, not just because that, because of um, like that's where we'll get snatched, right? Yeah. Now I'm sorry, but I had this playing in my head. Like, if we do see them on their bikes on the road. Every time we take a shot? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Every time you see a kid on a bike? The only song I see playing is Carry On My Wayward Son. Oh, hell no. They're going to bring in Should I Stay or Should I Go Now? That's yeah. got to come back, right? But no, that would be great. That would be – because they do need to move at the time period. But yeah. when those when those final credits hit, you better hit us with the, with the class, right? Well, ooh, think of this. What if they went a different way and they started playing On the Road Again? I could be there for that. I could be there, but I'm like, we're going to be sad, right? I don't know. I don't know. But no, okay. Here's what I'm going to ask you what we should do. When I went to high school, for some reason, like we were the, like the burnouts <laughs> and then the comic book people. And then there were the ones who were like the artsy ones that could like actually make like art. And then the magic, the gathering ones. We were all separate nerds. We were all separate <laughs> nerd communities. It was like, we, but I got invited like three different times to go play D&D as like a villain. I made a character and everything. Every time I showed up, they were like, oh, we don't need you. I've <laughs> never gotten to play in a campaign before, ever. Uh, I think we should get Hellfire Club shirts and do a D&D thing on, on, online if you wanted to. And somebody can... I already got a Hellfire t uh, Club t-shirt. I'm down to get one. I think that'd be fun to do. And we can eat uh, funny pizzas and <laughs> eat black ice cream and we'll do it online. And I would love to. No, yeah, but nobody wanted me in their D and D groups, and I was like, I I asked people later on because now we're all friends because my friend he was showing me his Magic the Gathering setup, and they do it every Saturday. They're doing it right now. What's up, Magic the Gathering crew? The funniest <laughs> thing is one of them hangs out with uh, one of them that comes is my friend's older brother. Now the one I hang out with is a lunatic, but in a good way. But just you know, when you I don't know how to just there's Kramer from Seinfeld mixed with like. I don't even know what. I don't know how to explain Joey, but his brother's like really well put together, and I always forget he exists. Like he's just really quiet and nice, and like old. And I'm in the my. It was so funny because he showed me all their setups of their game shit. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. I go, who's is this? And they were like, Mike. I'm like, Mike, and tells me, and I go, I just turn around. I was like, oh yeah, you hang out with the other one. What's that like? And he was like, I don't know, normal. And I was like, it's not. Let's put it this way. One time I got a phone call of like, hey, Ed, what are you doing? I was like, I'm at work. What's up, Joey? Do you know how to sew? I'm like, I don't know how many times I have to tell you, boys, I can't cut hair. I don't know how to sew. <laughs> like, I just because we don't have man parts does not mean we automatically have these skills. Why? And he was like, and I was like, like a button? You didn't even do like a button? And he's like, no, like skin. And I'm like, whatever the fuck it is, we have like six <laughs> friends in nursing school. Please don't tell me what it is unless you have to. And go to a hospital if you need to. You're going to get fucking gangrene. But don't let one of the other boys do it. I was like, because... All four, I didn't have to sew him up. Thank God. I think he ended up like, he fell off a butt. It wasn't, he just didn't want to go to the hospital. He like, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. They could have been lying, but I'm like, what the shit? And that's Joey. So, and then his brother's like, and I was like, what is that like hanging out with Mike? Cause I got this one over here that I got to <laughs> sew up and shit. And then you got normal magic, the gathering player. But I asked them, I was like, why didn't you guys let us play? And you're, why didn't we, do you guys, do you guys have those nerds? There's always a level of nerd where it's like, only you can read the killing joke and i was like oh okay well <laughs> since you own it and you run everything and 
you have a large camera hanging around your neck. Apparently nobody else can do that or like those things, you <laughs> jerk. Like the mean ones. And then, like I said, the Magic the other ones were cool. They were just reserved. And then there was us. But I was like, I feel like they just called us burnouts. I'm like, why couldn't we hang out? I was like, I think we were all at the Dark Knight premiere. Like, I don't, why weren't we, I don't know, it was weird, but I, I, I told him that I go, no, it really did, like, break my heart when I got finally invited to do, like, because I never got into WoW, because I knew it would take over my life, mm-hmm. and I found out as a hunter, I couldn't have several animals as pets, and that upset me, Um, but I knew I'd get obsessed with it, but d and I really wanted to, like, secretly get into, but I didn't know who to ask, and then I was like, <laughs> I showed up, like, with my board, and or, like, my my game, I was like, did I do my character, did I make my character right, and then I'm like, they're like, oh, we did, ended up not needing you, I'm like, okay and like <laughs> but i'm like oh it's okay and it was but i was like i want to have in mom not i don't think my mom knows what dnd is because she's like i kind of want to do it and i'm like if you want to do it let's do it but i don't know how so but i'm just like i'm totally down to do that if you guys want to during stranger things i'll ask them because we could always do it online too if we had to right like yeah. virtually yeah it's it's funny because when i was in school i went completely different op- uh, opposite way i was on the football team yeah you know stuff like that and then i after school i don't know what i was i'll be honest uh, well it was funny i was on the football team but i didn't hang out with the football team yeah you know no we had this that's the thing like we got the the stragglers of the jocks that like didn't want to binge drink but would do other shit like we wanted like they all of a sudden they'd be like don't like kind of like don't tell anybody we were here but we were here it's like oh okay i actually uh i have played D &D quite a few times yeah and uh, I think the longest campaign we've had was two years and one month. That's amazing. That's what I mean. That's just fun. Like, oh yeah, we used to play board games every Sunday. I don't know why we got well. Everybody stopped hanging out and having kids and shit too. But <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, that was fun. I really love doing that. But I'm like competitive. So I'm. But I'm like, once people re- once you get to know them, and you realize like, oh, this person yelling and being excited is not like being a dick like they're just having a good time like then it's fun once you realize that when i'm like oh fuck this they're not like actually mad it's a good time like but oh i'll, I'll bring a couple like you guys have played the game sorry before right oh yeah there, there's a game called jokers and pegs and you got to make it you can look it up online it's, it's sorry for adults but you play with like two decks of cards and you have to make the board and i have huh. one of them my friend made them and it's just like it's like i said it's sorry but for adulting but you have a partner like oh. yeah so then it's like I mean, you got to knock them back and then you got to go. But it's the same concept, same exact shit, except like Kings mean 12 or switch spots or some shit like that. I can't remember what it is, but I'm like, I can't remember where my friend found it. But yeah, once again, I swear to God, man, our ideas are right. There's no way. We we nailed the crow. Yes. I'm worried about Steve. It's going to happen. But thank you guys for being here and hanging out. We can do like just hangouts. I'm like, once we figure out what we're doing, this is what, this is what you got to do. I'm like. She just saw Nicole when I'm like, you want to go on live? Nicole has no desire to do social media. That's why every time I go to, I'm like, say bye, Nicole. And then I was like, don't follow her on shit. <laughs> and I'm like, I just made her do this. I'm like, God damn it. But I'm just like, she'll get the bug. The funniest thing ever was when I was like, don't worry, nobody watches. <laughs> Literally, nobody watches. <clears throat> don't, I said, don't feel bad when nobody's watching. It's okay. <laughs> and then we signed on and then she turned to tag him and it was like 105 people. <laughs> 206 people and i was like they'll go away i was like they're just scrolling they're gonna go and then it, they some of them went but it was like i was like can she see that number i was like because i'm fucking freaking out over here and i can't freak out because then she's gonna freak out and be like why is Abby freaking out and i was like oh shit there's people in here and i was like god damn it and i was like no and i was like nicole has a real job I was like i can't let her do nothing bad. i was so ready to pull the plug not even that it's not that i'm afraid because i don't hang out with fucking pieces of shit but it's not that i'm worried they're gonna say something bad it's that i'm like I know how the internet is and someone somewhere might take something out of context, even if you don't mean it that way. I've said things backwards where I'm like, Oh shit, that was not the correct. I said things just mixed up. And it's like that was not same thing earlier. It just happened to us where I'm like, shouldn't have said those words together on, <laughs> on verbally. Cause now it's just not correct. But yeah, no, I'm going to get out of this man's house. Thank you guys for being here. I have to catch up. We're going to watch stranger things. God, thank you for all that. I can't, I let me get out of your house. We're coming back. And like I said, we have big Josh, thank you for involving me with this stuff too ahead of time. That way I have I that way I have evidence of it. But there's big things coming. So what? It'll probably be like willy-nilly having fun till July-ish, we'll say. Yeah, well, Not July... willy-nilly, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, July is gonna be the, the kickoff because we're gonna start doing things, you know, once Motor City Nightmares happens and and that's a 
Plug yep. For Motor City, Motor City Nightmares. Nightmares. And this in Novi, right? Or Livonia, that uh, area? Novi. I was going to say, okay, yeah. cool. Motor City Nightmares. Yeah, once that happens. And me and Josh will figure out what we're going to do, like, weekly or whatever on whose channel doing what. <laughs> well, I know me and Lisa will be doing NC-17 uh, live. her book? Oh, her book's right over here. Oh, Lisa, go over to his uh, channel, and we were on his, and Lisa, his co-host, has this just in? Yeah, it's a book about the end of the world, and this chick's like, oh, no, I've read a billion books on it, and I know everything, and then they're like, shit, it's happening, help us. She's like, I, I just read it, I don't know shit, and I'm like, oh, my God, I love that, so I'm going to read it, too, I'm going to pick some up, but <laughs> make sure you go check out uh, this just in, Motor City Nightmares Convention, NC-17 Podcast, in the title. And yeah, we'll figure out a more, I, I, cause it's me. That's the chaotic one. And then I'm like, Oh, and then Josh has facts and, and things to tell me. Oh shit. I love that. Do you know how great that is where I'm like, what's the actor's name? Oh, I don't have to stop and, and do it. You know? Okay. Oh, and by the way, they're connected to seven other things that we talked about. Yeah. Love that shit. Cause, <laughs> cause I'm a psychopath. Oh, speaking of one more thing. Oh, no, we're things. Good. Sarah Connor herself. Linda Don't Hamilton talk. is in the next season. She's going to be a bad guy. I don't know, but she actually contemplated retiring until she read the script for season for the next season. Linda Hamilton is everything. And she said that her words, not mine, she said that this shit is the best shit she's read since Terminator 2. Stop it. That's what she said. That's a, that's a statement. That is a big and, statement. And for somebody like her to say that, because other people say shit like that all the time, but they're like actively doing a ton of things. And they're like, oh, it's as good as the thing I did. And it's like, okay, she is, hasn't done a ton. So it's like for her to be like, she don't need to do it, but it's like, yeah, I'll come do this. And then it's that to say that. Oh, yeah. That's huge. But we'll end it on there. Okay. And when is that coming? Uh, just, next year. Is it next year? Oh, yep. oh man, like. Well, they might surprise us and bring it out this year, but they just started. Netflix filming. has been doing that. Oh yeah. Well, I know production continued, or something, but that could mean anything. That could mean we had a business meeting. So it's True. like it's like you trying to tell people, and they're like, "The John Snow show is not happening. It was canceled." I was like, "It was never happening." Like just because we we could okay, we work at HBO. Do you want to be really cool if we had a show about um making kites in a factory? <laughs> it does not mean that it's going to happen, but it's like. They said they're gonna make a show about uh the kites being made in a factory. It's like, yeah, we set in the we were having coffee walking in, like that doesn't mean oh, yeah. it's gonna happen. Like it like and I was just like, I knew that wasn't gonna happen. It was dumb anyway. Uh I don't need to know everything, Netflix. I just need a day. It's gonna be uh that was bait and switch. What they did is they baited everybody with the prom with the hope of a Jon Snow show just yeah. to get them to watch. Well, here's House what well, I'll be real with you guys. John has nothing to fucking do. Arya does. So I was yeah. like, you're going to title it Jon Snow so everybody goes, I'm going to watch for him. It's going to be her show. She's She's got to... You don't just run away from assassins. Remember in Batman Begins when the League of Shadows shows back up? Oh, yeah. These faces men are going to show back up, but we won't get into that now. Uh, apparently, they started filming on January 8th. Oh. This, this But you were... I mean... But then they stopped and went back to production. Either way, you guys aren't going to tell us. Nah. They're not going to tell us shit. Speaking of the faceless assassins and uh, Game of Thrones... I hate Bravos. The main guy, Jacob Nagar, was in Stranger Things. Yeah, he's the Russian. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's the Russian with. Uh, he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, yeah. He's tall. Oh, I yeah. feel like, if, but if you're anywhere close to David Harbour, you're huge. But anyway, we don't have a date from Netflix, but they're not going to tell us because they don't want us to be upset. Um, I was just hoping they'd say twenty twenty. Do you think they're going to wait till Halloween again? They yes. should. They should. Yeah. I I don't mind getting all my other stuff, but I do like having my creepy show or series or whatever around my Halloween time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm Amy's Motor Seniors. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Thank you for hanging out, guys. Like I said, we got, and like I said, thank you for involving me. We got You're big welcome. stuff coming. We got fun stuff coming. We'll figure things out. There, honestly, it's this weird period for me, too, right now of, like, I'm not covering anything week to week, and I'm not, like, so I've just been, like, this has been fun and awesome. And then I'm, like, but I, I really am, like, buckling down and redoing the studio. I'm, like, I'm figuring out what we're going to do. So don't worry. Uh, it won't always just be me rambling and Josh telling me facts and him telling me awesome things and ideas of Stranger Things endings, which I think he's right. Shit. And I'm worried about Steve. But anyway, we're going to have fun. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. And I always appreciate coming on. And make sure you subscribe. What, oh, wait. Do we miss anything? Nope. Everybody go catch up on season four.
Thank you for having me. Oh, you're